Welcome to the Cultaholic Wrestling Podcast. If you like a lot of wrestling on your YouTube, join our cult. Bloody Hello and well, hell. Take a back to the volume. Bloody it's the birthday boy getting a yeah, bit excited. What's the word I'm using? Yeah, yeah, excited. Over enthusiastic. Be spending yeah. more and more of my fair time with you, lovely, lovely lads, for another episode of the Cold Alec Wrestling Podcast. You're listening to the birthday boy himself, Matthew. That's me. Uh, along with his lovely co host, Jack and Ross. How the hell you doing? Happy birthday, Matthew. Thank you very happy much. Happy birthday for yesterday, Matthew. That's right. Wait. Time <laughs> was it? No, 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 no. Oh, God, I really thought it was your shoot birthday today. No, it. Yeah. The podcast Thank you, goes Ross. live on a Friday. Oh, damn it. Oh, damn it. <laughs> we'll be doing a few years. Oh, it's all right, mate. So it is as we sit You'll here. You'll get it soon, work experience kid. And in, how has your week been, lad? All right, thank you. In reality now, as we sit here, it is yeah. your birthday today. Yes. My week's been fine, thank you. I'm going to a lovely jig or gig tonight Ooh. in uh, that area of Newcastle where the, city, the city, Central Park, do they call it? It's like the city. It's the... The center of life, center for life, and then you life center, and then the session the, dome. Aye, that bit. You know, mm. the, you know the square in the middle of Times Square. Yeah, Times Square, not yeah. Central Park. I knew it was in New York. <laughs> I think it's it called Park. it's called Central Park, the thing, but it's in Times Square. Yeah. Why are all these things named after New York places? Very strange. Mm. Anyway, that bit near the train station. I'm going there. Lovely. Yes. I'm glad you know where it is. I'll make, <laughs> I'll make the game a lot easier. Um, we'll see if I turn up. Um, how is your day? How's your lovely birthday been? Lovely. I had a club sandwich from Tom. It's very and... nice in the garage. And he, yes, him and the other lovely people at the office got me a big F off chocolate cake, mm. which I cannot eat because mm-hmm. I'm famously lactose intolerant, but obviously not that famous enough. But it's okay because it's anniversary of a running gag because last year they got me the exact same bloody thing. <laughs> I Which believe, I believe he had one slice of. So. I've, I've had this run through me. Run through me? No, that would have happened. No, that would have happened. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, I right. had this run by me. Tom apparently came and was like, Get Matthew a birthday cake. I forgot. And then Fraser was like, Oh no, what do I do? So he went along to Tesco <laughs> and just picked up the first one he saw. And ironically, it's called, so it's the Caterpillar version of Tesco and it's called Carle. And it's nice of Fraser that he picked that because mm. one of my favorite things about Fraser is when he says Carle Warle. Right. Like oh, Sean Connery. Yeah. Going to the bar. I love a curly wally. A curly wally from the bar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, Sean, because it's you. On the rocks. Uh. <laughs> How are I you doing, Ross? You sounded a bit like Billy Connolly when you said that. Oh, I went to the show. <laughs> Sean, a curly wally. He's telling a story. Oh, sorry. That's all the people up north. Not only not listening to us, but also <laughs> yeah. getting mad at the English again. For deny, denying them their <laughs> attempt at leaving us. I, Go on, I, Ross. I, I, <laughs> um, I'm, I'm fine, me. I it's just it's it's World Cup fever week, isn't it? Just the, the, the World Cup's world, the World Cup. Great start <laughs> the podcast. The World Cup has kicked off. It's the World Cup. I've maybe drank a bit too much this week. I'm not going to lie to you. I had an all day session with the constabulary on Monday. Oh, oh, oh. I, know, I know a policeman and all of his like squadron was there because they all had the day off at the same time. There was literally oh, okay. thirty of them, right? And I'm like, who's Who's patrolling the streets on this day of uh, England's first World Cup game? Apparently, there was another squadron. It's amazing how many policemen there are I, I, in reality, but obviously their <laughs> their numbers are dwindling. <laughs> F the Tories. <laughs> so where were you drinking, or was it at the police station? Uh, no, no, no. They all they were out of work, and we were just going around Morpeth Town. Ah, okay. Went to where uh, the Black Bull, the White Swan, the Joiner's Arms. So these all colours and things. Like Lovely, yeah. The Red Bull, yeah. <laughs> I was trying to fit in with all the laddie banter. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. I can't do it when that happens. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of... Oh, I can't. Could you go ask me a question about something? Go, oh, I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. What well, you just It's say. funny you should mention that. I've been desperate to bring this up on camera, but Fraser and Owen, have they've got beef. They've got heat. And it's really good to see. You won't have that in Cold Holly. Because they're, they're, <laughs> they're both lovely lads. So it's, it's funny. Fraser came along with a few of us to watch the match. And was trying to join in and that's fine yeah. but Owen gatekeeper Owen Morrison oh. Fraser went Owen just keeps laughing at me whenever I try and talk to him about the football <laughs> <laughs> just kept laughing um, I asked Owen about this and he he played down how harsh he'd been but said that it was it was like Fraser was had read a textbook on how to talk about football so poor Fraser he didn't even support England and he came along I feel bad for him so I hope Owen thinks about what he's done. Did you only put an accent on when he went to the bar? Fraser? Yeah. We weren't in a very hard establishment, so he probably was fine. <laughs> yeah, where were you watching it? The Holy Hobo, a very stupid oh, bar. Yeah, don't worry. Yeah. In fact, halfway through the first half, Owen went, it's not really what I thought it would be. Yeah. 
It was, it was such a student bar. Halfway through, Ross and his new mates came in and kicked everyone's heads. <laughs> <laughs> like the good old days, they hey, said. No, I had a great time. You know, it was weird to fit in you know, from time to time, but it was a lot less manly than I thought it was going to be. Okay. Very weird thing to say. You know, you have a reputation with coppers, don't they? Yeah. But uh, yeah, they were fine. I just spent a, a large portion of the day looking at dogs. Lots of pub dogs on Monday. Fantastic. Oh, there you A couple go. of wet golden retrievers. They were stinking the entire bar yeah. out. Um, they'd been on a big walk. Um, there was a Labrador. Two Labradors, actually. Had a great time. It oh. sounds <laughs> nicer than watching the match in Newcastle town. It was all right. It was pretty much the same, just not uh, as busy. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. yeah. No, fair enough. And they were selling two pint pints. Which at eleven thirty a.m. I got a two pint pint of Carling, mm. which tasted like piss. That's good. Yeah, Dan Hebel took advantage of that. They were doing that where we were as well. Um, what did you get? Right. Oh, oh ding already. dong! We had to step. It was six pound for a two pint of a Carling and other rubbish ones. And you stepped up to a, a Madri, which cost nine pound ten. Which my hamstring went a bit when she said nine pound ten in comparison to six pounds. But then you think two pints of Madri for nine pounds ten. Mm. It's quite a good deal, really. Yeah. yeah so there we go. Ah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was I got Moretti as well. Owen got a cider, and then she went, "You might as well have two bottles of cider because it's two for one." And Owen refused to drink the second one, handed off to anyone else, which is his choice. But he had ninety minutes to drink that. <laughs> <laughs> Owen never drinks ever, does he? Sometimes he'll have a casual <laughs> one cider, and that's fair. But no, you didn't want the second one. I felt so bad at the Christmas party last year because Owen he just never drinks. He's just one of those people who just doesn't drink. And I was drinking whiskey at the first place I went to. And he's like, oh, yeah, I, I was like, do you fancy one, Owen? He was like, nah, it's fine. You just, just have one, Owen. And I poured him one of what I would drink. Oh, his face. I've thought about it for the entire year. It just comes, <laughs> the entire year. Just the guilt, you know? He's a lovely little lad, isn't he, Owen? And I've, I've, well, he was. I've, until you turned him off. I've spoiled him. him. I've spoiled the man. Mm. There we go. He lived to tell the tale. How are you, Matthew? I'm doing We've better than that, haven't we? Yeah, I've done better than Owen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sidestep the, the chocolate cake, come in here, talk to some good lads. Get the news out of the way because it's going to be a very long episode because of all the stuff that's happening oh, in the wrestling. I should warn everybody that um, I might miss the last segment because I might have to leave if it's very long. Oh, that's right. Jack is the AW Women's Champion. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be funny, though, whatever. Hey, yeah. That's CM Punk's fault as well, isn't it? Oh, God. Well, we'll go through a little rundown <laughs> of uh, some of the highlights of the post Full Gear media scrum which I knew wasn't a big disaster like last time because I woke up and my phone had no notifications at all. So I went, oh, that's a shame, but obviously good for AEW. So I can't state once again that CM Punk did not ask for Colt Cabana to be removed from the AEW roster. And the scrum saying, no, 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 it's never that. And when asked, so why was Colt Cabana, of all the wrestlers you could possibly pick, chosen to wrestle Chris Jericho uh, and that title match he had the week? Uh, he says, because he's got a good win-loss record in Ring of Honor right now. <laughs> And then he said, quote, they had a great match. So Tony Khan, liar, liar, pants on fire. <laughs> is that, not only his arse has gone through the telephone wire, but his entire but being has with that bollocks. Yeah. Let me tell you. I know the, a great the, match from Colt Cabana. The yeah. Reddit have been a bit detective-y about this story. They've all decided, <laughs> the Reddit collective's theory of Squared Circle is that Tony Khan preemptively shuffled Colt Cabana off to the Ring of Honor roster when Punk came in to try and keep things really smooth for Punk. So Punk, okay. they think Punk never asked him. Because Tony has said Punk never told me to. Yeah. But that looks bad on Tony. Do you reckon it's, there's a no, chance No, wait, 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 wait. That... Colt Cabana wasn't like... In a, it wasn't like... That's right. At the pay-per-view, John Moxley, Colt Cabana made Well, yeah, he wasn't... Whoa, 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 yeah, hang yeah, on. Yeah. Sorry, Colt Cabana's now working a special shift uh, in the shed. But he was It was like of... he wasn't having a major, major push but or anything. he was anything. part of he the was Dark just part Order of the and then mysteriously wasn't part of the Dark Order anymore. The dark, lots of people are not mysteriously not part of the Dark Order right now. Like I said, it's... It's true. It's one of those... So the things called where you look at them and you have to look at a certain way to see the actual... An optical illusion. Thank you. Optical illusion. If you look at it that way, it's this. The other way, it's a fish. And it really depends on your perspective right now. Which is also why um, there was lovely chance during the uh, six-man trio style match style <laughs> four. Uh, F and CM Punk. We say that like that? Not in an affectionate way. No, oh, no, yeah. no, no, no. To hell with CM. that guy. We're playing F, CM, F, F, Mary, F. Mary Kill. Who's your pick? Oh, the th <laughs> right, okay, that's what they want. Um, no, th that was chanted, and that's how the people are like, look, we don't know. No one who was involved in it, who was there, or respect the Matt Hardy, or respect the Jericho, or respect all the other people running the Melter, um, we don't know from their mouths. I'll have a judgment on it once I've heard from them. Yes, I know CM Punk's a bit of a dick. We know this. I've known this for 20-odd years. We all know CM Punk's a bit of a dick. But still, who hit whose dog? That's what I want to know. From their mouths. So obviously that happens, that chant. They don't actually, the elite I'm referring to, they don't actually um, milk it that much. They actually go back to the match. And I thought, 
that's actually all right of them to be doing that. That's I was surprised at that, but very good. And <laughs> obviously they lost the pack. And then being the elite returns, and they have the you know the music montage, which then stops for ten seconds so that chant can play it. Kenny Omega tweets out, "No, no, lads, let's all move on." And then an AW Dynamite just to skip ahead. They're like, "No, no, no, I'm doing tributes to." Um, well, Luis Suarez, obviously. Uh, with the bikes <laughs> as we sit everything. here in Uruguay playing as well right. in the World Cup. Wow, fantastic. Right. Oh, sorry about that. Isla Dawn must be still be messing with their NXT feed. Yeah, she's so, spooky here. That Ooh. modern day witch. Yeah. yeah. Caca. The Enchantress. The right. Scottish <laughs> Winnie, I don't know. <laughs> Trying to think the of a witch's Trump. name. <laughs> the Trump. The Trump. What? They're pretty scary. <laughs> All right yeah. there, Matthew. My goodness. CM Punk. Is not in AW, even though they're doing lots of references. It's a work, isn't it, lads? Incident. Let's just put it out there now. It's what, a work. We're already at the point now. <laughs> we're wondering if it's a work and he's coming back. I'm not. It's every week after Royal Rumble 2014, all hour again. I'm not wondering. I, I really don't think it is. But if I was Tony, would you be tempted to try just to bring him back? Or do you think it'll all just happen again? I imagine it would happen again. Yeah, I probably. <laughs> I imagine because there's Jeff, there's definitely some reality to what's gone on. But the more they reference it, and more they play along with it, and more work it into storylines and whatnot, the more it makes you think they're all working together on it. Oh, my my take on that was that like the books just can't help themselves. <laughs> that was my take as <laughs> yeah. well. Why they this? Because they're dicks. Because if you think about like the amount of times they've poked fun at WWE, right? It's like that times. Cody was taking shots at Bailey. Or with Cameron oh, Grimes yeah, he was, and stuff. Yeah. So, he was saying that Smiley Carly Ray was better than Bailey, or like yeah. actually a nice person or something. Yeah. God, I'd, I'd totally not remember. So wow. all these little pot shots for the smallest of things. And Jeff Jarrett got on Braun Strowman, because obviously Jeff Jarrett well, is the man to defend flippy dippy doos. Yeah, that offended Jeff Jarrett. He said on his podcast he wants to stand up for the flippy dippies. Fair play. Fli- flippy floppy, sorry, not flippy dippies. Let's get our terminology mm, Those right are completely there. different things. Yes, they are. But I reckon, is there a chance? I was going to say this earlier, but I forgot. Is there a chance that t- Tony Khan bought Ring of Honor just to appease CM Punk and give Colt Cabana a home? <laughs> wow. Is there a chance? Is this the next step? <laughs> oh, I thought Tony Khan bought Ring of Honor because he's a massive wrestling fan. He was like, yeah, I want to buy yeah. I think that genuinely, because he's a nerd. What does that mean now as well for CM Punk's matches in Ring of Honor? Because he's always like, oh, oh my they've God. got a guy who's going to take care of them now. And now this has happened. All oh, the permutations oh. are endless. Wow. And the bollocks will be non-stop as we talk about this <laughs> forever, it appears. But he's also, this is CM Punk, off the AW Fight Forever cover. So it must be a work. Worky Workington. He's off the game cover. That's pretty... That's right. That feels pretty that's real. As good as dead. Oh, that'll, mm. that'll be his comeback segment. Do you remember when they had the... the was it the WWE 13 <laughs> oh, cover God. in the sky? Yeah. yeah. Who was yeah. it in the ring? Like, with <laughs> pretending they were on the cover, then his was in the sky? Was it Miz? Was it Miz? Yes. It yeah. sounds like yeah. a Miz thing. It was a really good... The cover they had was funny. Yeah. So they'll have that one, the placeholder now in the ring, and then Punk will come down from the rafters with this new cover with him front and centre. That's how he makes his return to AEW. I hope so. Um, <laughs> can I say... Uh, Takeshita. Takeshita. What's, uh, what's the thing he likes? The food? I don't know. Damn it. He's Nothing with carbs well. in, the handsome yeah, bugger. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's what you eat. Um, it's officially joined AEW, as has AR Fox. Yes. What I say last then. week, AR Fox should have been signed by one of these companies many, many years ago. Very glad he's getting the chance. Um, he was in Evolve. Yep. I know that about him. And he was in Lucha Underground. And he feuded, he feuded with uh, Shane Strickland actually, in Lucha you know Underground. What? That's actually, I realise I'm saying AR Fox like, oh yeah, all the kids know him. AR Fox is the uh, flippy, floppy, Braun Strowman mm. loving dude. Uh, he's just done American Indies for years and yeah. years and years. He's been amazing. He has a crazy flips and looks stunning. And just whatever reason, everyone else hit past him. He's just still on that same level. Bless him. And everywhere else, everywhere he's been, be them cheese, easy dub, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. He's killed. But yeah, I'm happy Tony Khan's like, oh yeah, him. Uh, he was really good last week in that tag team match. Yep. Um, it just, I don't know why. There's more people signing in it. Where do they all fit in? He says he's going to get a chance, but how and where? He wasn't on this week's Dynamite. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't matter. Just sign. Yeah. All right. Uh, Mayor Yemen undergoes the name change. Uh, her the name was changed. In ring and on their website to uh, Michin. Right. Again, that, right? Uh, the nickname they revealed, like, oh, I always thought it was just a nickname. But then they changed it back and just said, no, it's just a nickname. It's not my real name. Yeah. They, I thought this was like a admin error where they'd gone to someone on the website, yeah. like, her name's now Michin. And they changed it. And then, no, no, it's just a nickname. Or it's just a prefix. Yeah. She right. was like, she's Michin Mia Yim. She's crazy. Yeah. Like, the David Boy Smith wasn't really the British Bulldog, that was his prefix. Oh, but, oh, but sometimes he was down as the British Bulldog. 
Yeah, oh. especially when Davy Boy Smith Jr. appeared on World of Sport. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, would, I would like Mayhem oh, to do something mental at war games and then just become Mitchin because mm. it's crazy in Korean. You know what I mean? Yeah. Go through that little bit. Of, I, I think hey, dude, a... jump off that. Mayor Yim would never do that. <laughs> but Mitchin would. Some, some used to, he was the first person who taught me about when Liger gets really angry and he takes off his mask and he's then yeah. something else, Liger. Keishin Liger or something like that? I thought you were going to say Keith yeah. there. Keith Liger. Keith Liger. Keith Liger. <laughs> oh! <laughs> it's got wife beater on. Down the to pint. <laughs> yeah. Itchy Bon. <laughs> Number one. I don't know what I'm doing now. <laughs> Let's move on. Jamie Noble <laughs> to make his three in-ring return. What? what? A live event, isn't it? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Come on his Instagram page. The re- December 11th live event in Charleston, West Virginia. Uh, take me months. home. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I mean, after, after two minutes. <laughs> it's official. Yeah, I'll be having one last match. I guess it's just that year, isn't it? Of Ric Flair, Steve Austin. Jamie Noble, the hey, last he's match. He's probably still good, though. Ricky Steamboat. Yeah. He was also the uh, the most workiest uh, Ring of Honor champion before the Ocho came around, or the Ocho, That's sorry. That's what I heard on <laughs> yeah. the commentary. Jimmy Gibson. Big old Jimmy Gibson. I hope his match at this live event is against Rollins, though. Jane Jace, that was the days. Halcyon days. Wonderful little pair. against anyway. CM Punk, the man he beat for the Ring of Honor <laughs> yeah, World <that's> Challenge. Right. <laughs> to end the summer of punk, yeah. as detailed in your magnificent video. Oh, yeah. Thanks to Richard for... Uh, Edit in that one. There'll be more Richard later on in this podcast. Lots more Ooh, Richard. Lots of Richard. Uh, Omega versus Osprey has been announced at Russell Kingdom. Bloody which, hell, it has. Oh my God, I forgot about that. Which I'm sure will be a 9,000 star match and will probably be Meltzer centered around is who, who can pull their put in the most <laughs> over there. Wrestling was over ratings. I did, I did like the I'm setup for it. For that. Where uh, it the video where Kenny was like, I've come to save your company. Yeah. And then big... Billy bollocks himself, Osprey, on the Twitter machine. Save my company, you can't save yours. <laughs> it's probably the best line he's had in forever, to be fair. Like, <laughs> to be fair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And then Kenny kind, of, Kenny kind of just threw it up for a minute. Yeah. yeah. Fair enough. All right. Uh, backstage news on potential world of sport return. Uh, oh, I... To be honest, I'm not reading. It's just this. Nick Aldis has been approached <laughs> and maybe Nicky, uh, Mickey James has as well. I said Nicky James there, the WCW referee. <laughs> Was that Mickey as well? Mickey J. Mickey J. Mm. Rest in peace. Um, but apparently they've been approached, but nothing concrete is happening or something. Yeah. So I don't know. Oh, well. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it was Nick Aldis mania last week, really, with all the news yeah. about him. So Last time, the world of sport just caused a lot of trouble, didn't it, in the end? I yes, it did. World of poo, by the time it finished. Eh? World of poo. That's what the world of wrestling looked like afterwards. <laughs> I, hope it, I hope it brings back NXT UK, though, if that oh. obviously comes back. That's what the world's missing. <laughs> If they have NXT UK versus World of Sport. <laughs> it's only on hiatus, they said. That's right. Mm-hmm. While they get ready for NXT Europe. Got one of the signs that says, I ain't dead. Yeah. Okay. And finally, obviously this goes out the day of Survivor Series 2022. So I thought I'd bring up uh, news relevant. Bret Hart thinks punching Vince McMahon is probably the greatest thing he ever did. <laughs> Quote, I know I did the right thing. I'd rather have done what I did than anything else. What, I'd rather have done what I did than anything else. Right. To me... It would be a total sellout of yourself and everything you've ever worked for and everything you've ever believed in. You would totally selling yourself out. When Vince came in the room and basically confronted me, I told him it was a dumb move. I warned him before he came in. I said, I'm not in a friendly mood right now, Vince. And this is what, <laughs> this is not going to go well. And you need to think, you need to go right now. And he stayed. And I always think whatever happened that day defined me as a person. And it was probably the greatest thing I ever did. In the sense that I stood up for myself like no other wrestler ever stood up for themselves. <laughs> McMahon sport a noticeable black eye in the living his pre-taped Brett Screw Brett speech on Raw eight days later. Mm. While footage of a groggy Vince walking backstage after being punched can be seen in the Hitman Heart Wrestling with Shadows documentary. Uh, it, Good on you, Brett. So I was saying to you off camera, I've just finished his, do- his autobiography. <sighs> Brilliant stuff. Um, I'm glad he's doing better now because it ended quite on a bit of a down uh, note. Um, but he describes that moment in the book as he hit him with a rocket of an uppercut which popped him upwards like a cork out of a champagne bottle yeah, yeah. <laughs> what? but the bruise was on his eye wasn't it maybe Vince was selling for him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he is tall Vince <laughs> <laughs> he went, you know where you're going Vince down there he went down where he went, oh. <laughs> talk about the pressure being on though you got if that's one shot you got a nail Oh, well, you got a nail at heart. He said you he, know, was, like, he was just wearing a towel any other way. Well. Like, Brett, when it hit Vince, if Vince sidestepped him, Vince would never show him about it. <laughs> Starts doing the Rene Dupree thing. 
<laughs> valley <laughs> shuffle in front of Brian. He said that he, he, he'd just been in the shower and he didn't want to put his clothes back on in case someone grabbed them in the melee that would follow. So he wanted to just, so he thought, I've got to get one shot at Vince. And he did. Oh, he was bollock naked? He was in a towel, maybe. Oh. He was just out the shower anyway. He wow. does specify what he was wearing. I can't remember if he was naked or in a towel. And then who did he shag straight after? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Linda. He's in a towel. <laughs> Hello, Linda. <laughs> I can't it's believe how many people in the... There's a bit where, right, he's, he, there's the whole very sad stuff about he has his he has his stroke and everything and it's the long road to recovery and it takes months and months to even get slightly back to normal. Mm. Loads of hard work, loads of rehab. And then, um, <laughs> and then he basically gets with someone and says, the chapter ends like, the old Brett is back. I was no, like, oh, my God. God. <laughs> Brett after seeing someone else's wife walk past... <laughs> That's no, right. he never gets with the who's wife. It's like wife. James Bond at the end. Just, just, just cheats on his wife. Shagging like spinach to him. Like Popeye. Yeah. <laughs> come on, come on, Brett, you can do it. I can. My body. <laughs> Over here, Brett. <laughs> he runs off camera. His legs are like, just like a stop start like they do. Uh, Blue Chew goes down. I'll tell you, it was like a cartoon. Nothing gave me all this bread right now. Vincent Mann walk along like, gee, I hope no one punches me in the face today. I'll tell you, it was like a cartoon this week. We'll get to it, I suppose, but Wesley, when he outwitted Trick Williams, he was like Bugs Bunny. It's great. I like this. Gravity. That belonged in some sort of film like Inception or something like that. Mm. Stunning writing, I thought. Really good writing. It was a... It was a the Da Vinci Code. It was an amazing... <laughs> this was an amazing Just week. Any, <laughs> any films you think are complicated or a book about... <laughs> A book. <laughs> this this right. week was for, for this was an amazing NXT week. Some it of the some was. of the segments this week. Were it was, and we can't wait to get to oh, it. God. We've missed big news though. Kyrie Sane did something quite important mm. this week. We should say this on camera. Yeah. Oh, okay, go on. She did. She won the belt. She became the first ever <laughs> the inaugural IWGP Women's World Champion. So fair play to Kyrie Sane. Fantastic. Richard Tubman was there. Richard was there. He was silent oh. the entire time. Because <laughs> you had to. Because you have to be. Yeah. Go good, right? <laughs> Might have clapped occasionally. But... <laughs> Yeah. Why do oh, it's got that? that like it's mental art in it they're still doing that now. Yeah. Yeah. That's why my friends like, I'm going to I want to go to Japan soon. I'm like, do you want to wait until they get that sorted out still? Hey Tubman's they... Tubman's made the most of it. Is he having to wear a mask or anything? Do we know? Oh. Well not when he's not when he's in remote locations, as we'll see. Right, it's just in the oh, okay. But probably they are stricter still with the rules then. Yeah, well we've got lots of to go through. We should power through it now. Like Tubman on his bike. <laughs> Tubman and Japan. Look at this. And this is vlog number one, or vlog number Ishii. Uh, <laughs> live. Tomohiro. It, it was, I know, as, as someone has said it, it was playful and informative and scenic in equal measure. That was my review, because I watched it in full, not even there on 1.25 speed. Richard, I didn't realise you had it in him to like, actually present. Ooh, oh, look at that. Look at Star him. Wars transition there, fantastic. He's like hey, Casey, on, Casey Nice start, isn't he? I'm on my bike here in Japan, isn't that mental? No, he's having, he's he's got his present. Well, obviously you can't hear this watching now, but if you if you do watch the vlog, where they can they find just tubs? Tubs. He's an enigma. He's like scripts. It's just tubs, and it's got what's the logo like, Dan? It's just sort of black. With... Whoa, oh, look, at that. look the map. Da, 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 da. I don't know why I'm surprised. Like he is uh, an editor. Yeah, yeah. It is. He, he is a good editor. That's as well. a bit Dan Heppel esque in that sort of thing. It's... I've done videos before. Where Dan oh, brought imagine we got demonetized because that word there. <laughs> 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 No, also, like, like an NXT flippy, they only check the script, so it's okay. It's, I didn't say it. It's a really... I'll tell you what, right? Even if you don't really know or care much about the geography of Japan and cycling between two cities, the vibes... It's are, a nice watch, like... The vibes are immaculate. He's a very chilled man, is Richard, yeah, and he's a, the ideal companion for a, a, a jaunt around the sunny seasides of Japan. Mm. It's not good. even the seasides, is it? Just the, the river. He loves a river, river path. He loves a river walkway, yes. Yeah. yes. And it's nice, but it is... It would have been even funnier if he's trying to do like an American accent. Like, <laughs> Howdy, or, or the American Scottish thing, like, so he's drew like that. that. I'm in Japan. <laughs> There's some lovely scenery in the video, yeah. And he eats um, an ice cream. Mm -hmm. He's got this like calorie bar thing that looks like sawdust, I think. Shortbread? Yeah. Looks like sawdust. That, that, oh, that a thing. calorie made. Oh, he's had one of them in real life. He's really, oh. He gives really good, he gives really good, he says like, yeah, this is advertised as like a calorie thing, but it's really just shortbread with more carbs in it. I don't know it that. Very it was a oh, right. Well, in Japan, it's just that. Also, oh, it was noted okay. here, I heard some of the editors talking about it, his beard's immaculately groomed. He is good at grooming his beard. Yeah. Even with a strong wind blowing, he still looks uh, lovely. So, so it's like, yeah, there's me, here's me house. <laughs> where I live in Japan. That's a, I think that's, a, that's a, a, an actual tourist destination where he's in front of. He just found a shrine in the middle of nowhere. 
It's yeah. massive. Are we allowed? So it's definitely worth a watch. I'd Some say. tribute to Jack in it. That little three three summer statues there with the woolly hats on. Oh, was it? Oh, fantastic. <laughs> I missed my mate, so I thought I'd see statue versions of them. <laughs> I've just sculpted a queen. <laughs> What's that be some sort of poignant historical know, figure there? Oh, of course it is. <laughs> Looks yes. like Jack is wearing a hat. It's very respectful, so I'm going to put my camera away and stop filming. On the pitches video the other day, you made a joke about Andrew not letting all the air out of the top of his head because he always wears his hat, and I couldn't laugh. I was like, oh. Uh-huh. <laughs> wow. I so that I was... sit there like a coward. <laughs> that was Tubman in Japan. Everybody get excited for the Cultaholic Hall of Fame. <sighs> oh. Everyone's favorite segment, the Hall of Fame. And in condescending order from last week, this week's AW Dynamite, because it's getting better. It's a good opinion, pal, but not positive enough for this podcast. 23%. It's just impartial wrestling journalism. And if people can't handle it, it's not my problem. After this week's, has that trend continued or has it gone back? I enjoyed to- this week's Dynamite as well. I thought it was... Better than the last two have been better than we are accustomed to. Recently. Yes, yes, fair enough. Yeah. That is fair. Mm. Anti hero by Taylor Swift, 31%. Now, this is because Dan behind the camera loves sexy babies, as no, we no, all no. know. <laughs> Can you stop? <laughs> oh, no. That is the line, isn't it? I, I always forget. 31%. Yeah, thank <laughs> you. I'm just going to talk all over you. Uh, but a very nice surprise the weirdness of Playmobil. 45%. You know, Playmobil, the stuff for kids where you too could play as all the exciting figures like 16th century executioner. <laughs> Trump on bench. <laughs> Trump on bench. And we missed one last week, which is the German construction team. And you could tell it was German workers working on the road because they had, I never noticed this as a kid, and I had, oh, no, my no, mate Steady had this. now. <laughs> they had, oh, no, stop no, it, no, 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 stop it. They had um, a bunch of beer with them. Oh. Because it's a German tradition, I guess, going to Playmobil. I have no idea if it's real or not. Please let us know if there's any Germans still listening to this. Um, that you have beer when you're working. I'll just have a... If you're a construction worker oh. type person or a builder. Be nice on a hot day. So it came with a kid's toy. So I thought, wow, that's a Playmobil. Educating us about people around the world. 45%. That's a weird surprise, but thank you very much. Very happy with that. Now, I know we've been told not to put anything too sentimental in, but... Oh, uh, no. Paul if, if this is someone who's passed away, that's very much against the rules of the whole All right, thing. then. I'll switch it up. Oh, my God. It was someone who's passed away. Was it actually? Yeah, so I'll, oh. I'll change it. Oh, no. I'll change it. Well, um, I feel like an knob yeah, now. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I've got to work around. Hey, wait. Give me a few seconds. It's okay. I nominate this week everyone's favorite anti-hero turned hero. The Green Power Ranger. Fair enough. Right. Okay, I don't know. There you go. It's completely understandable. We are it's, all uh, children of the 90s. <laughs> we are children of the 90s, yeah. even the people who were a bit younger than us, because it's still bloody Ganon as a mm-hmm. franchise, which I still can't go back. There's only a few people still left in it, but they still have Bulk and Skull, who play like the idiot bullies at school. They're still, They're still in playing it. school kids. They're still in it. Last one me and we made to watch like 10 years ago. We watched it, and it's like, <laughs> hey, Bulk. He's like, huh. I'm like, what's he doing at school? <laughs> He's older than the teachers. <laughs> I'm just, anyway. I'm just looking to see when still the most thick. recent... Like, the school system's not for everybody, obviously. So, <laughs> the Power Rangers. The people don't really appreciate this at this point because it's a nostalgia thing at this point. The very first time that came out, it was amazing. The idea of, see, we know now, was getting Japanese footage and uh, editing it with American stuff. People going, hey, here's some boring plot that we don't care about. And then, hey, giant monsters. And then giant mechs. And then dinosaurs. And then dogs. Oh, the kids, this was amazing. Oh, yeah. And it killed the Ninja Turtles. It's like, nah, move over, Grandad. You're oh, done. Oh, wow, did it? It was like Nirvana. So it was like, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yes. Right, okay. The Ninja Turtles were, you know, Guns and Roses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And then these guys were Nirvana. That's probably the only time that's ever been said in human history. But so I came along and it was amazing. Like, hur, hur, hur. everyone having their way of acting when they obviously can't see their faces. Going, like, yeah, well, me and you, we're going to get you. All right. And I, like, yeah, acting. <laughs> and yeah, and you're thinking, okay, this is pretty all right. And then he, he got the formula pretty on early on as a kid. But then the Green Power Ranger shows up. Like, who's he? He goes, oh, he's an evil version of them. He goes, he's an evil version of them? He goes, yeah. Uh, and what he's got, he's got his own Zord. He's got his own one. He's like, yeah, it's definitely not Mecha Godzilla, but green. No, 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 don't say that. No, that's not true. How do you get it? Well, he plays his little knife. And even though he's playing a knife, which is not an instrument, he plays it like an ocarina, and it sounds like synth. <laughs> and he calls it a flute. <laughs> Again, so I appreciate how good this was. When This is on episodes of uh, GMTV, in between Mr. Motivator segments, <laughs> making Mr. it Motivator. even better. He's still going, Mr. Motivator, of course, he's, he's fit. On YouTube, yeah. Good. I think it's him and his good lady. Or just Mrs. Motivator. Mrs. Motivator, Aww. yeah. 
the motivators, as they call themselves. <laughs> so yeah, so that happened, and then they, I forget how they turned him. I think they just beat him up until he goes, yeah, yeah, you guys are tough. All right, fair enough then. Then he switches, turns into the, the white Power Ranger. There was no one near as good as the green Power Ranger, if you ask me. But still, all right, the thoughts there. And he stuck around and became the red Power Ranger twice in two different seasons, and then later on the black Power Ranger. Because a lot of people didn't want to be associated with the Power Rangers because, one, because it's, well, look at it, and also they weren't paid a lot. Oh, but really? the man behind it, Jason David Frank, would still stick with the Power Rangers franchise for years and years and years, and would also get into MMA and get a big dirty tattoo that said, Jesus didn't tap, <laughs> which is one of the most amazing things I've seen. It's like, okay, it's a good way to motivate you. It's got a 100% win uh, loss record, so fantastic, pal. And was almost going to have a match with CM Punk. Shame he didn't. Yeah. Batter him. Because he would have still remained undefeated. <laughs> all of things. So yeah, the Green Power Ranger. Thank you very much. Fair play. Ugh. Any? Did you, did you guys watch the Power Rangers? Oh yeah, I can't remember as much as you've just yeah. reeled off there, but yeah, I had the toys where they had the flippy head that would flip inside of itself. Mm-hmm. I can't, that's all I can re-remember. My brother got the blue one on Christmas and he broke it before we ate lunch. <laughs> I, I was... I, a, about that. I wish... I could go back and check. I was a Red Ranger fan because I was basic, but I, I know, I know, I know. But no, I remember. I don't remember, again. I don't remember it as well as you have there, but it was iconic at the time. Mm. I just Google. We're currently in between seasons twenty nine and thirty of the Power Rangers. Is that it? The next one hasn't yet been announced, but it's going to be called. It hasn't yet been announced when, but it's going to be called Power Rangers Cosmic Fury. Okay. We've just had Power Rangers Dino Fury, so. Oh, I hate it when dinosaurs get mad. <laughs> it came on the telly the other day. Dutch they're, gonna need a blo- they're gonna need a bloody power range. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank you. I was watching one of the music channels on Sky the other day and it came on and it was, I don't know what the scene was, but it was like it was I think it was meant to be like a, 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 a like a monstery pig kind of thing. Oh, yeah, it was yeah, just yeah. In like a pig pen. And I was just like, this isn't the power pen, uh, power rangers I remembered. It was just very strange. Not my rangers. I can't picture what it was, but it was like <sighs> was it just a big pig with a little uh, head? I just a remember little... it being like a sort oh. of big circle or a square, like a sausage square. I don't know. Maybe that's it. Yeah. Sausage meat. It's a Scottish monster. Way <laughs> a Scottish monster. Yeah. So that's my pick, the Green Power Ranger. And I'm sticking with that. What have you got? Who came last? Oh, I guess you, Jack. Right. So I've not been watching this season of I'm a Celebrity Get Me Out of Here, but I Good. did watch an episode the other day. And all I know is Matt Hancock's in it. Yeah. Which is controversial. Chris Moyles is in it. Yeah. yeah. Boy George is in it. All great. Great people. <laughs> but also, the man that I saw getting rinsed on Twitter because Chris Moyles convinced him he was a dancer, and I can't remember his name, oh, thick, and... thick Man from Hollyoaks. Oh my God, I forgot his name. I yeah, me too. And I'm nominating him for the Hall of Fame. Owen? You're nominating him for the Hall of Fame and you don't know his name. Man from Hollyoaks. <laughs> on a, ju- man in Jungle from Hollyoaks. <laughs> I'm nominating for the Hall of Fame. And I've got a reason, though. Uh, he was part of, he did his, you know, the Bush Tucker trial. Yeah. He was doing that. Uh, it's the first episode I've watched all season. I've got no other context to go on how people have been doing in the trials and stuff. But as he was leaving, Chris Moyles went to him, yeah, mate, it's dead easy, but I only got two stars. Owen Warner, there you go. Owen Warner, thank you. And he went, it's dead easy, but I only got two stars. And I was like, well, it doesn't sound that easy then. And man from Hollyoaks, Owen, went and did this trial and got all nine stars with no... no with the like, greatest of ease. I, and I thought, I he, was, I thought he was week. really stupid. But he's like... But physically, he's a marvel. <laughs> he's going. To, they've built this like, I don't know how to describe it. Not a labyrinth because Adam and Deck were telling him where to go. But like amazing. No, I bet like, they were amazing. It the water comes <laughs> up to like your your shoulders, and he's bobbing around there. He's got to go into different rooms and unscrew the stars. And there's different creatures in different rooms. Like oh, there's cockroaches in this one. There's uh, lizards in this one. He fears nothing. That man. He's going through. Did you see this trial? Yeah. It was. I mean, if I had movies. less than one percent body fat like he does, I'd be like that as well. Alligators, bosh. See you later. I, I'd just like to clarify, no, no animals were harmed. <laughs> <laughs> this was not Vince McMahon backstage. Yeah. So he's a fit bloke then doing this. Oh, the incredibly so. Matthew is drop dead gorgeous. He gorgeous. He's emotionally intelligent as well. That's the one thing he learned. Right. He's just daft as a brush, so by Robson would call him, but he's emotionally intelligent. All right. That's what they all say in there. He's a wonderfully thoughtful man. Oh. <laughs> That's nice. Is he going to win? Yeah. Although I've heard I Jill he's Scott might win. Yeah. Jill Scott's a favourite. Boy George got voted out last night as West Saturday. Really? But he, he mm. made his own grave because he was like, why aren't people fighting with each other? Why aren't people being real? Like, just let people get along, Boy George. They were playing Here Comes Mr. Wolf at the time, and he's like, why aren't people fighting? Oh, as in... Hey, what's the time, Mr. Wolf? Sorry. What, yeah, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Or red light, green light, as they yeah. call it in America. What's the time, Mr. I'm Wolf? I'm ready to go. <laughs> oh. so Wait, is that is... song about that 
That? No. <laughs> no, it's about traffic lights. It's about gallon What's the time, Mr. Wolf? No, it's, no, it's wolf, traffic, wolf, traffic wolf, lights. Wolf. Red light, green light. Yeah. Everybody take a shot. We all oh. drink and drive. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, God, Sorry. it's about drink driving. I never thought about that. <laughs> no wonder the wrestlers used it. Um, <laughs> oh, dear. So I'm nominating him. Hollyoaks man in the jungle. Fit. Owen, Hollyoaks Owen Warner. Warner. For being fit. All right. No, no. For getting all nine stars with ease, with the greatest of ease. Yeah. Because yeah. I thought it was like a, I don't know, a big Chris Miles looking dude. So I thought him doing it really impressively was like, wow, that's really cool. Chris Miles is a you looking man at the moment. He's, he's yeah, lost yeah. a lot of weight. Has he? Mm. Ah, I, oh, I remember like mid 2000s pain in the ass, Chris No, Miles. he's yeah. got himself in really good shape. Oh, okay, yeah. should, well, I don't know, yeah. but. but not good enough to do this trial. He got two, but this oh. bloke got nine. Oh, okay. This was, thank you for painting this picture then. This book is like blokes in the jungle. Being this book fit. is right. probably like 15, 20 years younger than Chris Moore's. It has to be said, but greatest of these. He's the uh, the Casanova of uh, Hollyoaks. I'm sure his character is called Romeo. Oh yes. So he's had he's had like go away, man. The, what this Halloween, Romeo. If World of Sport comes back, get Romeo in, Nightingale is his Romeo name. Romeo <laughs> Nightingale <laughs> coming can soon nominate, to NXT. Dad, <laughs> can I please nominate Romeo Nightingale for the Hall of Fame? <laughs> Ha- one of the que- you know when they do the, uh, the, the the dingo dollar challenge. One of the questions yeah. was how many love interests has uh, Romeo Nightingale had in Hollyoaks, and it was like 12, 17, 30. It's oh, the Bret Hart. It's Holly- <laughs> the Bret Hart, yeah. Wow. I love you. Like I think he's the heart frog. What's his name? Romeo. <laughs> Romeo Nightingale. <laughs> I know it's a bit subtle that show. So he is my pick for the Hall of Fame. Thank you for making Power Rangers look deep by explaining the Hollywood. <laughs> uh, thank you very much for that, Ross. What have you got? It's a hard hard hurdle to jump over, but you got some good. I have. Because it's World Cup, and obviously one of the best things about the World Cup is when lovely little cute animals predict the results and get it right. right. And in 2010, yes. we, had, we had the chicken. No, sorry, in 2010, we had the OG. We had the octopus. Paul, That's right. Paul the octopus. Yep. In 2014, we had a chicken. Yeah, all right, people. We had a chicken who, you know, not, live, not living up to Paul, really, are they? No. And this year, we have a delightful otter. A delightful oh. otter that I've forgotten the name of as I'm sat here right now. Where's Dan's name on there? The name of the otter is Dun 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 Teo, who is cruising to get in the prediction right there for Japan versus Germany. Look oh, at that wow. otter. I'm look, a big fan of oh. otters to begin with anyway. Look at that, Nikki Ash. Why don't you get it in the big bucket? <laughs> I'm assuming that's well the, done. I'm assuming that's the word for draw in the middle. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, he didn't he didn't think twice. No, straight into uh, the uh, the right pot. So we'll have to wait and see what else Tayo predicts for the 2022 World Cup. <laughs> On a leash. Ah, he clicked him, click him together really quickly, so it looks like he's moving. <laughs> <laughs> go, go on, man. Go on, man. Uh, it's a tie Hopefully uh, he gets a run all the way to the final to live up to Paul the Octopus from 2010. Yeah. He changed the game for animals yeah. around the world. Clairvoyance, like Scarlet Bordeaux. <laughs> not, as mysterious, not as mysterious or sexy, though, as either of those people. Yeah, do it, I, don't um, well, I don't know. Anyway. That's just what Michael Cole calls him. Uh, but I uh, tell you, Thank uh, you. Wow. Really good. Those are three magnificent picks. The Green Power Ranger, Romeo Sexalot, <laughs> and Teo, the World Cup predicting otter. One thing I, <laughs> one thing I didn't anticipate from this World Cup, I, I'd gotten my head around it being in the winter yep. instead of in the summer. I'd, I'd come to terms with that. One thing I didn't expect, I still feel like it's passing me by all these games because there's four a day. Yeah. And that's because it's slightly condensed World Cup and I'm just not ready for it. So at the minute, I don't know what's going on. I'm just, Quite cl- a lot, I'm just clinging on for the ride. Speaking of not knowing what's going on, we've just had a news article shared here. Oh, okay. Breaking news. Well, not breaking news. It's news that's been made aware to us now. NXT Scripps oh, character. Oh, no. Inspired by WWE's no. Poop Smear and Stalker. The one that... The one that was... Son, was it son <laughs> <laughs> you, you can't do that. He was. He was. He did ring up, didn't he? I remember. And in the car park. Oh, God, you're right. I haven't put those two this is a together quote from until now. Who says that it's inspired by that? David Meltzer. No! Oh, of course he does. Do you remember the... Well, re- if anyone knows about smearing poop... <laughs> Oh, he would in that oh, office, man. the dirty bastard. Do you remember the oh. real stalker who was defecating on the premises and doing all of that crazy stuff and was arrested multiple times, Melter asks. Uh, that was the gimmick that inspired scripts. That idiot inspired a gimmick that's out there doing flips. <laughs> what a quote that is from Dave Meltzer at the end. <laughs> <laughs> but don't let that get in the way of the three magnificent picks. I've nothing to do with what you've been talking about. The cultaholic class. Uh, it, you've confused oh. us now. I'm trying not to think about the thing you just talked about. Scripts. Stop it, stop it. <laughs> Call the ho- it rhymes with script. Call the Holics Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Call the Holics. Mm. That was a pregnant pause. <laughs> you remember the three picks? Uh, 
Teo? Is it Teo? Mm-hmm. Teo, yeah. Teo, sorry, I don't want to mispronounce his name. Teo, the otter with the balls. <laughs> uh, Green Power Ranger, the best ranger of all time. And Chris Miles' new sexy friend, mm-hmm. Romeo Gives a Kiss. Romeo Nightingale. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Happy Dr. Bone. Romeo Goodhead. Dr. Do- <laughs> That says this week in the wrestling. It's this bloody week in the wrestling. Ha! This week in wrestling, SmackDown, aka L.A. Plight. Plight. Yeah, that's good. He's 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 going through a bit of a. Oh, he's going through right it. Now. Yeah. The brawling brutes and Drew McIntyre open the show. Drew and Sheamus talk about the mutual respect they have after battering each other for so many years. Drew agrees to be the fourth member of their War Games team. Sami Zayn in the ropes and still confident about the Bloodline's chances, but Sheamus tells them their fifth teammate is the last person Sami will expect. Later backstage, Jay is angry at Sami for speaking on behalf of the Bloodline. Jimmy smooths things over like peanut butter. And they do a... Cracked up again, didn't he? Yeah, Got Jay needs to... needs to pull it together, doesn't he? Together, he, yeah. must, he must have like... <laughs> all right, you get a 50 quid reward. 50 quid. 50 oh, it's, the same. <laughs> it's the same right now, isn't it? Yeah, a $50 reward. Um, every time he cracks up. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um... I thought it was funny at the start where Seamus was like, is this on this time? How the bleeding hell are you doing there, Harvey? They, should, they really should cut his mic then. It was good. That, I thought, How the, I thought That's it, his new gimmick. This promo, especially Seamus and Drew at the start, was a fantastic advert for scripted promos. Because I know that they're, trying, like, they're just good friends and they're just having a good time while being global superstars. But they kept talking over each other and it was just awkward. I think that <laughs> bit was a bit ad lib because it's like, it's great, are you entertained? It's me, Seamus. Hoo, hoo, hoo. And then the crowd are going... Ooh, see, ooh, yeah. see. It's like, it's not even our segment yet. Shut up. Like, get the. So he went, Oh, are you chat, chatting broody, broody? And I think that was true. was like, Oh, let's add lip. Broody? With yeah. a T or a D? No, because they're, the, they're the brawling brutes. So broody. Oh. So I thought Drew's like, Do you say broody? You know, if you say it like that, then the crowd gets it. And Seamus was like, uh, I, I, I. Like, mm, Something Michael help. Cole's. <laughs> Something Michael Cole says at the end of the show that makes a lot more sense because I thought he said broody. Like what? He's brooding once a bit. Once other kid. Like once Kevin Owens returns, which is what Seamus gave away oh. that by saying, Sammy's the guy you're least expecting. He oh. came back and does this, the stunner at Rome and he's like, Kevin Owens and his friends are feeling broody, which I, I thought anyway, but it, broody makes a lot more sense. Thank you for They're clearing that up. They're feeling miserable. <laughs> I thought like, they, they want to have children. Yeah, broody. <laughs> or brooding. 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 Oh, I'm getting brooding and brood. Is that what broody means? I think so. Oh. You want to expand your brood. <laughs> I, that's what it, I guess that's where the word comes from. Hey, maybe they want to expand their brutes. Yeah. Get another son to ah, go with Pete. Sorry, Butch. Four like, roots, like, one tree. Like yes. Gangrel. <laughs> Shouldn't be quoting the schism, I'm sorry. No, you As shouldn't. we know now, they're really evil. No. But I think this overall got the point. Really. Sammy's the got crowd, The crowd just love Uzi so much to go China, even when it's nothing to do with them. So, yeah. But they can't help that. Sammy's just naturally amazing. After having that little break, that wasn't explained. Doesn't have the gaps filled in yet. I think someone passed away, didn't he? Because he posted something been... on social media. Oh, this okay. was again. Right. This is Reddit jumping to conclusion saying this That's is what, what I mean. Like, yeah, I, I, I want to hear it from their mouths. What happened to them? What happened with? They owe you phone? nothing. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. All right. Then I like to said like it's the person you least expect. It's like oh okay. At like, least throws it slightly off killer. Mm. And it was the person you'd actually most suspect. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. I bet that it's not the last person, Sammy. I bet it was probably like maybe the second or third person he thought he was going to be. Like it's Kevin. He should have called it. It's Kevin, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Imperium mock New Day backstage for losing their record, setting up a six-man tag later on with a mystery partner for Kofi and Xavier. Now it's Kevin. It's Kevin, isn't it? Now, now it's okay for the New Day to do accents at the Germans, but when we do <laughs> at the Irish or the Scottish, that's an outrage. I think you find. Uh, that it's not okay for them to do it because it was a let. I love this promo because <laughs> Imperium show up and obviously just stun and look at them. Look, everybody, else, everybody I follow on Instagram looks just like them. Um, <laughs> and it's just like, okay, great. Uh, and it's like, you guys are just so focused on your your gimmicks and you're goofing around and stuff like that. No wonder you lost the record. And they go, Einstein, <laughs> he looks like the guy from Adam's family. Do you have that in Germany? And they went, Danke for proving our point. Oh, exactly. Yeah, they called him Lurch, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah. Which, yeah, reminded like, me, which reminded me yeah. of the royal family. Because Jim yeah. always calls Ralph Little Lurch. All right, Lurchy. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about that. To yeah. be fair, though, everyone I follow on Instagram <laughs> looks like Xavier Woods with that tash. you seen it. <clears throat> oh. Made me pregnant, so it did, when it got revealed. 
Just me? That's fine. No, 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 no. no. Hey, we all have I, was naughty, I was naughty. <laughs> I hate it when you but you bring the podcast down and talk about your preferences for men. Hey, all the time, that's Ross. It's you know, it's it's a few centimeters away from the the, the version you don't want. But it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. nailed. It's just it. wide enough. I just wide. About it. Yeah. Mm. No, not that kind. The, oh, the kind that would like the sexy babies. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah Stop yeah, it, right. Ross. You're just yeah. going from. <laughs> It's like mind sweep from something you should be talking about on a podcast. Anyway, yeah, great segment. Moving on. Yeah. Backstage, Ebba encourages Mad Cat Boss ahead of his match with Karrion Cross. This is the romance we've all been waiting for. It's their real life romance. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Right. Oh, fair enough. Oh. <laughs> Moss still loses. Uh-huh. If this was Vince, by the way, they would have. she would have had a neck on with someone else immediately yeah, yeah. already. Moss still loves, uh, sorry, loses after distraction from Scarlett and Emma chucks him after the bell. So three weeks and he still lost his voice off a chokehold. <laughs> I think something else has been going on there with Mad Cat Moss. I reckon him and Emma's been karaoke or something. Mm. Big time. That must be it. Down right? at Hogan's Karaoke Place, which I learned about this week. That shop he's got, he, he holds karaoke nights when the wrestling's on. Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan. Oh, I've seen footage of that. I didn't realize that was a place that he owned. That's. I think it's in the back oh. of his shop or Does something. Does he go? Back yeah, Hogan's back there. Of the oh, wow. <laughs> back of the shop karaoke. Back of the shop karaoke. Um, street carrier. And then later backstage, Cross denies being the fifth member of the Survivor Series team, but does say he'll take Roman's titles one day. He's, he's, they're keeping him in the conversation, aren't they? Interestingly, though, at the back of that segment you just said there, Bray Wyatt was just wandering around. And I don't know if that was just by coincidence or it was just a mistake. It could be hinting at something in the future of Cross, maybe. I don't know. But he was there wandering around. They can really get around all the <laughs> issues here. It's like, Bray Wyatt's in that chuck. Oh, cryptic messaging. Could, like, wow, he said something mysterious. It was, where's me Mark? Am I on yet? <laughs> <laughs> what they, does this mean? They do have enough spooky people now to have like a ministry. Yeah. But yeah. would it... Really? But Joke looking AC. back, was the ministry even good? I know that might be a... Is that a harsh thing to say? Was the minute It had some iconic moments, but it did make everything really messy. It was bollocks when Vince revealed himself. To yeah, him. right. See, yeah. that's it. That's the corporate ministry era. People look at the ministry going, yeah, that was fine. And the corporate ministry is like, hang on, how big is this heel stable? Yeah. Why would Vince and then do Kane that? joined as well. Was like, it because they were trying to do an NWO? Yeah. The, stables were just the thing. Or was DX the, the, the NWO? Uh, yeah, yeah. So, Why would Vince try and do that to his own daughter? Eh? That's when I went, wait, hang on, now we're really... Because none of yeah, us suspected yeah. a thing. It's messier than, you know, ham and peas pudding. <laughs> Right now, with all this this happening and whatnot, but... it's potentially messier than Mad Cat Moss and Emma's relationship because the mm. way he eyed up Scarlet, which cost him the match, by the way, I think she needs to add words. Do you remember, you know, the meme? <laughs> Do you remember in the Pokemon original series where they'd go to the advert break with "Who's that Pokemon?" and then there's that meme where the guy goes, "It's Pikachu," and then it's yeah. not, and he goes, <laughs> "Yeah." I've seen a really good one where it's who's that Pokemon? It's Pikachu. And then it's, it's me, Austin. Yeah, <laughs> it's a yeah, brilliant, yeah. brilliant mashup of memes there. Oh, there it's go. good to see the memes coming together. Mm. Like peanut butter and chocolate. Known as Reese's Pieces in America. Oh, wow. Go. Wow. It's a good idea for a wow. second. Isn't it? Yeah. So, yeah, it's, at least it's something for Mad Cat Master to do. But right now, it's like the very first chapter of something for him. Because we still don't care about him. Let's start something. Because he has no character. He's got a girlfriend, maybe. It's not, been it. a, it's not been it's not been properly established yet on air. Mm. Um, but after, it's carrying cross to me is the bigger issue. Because again, a big fancy entrance has been followed by a really boring match. The only bit I sort of got like up for, not in the way Barrett NXT uh, way, uh, was uh, Mad Cat Moss running the ropes because it looked really really fast mm. and doing the spears in the corner. Apart from that, mm. would the solution for Mad Cat Moss to be to make him Rhino? Just make him <laughs> just simplify his gimmick right down. He just runs into people. Yeah. I think people would like that. You can go back to be the, the origins, the, the origins, the origins of uh, Mad Cat Moss, which was the offensive lineman. Yeah, mm. call him like <laughs> Moss goes fast on a Rolling Stone or something. Like that. <laughs> What's the lyric from American Pie? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Bray Wyatt wants to apologize to LA oh, Knight, no. saying he's straight from the path. This is good because he's like. I'm sorry. I really shouldn't have done that. Crowd. No, no, it's all right. You should have hit him. <laughs> I want to apologize. Crowd. No, don't do that. We don't want to know. Go be up somebody. It's very reminiscent of Jeffrey Dahmer in many ways. Oh, my God. Because <laughs> Jeffrey obviously murdered that man in the hotel room, but has no recollection of doing so. So it's very reminiscent of Jeffrey Dahmer. <laughs> you sound like Ollie. We stop <laughs> reading from Melters. We're doing this. It was the honestly. same cadence. Do you remember Ollie Ball? Yeah. It's Ollie Ball here. <laughs> I miss him. I hope he's doing all right and his mate. Night interrupts. And he goes, you know what? Yeah, I accept your apology. Yeah. And he goes, you know what, really? He goes, okay, shake hands. He goes, all right, okay. Boo, boo, boo. Slaps him. Oh. He goes, 
No, you're all right. I hit you, you hit me. Crowd, no, what's this? This You're is horrible. Wrestlers. Fight each other. Yeah. And he goes, all right, we'll shake hands. And then like slaps him again <laughs> and backs up the ramp, but it zooms in on his face. Bray's eyes were <laughs> mesmerizing. I was yeah. completely lost in his eyes. Because um, obviously he had the little flashes of Howdy going on behind The Rock. Mm. The Rock with a two-for-one special. Like We're getting there. We're getting to see his character a bit more, but we've still got a long way to go. Watch, it, watch or, the pictures video. Oh, see, I took this segment the opposite way. I thought, like... Bret Hart, who famously hated doing anything that he didn't think the Hitman character wouldn't do. I think Ali Knight should have said, Ali Knight would not do this. Because it was really cowardly of him. And we know Ali Knight is the man who single-handedly took down Sanger and was like <laughs> battering Grayson Waller yeah. two-on-one. And I don't, I didn't believe Chance him. Gunther, the NXT title. And yeah, he was so brave. And now he's not brave anymore. But he's a dick now. He's a heel now on SmackDown, isn't he? Even and though he shouldn't be. Dicks have to be scared. I thought he was brave. He's a scared oh, he's Let me down this week. I mean, apart from the Cameron Grimes feud, he was a bona fide baby face in NXT. Mm. Clar- uh, final clarification, no? mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, that yeah. This means, this sets up Bray Wyatt finally doing something. That isn't talking. I haven't got a pay-per-view now until Rumble. <laughs> oh. <laughs> He's not doing a Survivor Series, though, surely. Knight versus Wyatt. It's not been announced. Oh, the SmackDown tonight, oh, there is still yeah. SmackDown, yeah. There's still five. There's only five matches on the card as where yeah. I sat here right now, so yeah. I'm assuming it, like be great. two of them Bray are going to be... We'll say something like, oh, all right. Two of them are going to be long, obviously, but it feels still like there should be one or two more matches. Yeah. I still think he's howdy, me, you know. Who? Bray. He's howdy. He's howdy? No, okay. they're two different people. No, no. He had a mask on. Bray White doesn't have a mask on. Bray White wore that mask when he returned, if you remember, when he came through the door. That was a different time. mask. No, also, no, it was the same he's mask. He's also wearing a psychological mask. It's the, the mask you see, which on the segment you're about to speak about, the one that looks like the Phantom of the Opera sort of thing. I don't know what it looks like. You know what I mean? Woo! Mm-hmm. Not the Uncle Howdy one. <laughs> he had that the one on one. Yeah. <laughs> when he first came back. Uh, Shotzi takes on Shayna Baszler, but keeps getting distracted by Ronda at ringside. Wait, have I missed a bit then? Was there a Bray bit? Uh, the, the how uh, so LA Knight the Rock is leaving the arena. Oh yeah, yeah, we're about, yeah. LA Knight is oh yeah. it's, it's actually well done because we before they go to break, LA Knight's like people are like, you're not worried? He goes, I'm not scared about him or Uncle Howdy. Yeah, nothing scares me. <laughs> Fade, come back. LA Knight, unconscious, underneath a pile of crap. <laughs> it was a nice callback to Hell in a Cell when Bray was put under a pile of things by Seth Rollins with the little hammer. <laughs> why would you bring that up again because oh. it's all one universe Matthew uh... one continuous storyline and also it was the little mask that Bray wore when he came back not the Howdy rubber one Bo Selector thing the actual mask mm. that he wore when he came back at Extreme Rules that like was lingering around in the back of shot when LA Knight was talking so I, th- I think Bray's I think Bray and Howdy wanted the same did it go he 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 <laughs> it was, it was me of... Bray White who did this it was completely like black and like a different uh... room and then he was just there sort of floating around in midair mm. mm. nice Lovely. Well done. Rest in peace to the rock. Yeah. <laughs> Shotzi takes on Shayna, but keeps getting distracted by Ronda at ringside. So Raquel Rodriguez arrives to distract Shayna and Shotzi gets the roll up win. Last thing they should have done. Dun, the last dun. thing they should have done. They might as well not I have think... this segment take place. No one's buying Shotzi as a, a contender for Ronda. So no one's invested in the match. So in warming up Shotzi for Survivor Series, they need to have Raquel come down and help it to beat Ronda's lackey. Ah, because it's two-on-one right now. That's saying if it was one-on-one, there'd be a bit of a chance. Ugh. Like it's Survivor Series. Peft. I guess it's perspective again and how you look at things. Yeah. But, you know, I'm also hoping that Shotzi will just roll a tank out and take her out during That would be good. That just run her down. Dread, she could actually just mow her down yeah. and just, like, drive over the top of her. But then Ronda sees it last second and puts on the Hell's Gate on the tank. <laughs> <laughs> Bends the nozzle. put an arm bar on the, on the yeah. cannon, yeah. And the tank's tapping out. No, <laughs> the tank just drives off by itself going, no, I don't want any of this. <laughs> I think, could that match be a quick squash? I know they tr- they don't want to do that to Shotty, but it feels like it could. It would be the smartest thing. Yeah. So they won't. <laughs> Gunther is really scared of Bronx. Oh, oh yeah, this was annoying. Yeah. This. Sorry. <laughs> not yet. Not yet. Not yet. I need to use the rest of the thing. All right. So it's in the six man tag, and yeah, good old Braun Strowman, Braun D. Braun, is the big lad for New Day. So, all right, fine. But then it's the most unrealistic thing I've seen in wrestling on the same episode is Scary Mast Man <laughs> with his scary mask taking out people. Is Gunther? I'm not scared of Braun Strowman. Scared of any man. I get it, but it makes sense for a story because if Gunther just went, yeah, whatever, and started chopping him, it's, it's, well, okay, that's, that's, that build up dead, then, isn't it? But then, yeah, he did a good job of running away from him and getting ready to kick him in the right position and stuff like that. So, uh, Imperium lose to Braun and the New Day, but Gunther doesn't want none of that. So it doesn't really factor into the decision. I don't know if it would kill the build up because him and Sheamus just took it to each other and everyone loved it. Yeah. Could they do that with Braun? I know the match won't end up being as good as the Sheamus one. 
And I know the Brom won't care about how many stars the match gets, famously. Yeah. So, yeah. Or how many flips there are. Mm. Uh, was, did I, actually, I've got to read a bit here and I'll go on to you for a bit. Backstage, Braun says he can't wait to win the World Cup and the IC title. Spoke like a true Frenchman. Uh, but Ricochet warns him not to overlook the flippy flippers. Yes, that's Go the best on, thing Ricochet. Trevor's ever said. Up the Trevor. Up Go the Trevor. Finally. And uh, not that many people reacted to it, because not that many people got Twitter, up, uh, Twitter stuff. But did I read something today? Oh, I can tell if someone's making fun of it. Did Baron Corbin say something about Baron? Braun, yeah, Braun, he was like, uh, either you stand behind what you say or make it a joke. And he did neither, so F Braun. We didn't say F Braun. So he said, oh, you must have done it for clout then. Yeah. Rather, right, yeah. So, I think he's got a good point. Go on, Baron. Up the yeah. Baron. Up the Trevor. Down the Braun. Because uh, Braun Strowman, when he had his last run... <laughs> Can was... we have Ross's stock market of WWE wrestlers? <laughs> <laughs> he's gone up this week. Up the Gunter. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. And that was the end of another award-winning bit. I'll call Holly. Uh, I tell you, because is this the... F- you'll know better than me. Is this the first time someone's no-sold a chop from Gunter? Ooh. In WWE, maybe. He's not got, had many matches against big lads. So. Yeah, so I can see that if we're looking for why he did it, I can see why he did it if that was the first time ever yeah, someone's yeah. no show. But it should, it, I, it should never have happened. Martin Kirby no sold a chop once from him. because good Because he'd covered himself in bubble wrap. That's <laughs> right. That so. match was amazing. So Martin Kirby and Braun Strowman. Yeah. <laughs> League yeah, of yeah. the Room. <laughs> the Baldy Baldies, as he would call them, probably Braun. Yeah. Oh, well, Baron Corbin liked to join that group <laughs> just for clout. And mm. then Sami Zayn faces Booch in the World Cup while a brawl breaks out between their two teams. Jey Uso accidentally gets in the way of a Huluva kick attempt which allows Booch to pick up the win. Everyone brawls afterwards and Roman stands tall but here comes the fifth member of Sheamus's team. It's me, Os- no, it's Kevin Owens. He briefly comes face to face with Sammy before helping his pals clear the ring. Ooh. Yeah, really good. Sammy's been allowed to wrestle more which was nice. He did the, this lovely set of powerbomb which mm. made me feel all kinds of warm and fuzzy in my tum tum. That's not my line. So that's Simon Miller's line, isn't it? I don't know. Is it? I think I think Fuzzy so. in his tum tum. Yeah, he right. feels fuzzy in his tum tum. It's a pleasing sort of dichotomy because <laughs> he looks like he does, like hard as balls, but then he says, Fuzzy in my tum. No, no. <laughs> fuzzy in Tonight's top on top gear. Yeah, like, my, been... <laughs> like my creatine. It's been too long since I've seen Simon Miller. Yeah, it's man. been a while. Yeah. Um, if I you saw... ever appear, Simon Miller. I was so proud. Uh, <laughs> there's one of these fitness dudes who goes over other fitness dudes and says if they're natty or nice. And he talks like Alvarez. It's like, is he natty or is he nice? <laughs> Because it's like. Does nice mean on the juice? On, yeah, because Natty will be natural. Isn't it Natty or Natty? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Okay, right. Yeah, not, not, yeah. So, but it's like, because famous, like, YouTubes and uh, Instagram models and whatever, like that, and says if they're that, and thinks it's his professional opinion if they are. And Simon Miller was one of the ones there. And I'm like, Simon Miller's at the point where people are wondering, is he natural or is he on the juice? He is bloody massive, like. In more ways than one. Yeah. Well, how do you know? Scandalous. Ding dong. Excuse it's a me. nice bit of storytelling in the match, though, because if you watch it back, Sheamus sort of runs Jey Uso into the ring. It wasn't Jey Uso getting into the ring by himself. It so wasn't his fault, yeah. yeah. So obviously, uh, well, Sammy will m- misremember, I guess, what happened. Mm. And then it'll lead to more shenanigans. Oh, that was a nice end of the match. Yeah. Then thought... you go like next week, and we're, we're all looking forward to saying, well, I didn't. Force match. You jumped in the ring. No, 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 no. It's Seamus. I can't wait to see what happens at War Games. There's so many different directions they could go in with the bloodline. Crazy, it's still fun. Will this be After two years? The moment that they turn on Sammy. I'm dreading it, but I'm and also Sammy's looking forward to it. The mat. And then Roman will be like, them. "You're crap, you," and I've never liked you. Yeah, we got a <gasps> pictures video for Survivor Series. Oh yeah, it's out now. Fantastic. But none of us dead. Actually, no. Some I, none of mine were about that match. I can't remember what mine were. Andrew's, <laughs> Andrew's, Andrew's, Andrew did one about it. Andrew did one about it. Of course he did. Yeah. AW Rampage. No, no. Welcome to Dynamite, said Jim Ross. <laughs> Twice. Oh, <God>. Twice. <laughs> He's done that in consecutive weeks. I know we shouldn't laugh, but it is funny I'm how laughing. much it's happened. How much it is happening. They've relegated him Rampage and goes, all right, you can do an hour. <laughs> no, we can't. Uh, AKA the Kingston's Road. Oh, in brackets, oh. poor effort Jack. I wasn't it's part right. of that one, no. It's okay. I mean, like because he loves Road. the King's Road. It makes sense. It was the King's Road style. Tr- I was trying to work a pun into the word Akiyama and it just wasn't happening. No, no. That's for the best. I said, I like Jack because he's actually a magician. His best trick is if you give him a compliment, <laughs> oh, he'll take word. it and turn it into an insult. No, like that. Stop it, See? Matthew. Pimp blush. You were, doing this at, you were doing this at Tom's party in front of strangers. I know, I was just like, oh, you know, I'm bored. I think I'll say nice things to Jack. Yeah. Did that... he have something on his cheek as well? Did you wipe it off with a wet hand? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> something in your eye, Jack. Yeah. Uh, Ricky Stark. My girlfriend Lance. was right there, man. <laughs> and she's like, go on, Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> 
She wasn't. Give me she one wasn't for me. My, she wasn't my lad. <laughs> Ricky Starks beats Lance Archer to progress the tournament final. He's distracted by Brian Cage and Prince Nana afterwards. Uh, and Archer chokes on him the steps just to spite the Get his heat back, I guess. Because yeah. they're having Archer turn up and lose and yeah. he's not been around much. And this started off backstage, which they said, I'm not going to start with you in the ring, start with you backstage. Oh, like it the actually w- did. Like the WCW hardcore title. Yes. Oh, that was my leg. A good start. The Kiss Demon, Dale Torborg. <laughs> and Crowbar. Uh, the, oh my God, the um, Big Vito and Johnny the Bull. Mm-hmm. That's right, yeah. What who, the hell were they called? The, the Mamelukes. The Mamelukes. Who was the one who, I remember a match when, this is like one of my earliest memories of wrestling, probably when it was on Worldwide. It was when, you know how the t- deal, Dale Torborg, the yeah. Kiss Demon, had a, like a sarcophagus yeah, thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. and someone's like hitting it with a kendo stick, going like, come on out. I think it was Norman Smiley. But then he just hits him from behind. He wasn't yeah, yeah, in there went, at all. Aha, I think he brought a referee with him. Aha, look, it's the Kiss Demons. That's sarcophagus. I'm going to go, come on, come on, come on. And because Demon's already out. Come like, on. Oh, no. <laughs> That's how he talks, man. <laughs> Again, he's another definition of a lad who could just absolutely batter you, mm. and take you down. But Norman Smiley? Yeah. But also, I was like, when the, I, big, the big wiggle. wiggle. When I was a kid, I think I must have been distracted by the face pain and that, but Dale Torborg's massive. Mm. I didn't remember him being a giant. He's a long boy. Yeah. I remember him in the wall at Super Bowl 2000. Course, Two long the, boys. The special main event. Yes, it was. Very special. I had a great time. <laughs> <laughs> the mysterious part at the start of this match was fantastic. Yes, though. it was. <laughs> yes, uh, Ricky Stark's wearing the, was it New Jersey Devils, I think? Okay. Uh, to get some like, ice heat. hockey. Um, they brought in the crowd for a bit. Crowd loved that, very loud. And then they went back in the ring and they were less loud because the Rampage crowds are just quiet now for hey, some reason. After Dynamite, Tired, yeah. 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 And so it was nice because it's like, oh yeah, Lance Archer, I forgot about you. Maybe you'll go far in this. And it's, no, no, you are to set up Ricky Stark's come back from behind the tail of getting battered after the match. Yeah. Fine. Lance played his role well. Ricky Starks looked lovely and was able to outsmart him mm-hmm. and get his use his quickness against him with that spear slash schoolboy. It was the, the dive over the pounce attempt. Oh, yeah. Like Brock Lesnar diving over a Goldberg spear mm. but yes. slightly better. He's got lovely form in everything he does <laughs> Ricky Starks. It's oh, footwork. Oh, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Um, I but Archer, I thought Archer did his uh, did well again. The, the splash he did over the barricade thing. Mm. I, it always amazes me that such a long boy can do that. He's a thick boy as well. Mm. The two C's. Um, but I think the WWE could learn from this run that Ricky Starks is on because there's an investment there already with Ricky Starks because he's had a long time of being good and mm. getting people on side. And now they're battering him and making him look like he's winning matches, but you know he's getting beaten down a lot. Yep. So because the investments there to begin with, people are on board. Yep. Ali. They've not given people a chance to get invested, mm. but they're just beating him down and people aren't caring. So they could yep. learn from this Ricky Starks room with Ali, I think, by giving him a chance to establish himself with the people, the masses. And that's something that AEW are doing better than WWE. They so are. It's not, we're not, this one you know, specific yeah. example, that's right. So that there, there's, if you count at home, that's a positive AEW <laughs> thing. Yes, it is. Hook beats Lee Moriarty to retain the FTW title. Hook's getting longer matches now. He certainly They're is. He's learned how to wrestle yeah. is the FTW champion. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. He's put in the ring with people like Lee Moriarty who could probably wrestle Papa Jack for yeah, a three-star he's, match. So. He's his solid, big boot. Mm. <sighs> yeah. Another thing that made me say, ooh, ooh, ooh. Mm. His, le- his leg getting bent. Was, Hook was doing like a regal stretch kind of thing. Yeah. The yeah. angle of that leg getting bent was very reminiscent of Axiom's leg. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but he lived to tell the tale, did Lee? He mm. must have stretchy knees. <laughs> <How's> <laughs> he, isn't Moriarty... Hasn't he had like hour long matches on the indies with Wheeler Uter and stuff? Like he's well, well, oh, yeah, he's well traveled. Yep, I just don't know that much. I need to learn more about him then. Well, don't know if you have to learn everything about all the indie guys AW bring in, you won't <laughs> have time to watch the bully program. And <clears throat> that, Lee he's one of the good ones, okay. We say, hopefully. Uh, John Silver <laughs> argues with Roosh and Jose, the assistant, backstage and points <sighs> out, What are you gonna do, Jose? Surname the assistant, <laughs> but number 10, they said, What were you gonna do? We've already beaten you. Yeah, you've not beaten me. And number 10. Number 10 walks away. Yeah, he says, Could he be conflicted? Well, I hope not. End the, yeah. end the story. He end says it. to he says to Johnny Boy, he says, what do you mean us two? And then walks off in a sulk. Oh, God. Just end it, man. He said no three times. We had a match to prove yeah. he meant but no. Now he's like, oh, now he's maybe like, I do. Oh. Well, I mean, us two, sorry. Us 10. That's more like um, it. Maybe that was Such it. a bad, bad angle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Athena beats Madison Rain and continues to attack after the bell. Yeah, she's evil now, yeah. Before attacking Aubrey Edwards as well. This was like tries to get involved. When MJF pushed Tony slightly, Shivani, everyone went, That's the worst thing in the world. Well, what Athena's done is worse. This was the biggest pop of the night. It was crazy. (laughs) This was like when Gorilla Monsoon got taken down by Vader. This is the same sort of thing for me. Um, but I like Athena's new sassy 
persona. I like a new theme. It's a banger. I listened to it on YouTube mm. last night. Banger of a theme. Um, what am I going to say here? The reverse. See the spot where it was like a, a, a suplex attempt by Madison Rain. Was it Madison Rain? And yeah. then they went down, but she reversed it on the way down. No, it was by Athena and Madison reversed on the way down, but no one reacted. Was that just the crowd or was it like... It, uh, God bless Madison Rain. She's a very accomplished wrestler. She now does training backstage, but she could be given, like a lot of people in AEW, no time to get herself over. People don't know who she is, apart from that evil person from TNA about 15 years ago. So she comes out to deafening silence saw... every time she's on... Uh, rampage, which is every week. I saw fellow harsh, but... fellow member of the beautiful people, Angelina Love, tweeting saying, "Can people stop slapping their legs on forearms? That doesn't need the slappy sound. It's forearms." And where's she wrestling right now? <sighs> Oof. That was a genuine question. Wow. My goodness me, I don't know. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, cool. I think she's happily retired. Isn't it? I don't know. Obviously, not that bloody happy if she's complaining about whatever. I didn't realize Mercedes Martinez still worked there. That was a surprise <laughs> to me as well. This was like, a return. <laughs> Mercedes Martinez, what are you doing here? It's Honestly, like, oh, she's here. I, I struggle to remember which company she's with. It seems like she's like bouncing. I think she was always home. like Ring of Honor, but she was on AEW. No, I mean WWE oh. or AEW. Because she's Fair. also been in, <laughs> she was in the May. Uh, no, yep. Yeah, she was around. <laughs> The best friends tease a change of attitude uh, for Dan Howes and her the pre-show match. It's good because it's like all cryptic and showing all f- film reels and he's there in the corner, shows some teeth. It cuts the factory and the factory goes, it's just Dan Housen. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally just Dan Housen. I like the factory now. I, you know what? They're growing on me. Yeah. They've got a role and they do it well, especially QT. They're my QT favorite gets, of the goofy heel right. stable. QT gets some of the biggest reactions in front of the live crowds, which is crazy. Because you think, hang on, really? But he's there just doing old school, like Brooklyn Brawler type stuff. Going, Boo, you suck. It's like, there we go. You see the thing that went around on Reddit? It was like him having to just shout. His, I think it might be at full gear or maybe it was after this rampage where um, he's just shouting at this guy in the front row, just calling him a, a fat F. Oh. He's like, you think you could beat me? Look at the stadium, you fat F. <laughs> smash your face in and he's just shouting at this poor guy in the crowd I thought it was really funny there's a guy with a QT Marshall is a really good wrestler <laughs> sign or something uh, and then another House of Black vignette voiced by Doug Bradley of uh, Pinhead from Hellraiser th- uh, fame mm, for me okay. whatever yeah. obviously if you don't watch horror films not horror boys no. doesn't matter we'll I've seen move a on. lot of talk about the recent horror film about um, adult film stars in the 70s and Kid Cuddy's in it, and that woman. I don't know. I was hoping one of you would know You've what I was talking about. Give me more, more questions and answers. Dan, you're Jack. a film man, aren't you? Is it called The Pursuit of Happiness? No, because no. Oh, because the song. If Kid Cuddy was mm. like looking for 70s uh, porn stars. No, it's, he's one of the 70s porn stars. It's, what? It's called... Uh, <laughs> is it I Love is it just You? X? You... Is it just called X, maybe? Matt. Anyway. Yeah, sorry. Swing and a miss. Let's I mean, I've on. not seen it myself. Yeah. Thank you, Dan. Did you enjoy it, Dan? I'm oh, <laughs> cheers, man! Thank you. Good talk, Akiyama and Takashiya. Takeshita, Takeshita, beat Eddie Kingston and Ortiz ahead of their pre-show match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was crazy because they kept on going. It's Team DDT. Team DDT are here. I'm like, Akiyama's not bloody DDT. It's the all Japan we've all through and through. Him with. Yeah, and I went and checked. He goes, Oh, yes, most of all Japan. It's bloody not... years. You are old, Matthew. Time has well, changed. Well, I associate him. Maybe this is just because I've not. I didn't watch him at the time in either promotion, but I always think of him as a Noah boy. Oh, no, I was going to say Noah as well. More than a, I know he was around in all Japan, but there was just so many people ahead of mm. him because it was a crazy time. Mm. Yeah, I thought it was interesting that Eddie was being a heel against him, though, when he was his hero. He's been very heelish in this match here, mm. which I thought was an interesting uh, tactic. He's not. He's doing the King's Road, as they say. But no, he's, like, he's, he was like doing heelish things towards him. But I don't know. That's like an, a, an obsessed, jilted lover, I would say. I think they were saying like, yeah, because he's going <laughs> to watch me then, so he's not going to like go, oh my God, I'm a, I'm a big fan. He's he did that on the side, didn't he? Yeah, he, yeah, he, did, he did. did. Yeah, yeah. F and Mark. Yeah. I was good. <laughs> All right, Angie, you love. Calm down. But, what uh, did she do? Tweeted, can people stop slapping their legs on forearms? Oh. It's a thing we talked about 10 seconds ago. Um, Did we? Yeah. Where the hell was and then that? Matthew, <laughs> and then Matthew went, where, she, where is she wrestling now? And you went, <laughs> right. <laughs> you oh were in my. the conversation. It was back to years ago when we Jesus. talked about the I, chemistry. People love this show. I got a message on Slack while that conversation was happening, so I missed half of it. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> you were in, oh, sorry, you Matthew. Were, I wasn't paying attention <laughs> to him. <laughs> was it breaking so news? You, you're you're right? No, no. Oh, you're right. a guy of equalized. I'm not paying attention. If you want to dial for money, you need to put it on Timetastic, okay? Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, God, I've, not, I've got no time to do it. Well, I'll do that soon. Thank oh, you. Oh, you will for work in the weekend. Aye, cheers. Sorry, we're, we're only covering the biggest show of the week right now, so you can do it now. 
<laughs> no, we're still on Rampage. Takeshita no, no. was doing everything fan- fantastically. So he was. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. Isn't he beautiful? Yes, he is. Mm-hmm. Ortiz as well. He wow. did this. Um, what did he do? Like the Ortiz cutter, uh, the Ortiz cutter, the reverse cutter thing he did out the corner. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He needs to find a role. Him. He needs to know his I, role and open his mouth. I just miss Santana as well. Mm. But apparently they're not t- part tag team partners anymore. Well, one of the uh, Santana's still obviously out injured still as well but, uh, as I, I think, know. But yes, the, then the reports given they're that let they're his not. going to contract run out. Yeah. Ah, oh, I'm. Oh, I thought I read sure. somewhere this might not be. Verified, I haven't checked this. So I don't know. But. but. I think I've read, or maybe it's just rumors that they're going to let his contract run out rather than... Like, a lot of things with AEW backstage, I'll wait and see what happens, but it'll be weird because it's like, yay, Eddie Kingston and Ortiz. His best friend. It doesn't doesn't feel like a proper tag team yet, but I guess if it's going to be long run, then... I didn't recognize Ortiz at the pay-per-view. Neither did someone we were watching it with, Dan. Didn't recognize him. I remember someone was like, who's that Kill Bill running around on the outside? Because he was all in yellow. I want Ali G, me. Ali G. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sure he's loving this podcast. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that was Ada Brown Beach. And it was weird because I thought, well, why are you... Hang on. There's a lot of matches could be happening at the pay-per-view. Why is this headline of the thing beforehand of the go-home show? And then they announced, oh, well, by the way, we can have Eddie Kingston versus Nakayama. Like, on the pre... Oh, oh, well, now we know that. And, on right, the pre-show. And, on the pre-show. Well, in fairness, there's a lot of stuff to be going on. True, with. true, uh, true. Speaking of which, AW Full Gear. Finally, MGF is a mouthpiece. Oh, okay, that's, okay, that's nice. I mean, it's not an original. Everyone said it, but... Yeah. On the pre-show, Evil Danhausen helps his... Not Danhausen, Evil Danhausen. Yeah, Danhausen Dark. Ooh. Mm. Helps his pals beat the factory somehow, some way. With a uh, jar of teeth. With a jar of teeth. And a spike. Well, the spike came well, in he after uses the, bell, the yeah. blunt end of the spike rather than <laughs> the sharp end. I can't believe shocking that. <laughs> Ricky Starks beats Brian Cage to progress the tournament, which I was like, they are gone heavy uh, 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 on Brian Cage right now, but... Uh, oh, t- Ricky Starks won. I'm saying, so you're telling me they're going heavy on Brian Cage. Do you hear Ethan Page on commentary? What did you say? Waxing lyrical about Brian Cage's, and I quote, tits. <laughs> Such lovely tits he has. What great! What a great oh, set of tits he's got. Because Ethan Page used to say that he had the greatest tits. Ah. Oh. So he's envious. Mm. Tit envy. We've all been there. We've all been there. Um, lovely, simple story with the injury yep. getting involved and whatnot, and then sort of the reverse, like the f- the, f- the fireman's carry position into the destroyer, and then the build to the finish was lovely. Mm. Again, Dory could do this with Ali. Yeah. Come on, why aren't they? Yeah, this is very true. Good point. Yeah. And Eddie Kingston beats June Hagiyama in Eddie Kingston's dream match. Oh, well, many he's got. His promo before the match set it up wonderfully, like how he couldn't get his words out because he was so choked up. Mm. Um, it's made the rampage thing slightly confusing because he was being a bit of a dick towards Akiyama. Maybe uh, on in... commentary they were stressed. I think Joe did a good job. Wow, said it. Um, of like saying like, no, Ed Kingston's in the ring with one of his heroes. He's he's eager to get on with him. He's not going to show that he's not going to be like a young boy or anything else like that. Yeah, trying to respect album, which makes sense. If you did that, everybody else like American wrestlers, maybe that wouldn't. Oh, he's been a heel, but with the Jamies, like, nah, hit us then. Yeah, and. And Jericho, oh no, it probably wasn't deliberate. I was going to say Jericho was also was about to fight with his young boy, Ishii, the next week, but it was probably, I don't think you mentioned that. I was going to say, it was funny, because like, it was like, I don't know, I've got some of those shows that like Jericho's on and there's young boy Ishii in the background. Really? So like, is this, yeah. It is true. He's so got hair. Oh yeah, 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 there's the young boy Ishii at WAR. Yeah. No, no, he's, he's been, actually, I think he's a little bit of hair. He's got a little so, bit of, like, just a He's a not as wide top. as he got, by the way, as well. So I was like, <laughs> ooh, little skinny, but obviously still big, so... Yeah, young boy Ishi, like he, and he's like, what did Ishi, <laughs> what did Ishi, <laughs> what did Ishi say? I saw like just the print screens, obviously the New Japan promos with talk, the subtitles on. It's just like, yeah, even when you were like winning titles in WAR, I still thought you were a dick. <laughs> I respect you. That was nice. I saw the promo with Moxley and Shota Umino resur- uh, resurfaced again from when he was in New Japan. It was oh, so good. Oh yeah. When he's like, <laughs> he's like, tell him, tell him, Shota, and he just <laughs> just throws at the middle fingers, and Moxley's like, no, no, cut the promo, and he just goes. Thank you. And she walks up. <laughs> Brilliant. In the first match of the pay-per-view, Jungle Boy wins the cage match against Luchasaurus. He's such a hero. He there's no escapes, is. Matthew. Let's clarify this now, because I got some pelters for not pointing out. You know, there's the spot where Jungle Boy gets thrown down the side of the cage. Mm. I was getting like criticized for not highlighting, well, why didn't Jungle Boy just continue falling? He would have won. There was no escapes, everybody. Oh, they got out of the cage later on. I know. So, mm. do we just got the monopoly there of like what people expect from a cage Different match? Different rules, like, no, yeah. No, it's not. It doesn't have to be. It's to keep people out, yes. which it did because Christian Cage only got one working leg right now. So, um, <laughs> is it? Oh, <laughs> this this match had got me thinking about which I couldn't stop thinking about for the rest of the show at this point because this match had like blood and high spots yep. and everything, and I thought 
I, then I started thinking about like the ordering of a wrestling show, mm. and that was what I was thinking about. And then, as we'll see, there's three matches with a weapon. Should I use this weapon spot? I yeah. tweeted that and started getting like pelters for for saying that. People were saying stuff like, "I too have never heard of the literary rule of three. I'm like, oh, that's oh, like, that's the wankiest reply I've yeah. ever got on Twitter. That works on paper, not on wrestling shows. Well, I don't the literary think rule of three. someone people were suggesting that it was done deliberately, not just because Tony can't say no oh, to anything. Nah, I know. I don't think it was deliberate at all. But I'm all right with people giving you stick on Twitter because it's Twitter. But the rule of three. The rule of three. It's just yeah. repeating the same thing, th same thing th thrice. Yes. <laughs> One more time. <laughs> Same thing thrice. There you go. Bum. No, what am I doing now? Um, Jungle Boy wins a cage match. And what a stunning looking... What lad, a blinder. Oh, yeah. Whoa. <laughs> Extraordinary. What, Luchasaurus is good looking as well without his mask on, right. which is a shame that he's got to keep it on, but... What, did he get it off during the show? He's been in he's been in Big Brother America. Oh, right. I thought you were uh, referencing something that happened on the show. No, he, he told a story. You know when they did that wrestlers in hotel rooms getting coffee? Yeah. And he told a story about how he was on Big Brother and in his season... He ended into a romance with a, a woman. Yeah. And some days it felt like she was like off with him or didn't like him as much. And he was like, eh, what's going on here? And then it emerged that she they were twins and they kept swapping them in and out. So the one who liked him more was the one. And he was like, he had no clue. I think he got together with her, didn't he? Like the one. Oh, you know the, this one already? The one that, I just straight to hell with him. Oh my word. Did yes. you mention it? Yeah, years ago. Oh. Like, was it's he a handsome? fun fact to bring up. Was right? Well, I only saw him briefly at the start. And then oh. yeah, he was just really nice. Yeah. Lovely long brown hair, as we know, but yeah, yeah mm. the chiseled and beard. Right. Looks, Looks a, bit a bit like, bit like James Rollins. Jenkins. Oh, right. <laughs> like <laughs> Seth Rollins or James Jenkins. Yeah. Because uh, yeah. it was yes. on NXT very briefly. Uh, a couple mm. of appearances, I guess. But... Judas. Uh, Judas. Man. The, scary. No, I... <laughs> the real What's his name? Judas. Judas uh, Not Judas, Judas uh, Messias. That was that was Mil Mertes, wasn't it? Yeah, Judas. Priest, whatever it was. Oh, I yeah. another Judas. This is going nowhere. It was Jungle nice Boy to see. Uh, said in the post <laughs> script, sorry, I'm sorry, um, thing that he wore tights to be to look like Shawn Michaels at Bad Blood 97 oh. because oh. him and Luchasaurus are such good friends. That's Luchasaurus' favorite ever match. Oh, that's yeah. cute. It's nice. Yeah. I yes, really enjoyed is. a bit as well where Luchasaurus, who's been rendered unable to talk in AEW over the past year or two, yeah. is clearly heard going, oh, S-H-I-T, when uh, Jungle Boy reverses the uh, <laughs> the goozle into the armbar over the top rope. Um, and the massive spot at the top of the cage, obviously, was a lovely, lovely visual at the start. And they got better because when he put the, the snare trap on, black goo right. came out of his oh. face. Oh, he's a dinosaur. He's like the yeah, penguin. That, it's oil. So he can put it in his car. Oh, he's like the penguin off Batman, man. Oh, that works well. <laughs> I, I enjoyed this match a lot. It did exactly what it had to. But I'd, it was one of those ones where I'd gone in with higher expectations because I'd convinced myself that Marco Stunt was going to come back and help Jungle Boy. I know, I don't know why. I was just like, it's, it's going to happen. He didn't. But what would he have done? Jumped off the cage. That would have jumped like, off the jump Empire on, State like, Building. No, like, I thought that Christian was going to be sneaky and try and get involved and then Marco was going to jump on his back or something and he'd be like, yeah. eh. <laughs> get off me. Like Austin Powers fighting Mini Me. <laughs> but, uh, I liked as well on the uh, the, the scrum. I, I swear you said this, I said this before, but it was just a nice bit reminded that Jungle Boy started off training when he was like 10 and he started doing it with some guy around the area who did it uh, did training for the kids classes and adult classes and said well you, you're too good for the kids class so you could be with the adults and he was wrestling at 10 years old with Miro and Luchasaurus mm. okay. when he was a kid wow. and he said that as a joke probably and I was better than both of them <laughs> at 10 <laughs> What a careful so, now, Jungle Boy. Yeah, so yeah, Jungle Boy, Jack Perry, this is going by now. Jungle which means Jim Ross was right just a few years ahead. He's got that lag. <laughs> um, yeah, because he's obviously want to get over not being, just using his name, his father's surname, being famous that way. And he also wants to, you know, be more, <laughs> doing more than what he did originally, which I forgot about when he was like literally a Jungle Boy. So he was eating like bugs out of Luchasaurus's <laughs> hair. So like, now he could actually talk and, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. kiss his girlfriend in the parking lot. And stuff like that. Whoa. So it's, uh, yeah, I think this ticked all the boxes. What yeah, a match. What great. a start of the show. Can the rest of the show keep up this pace? Let's find Some out. Some of it can. Yeah. yeah. The Elite return to carry on my way with Son. And, what uh, an entrance, by the yeah. way. It's a really good theme. Yeah. Tony Khan was un. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Did not confirm that this was going to be an ongoing thing. It was just more just because they're returning because of this thing. He said that they were very reasonable to deal with getting the music. Cheers, Kansas. I think it has been confirmed since that they're going to keep it. Off. <laughs> Thanks, Tony <laughs> Khan. <laughs> Complete waste of time. It, is, it worked so well. Yeah. I wasn't even sure it would work because the rumors were out beforehand, yeah, yeah. but I can't deny that but it was a brilliant At the same time, though, it was like, all right, here come the, here come the, the very back. I get it. Fine. Obviously, the crowd were chanting stuff about punk. All right, fair enough. They're welcome back. All right, get it. Happy for them. Not going to be too hateful. They're going to win the titles back from Pac in the death the, the triangle. Sorry, it's fine. Bang. Uh -huh. One, two, three. <laughs>
Yes, I was not expecting that. Uh, Everyone was telling me like, what do you mean you didn't expect that? It was really obvious. I'm nah, like, shut up, Mark. It wasn't I obvious. thought they were just going to no. loot, get them back. Hey, oh, business as usual. Was so happy when they won. I was also shaken. I didn't expect Ray to get corrupted like he did by Wall Geordie Pack and the but Hammer. Geordie Pack and Phoenix. Yeah, Ray. Yeah, the shot, Phoenix shot window. <laughs> He's officially oh, a Geordie now. Oh, it's the time of year. <laughs> and Phoenix Junior, that name doesn't work. Whatever, we'll call him the Metro Center. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, though, the Phoenix window has been causing quite a fuss this year because people don't like it. Oh, not, I open? haven't liked yeah. it any bloody year. And every oh. year, every year I walk past it, I think anarchy. Hey, when it's Willy Wonka. If I throw some, if I throw a brick through, will I be the only person where people join in? Is what I think every time. I you know past the best. That the thing. best thing about Phoenix Window isn't actually do with Phoenix Window. It's the Greg's over the road. Have you seen this? Oh. When they, they get the yes. sign, oh, I forgot about they this. get yeah. the sign on the front of the shop and they invert it so it's back to front. So when people take pictures of the oh, Phoenix genius. window, you see the Greg's logo the right mm. way around. And that's why Greg's is the best. I love you did the Italian <laughs> thing, like fine ah. cuisine. Have you had a, um, <laughs> not, a festive bacon? I've still not broke the duck yet uh, this year. Huh? Gone downhill? Not as good as last year's. Really? Ooh. Oh. My humble opinion. But I can't wait to hear yours when you rate my take away. <laughs> so what do you think of this match? I yeah, thought it was really good, good, yeah. It was a bit too much main points of like Power Ranger, I've called it Power Ranger-esque stuff. Oh, where they were doing respect. like the, the, the kicks at the same time. And that they were doing caused like the, a stir, it, that it, spot it, on That Twitter. was a bit too much for me, but Whoa. apart from that, the, the, triple, the triple tombstones was good. And obviously when Ray used the hammer, I was like, yes, storylines coming back. Yes. Well, I, I like how it wasn't, I don't know if he's been fully corrupted by Pac yet because well, the story continues on Dynamite. But it was like that he woke up, he came to his senses, Pac had put the hammer in his hand, and then he was he was already gonna get he was gonna get hit with the, the one winged angel, so he had to do it. It's like a desperate. He was grinning moment. afterwards. He, he showed them they were like the, the oh. deed here, the elite, and it was the Pac's like ha 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 and Phoenix was like, hey, 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 hey. Well, I thought I thought he was like, Oh really? I, I thought yeah, it was a good camera shot when they show when they do it when they show like, like the winners here in the foreground is the know. <laughs> Everyone is dead and, and oh. hanging out with trees and the foreground. I thought he'd have been guilty. Like, oh no. Nah. Oh. He kept his title. Yeah. Job done. Exactly. Job. Emphasis on that. And then Jade Cargill beats Nyla Rose to retain the TBS title. No. To win back well, the nah, TBS title. The reigns title. never. Who's typed this up? That's incorrect. No, no, the title <laughs> is metaphysical. It's Jade not Cargill, real. that's right. Yeah. The Nyla belt. She's got Was back. Nyla Rose's. Right. Anyway, sorry, I'll, I'll stop that. Right. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, Jay Cargill dressed as Chitara from Thundercats. Cool. I'm having to explain that to you because I know that you're too young for that type of That's thing. That's got to be the 80s. Yeah, no idea. Oh, yeah. Okay. That Thundercats is prime late 80s. Okay. So is anyway. that Leotard? Yes. Straight from one of those 80s workout videos I've heard about. I've heard about those as well. <laughs> 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 Dressed like Mrs. Motivator, she was. <laughs> I thought it was interesting that Vicky Guerrero might have been wearing some Rhea Ripley merch. Uh, I'm your daddy t shirt, which people oh, pointed out. But then, she, notice, though. but then she was married to Eddie Guerrero. Yeah, yeah but wait, that's an Eddie. On the, on the low rider. No, Papi was Eddie. Daddy is Rhea. Oh, oh, well, right, oh right. Well, come on. Get, okay. get it right. Yeah, yeah Semantics. Yeah, okay. yeah, you are right. <laughs> um, uh, that, Nyla got lots of offense in, which obviously Jade isn't used to, but I thought the match was okay. Like, yeah. I don't know what else to say about it. I remember during this match, me and Fraser talking about what what has the best Jade Cargo match been, and I think it's for me the one against Ty Condi yeah. when Ty the Brazilian flag on and yes. they kissed each other. Not because they kissed each other. That's not. <laughs> oh no. All the things she said. All the things she said. They were. It was for a reason. Yeah, 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 was, yeah. What state were they in where they had uh, summer going something on? Something bad happened. God, we should could, go there. Uh, half America then. Yeah. <laughs> Let me get the map. <laughs> but um. Because that was just a sprint and they just threw everything at each other. And this match was on the way to being mm. like that as well. I think it like a lot of Jade Cargill matches should be just shorter and sweeter. But at the same time, I'm liking that it was a different breakup. I know some people didn't like the build up to it because the Jade Cargill was a liar, Ross, as you point out many times. Apparently but... it was uh, Tony Schiavone's idea. The entire like Nihilus stealing the belt. That was all Tony Schiavone. Oh, Schiavone's what a idea. class act that Tony wow. is. But yeah, now it's like, okay, Nyla didn't get the title back or win it, whatever. I don't know what's left for Jade. Just keep on beating people. I There's guess. still nobody in the company who's gonna who's being primed to beat her, is there? Willow? No. Well, not yet. Not yet. She was a jobber this week. Like a oh, proper, yeah. proper jobber, yeah, wasn't she? Yeah, yeah. A proper, proper yeah. jobber. Uh, I thought it was Taz singing again. So <laughs> maybe Soraya. Oh, she she'd be in the main oh. title contention, wouldn't she? I don't think that would go down well. It wouldn't. Oh. No, it wouldn't. It wouldn't. No. Let's move on. You sound like Gary Neville there. Oh. Did that. Potential penalty oh. coming. Oh. <laughs> I'll take the money and run. <laughs> Jericho retains the Ring of Honor title against Danielson, Claudio, and Sammy Guevara. Will Sammy do the right thing? <clears throat> no. 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 But Jericho will win anyway. <laughs> yes. 
Making that a complete bloody waste of time. It was very oh, no, nice. I liked the match. Yeah, that's very nice match. action. Very nice. Obviously, unique was... four man spots and stuff. Yeah, that was all fine and stuff. But this is one of the issues I have against a with AW. Rather, w does not do it all most of the time. Is that there wasn't a lot of story build up for this. It was quite team yeah, yeah. Sing into it. So it was like obviously yeah the action. I'm not going to be complaining against that, but it's just like and. Well, that was the, the build was Sammy doing that where Tim and Jericho are doing the interview and then Sammy's like, oh, is that how it's going to go? Is it? We'll see. And he walks off. It was really quick. Yeah. yeah. If, you, if you timed it all, it was 20 seconds worth of build. Uh-huh. But then during the match, we obviously had the stuff where the two teams, teammates were teaming up to do their stuff and then they started yeah. fighting each other. Yeah, okay then. Yeah, carry on. I was being stuck in awkward position. Ooh, carry on. lovely. Ignore me stretching. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And then sort of uh, Chris had to keep an eye on Sammy at numerous points when he was trying to go for pinfalls and stuff. So that's where the story came in for me. Um, but it was always just about the action, wasn't it? Like mm. we had submissions and then cov- covers during submissions yep. and then submissions put on to submissions. Um, uh, yeah. It was really weird because the crowd, because the match was built around the crowd getting behind Sammy when he decided to go for it. But the crowd hates Sammy so okay, much. That's it's the hard. Thing. The only tension was, ooh, maybe Sammy will go for it. Like, people do not like Sammy right They're now. here at the start of the match. He was getting booed so much. He, he mm. was the right guy in the Andre Andrade situation, and they still booed him. <laughs> <laughs> you should have got time, beat up more, I bet Sammy. If he, I bet if you right. go back and watch this episode when that happened that week, we were probably like, ah, oh, bloody Sammy, what's he like? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Even though Andrade deliberately started a fight with him. Yeah. Oh, well. He was involved in the best spot of the match, though, for me, where Claudio just yeets him over the uh, top yeah. rope and then Brian comes out of nowhere for a near fall. That was very good. And I, I know a lot of people have been having a go because he didn't quite nail the first attempt, but I really liked the, the Judas effect mid-swing. That's mm. got to be hard to pull off. That, yeah, I, 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 get, I like they did a second one yeah. afterwards. It, it didn't look like bloody awful, the first one. It didn't fully connect properly. I don't think it was no issues with him just to give him another one. Yeah, yeah. I thought yeah. it was a good finish, man. Jericho's yeah. right. There's no such thing as a botch. There's not. <laughs> no. And then Soraya wins her first match Soraya. back. Soraya. I thought I got it right that time, but yeah, I've been practicing. Soraya. Soraya. Soraya, yeah. Soraya be- wins her. Because first... she's a ray of sunshine. You'll remember oh. it now. Yeah. Soraya Sunshine. <laughs> That's great, Dad, don't you? <laughs> yes. Soraya wins her first match back, beating Britt Baker. This was a weird match for me because I assumed Soraya of Sunshine would have loads of the heat and all that stuff because hey. of all the reactions and stuff. And mm. because of this somewhat awkward build up and the promos, I guess. It was interesting that they went out there and the crowd went mild, apart from oh. that one night guy uh, <laughs> going, yeah, go on, sister. Uh, it was interesting because I thought they were going to be like, like, it was going to sound like, I don't know, Hogan Rock, but it, nah. Oh, it didn't. I thought that, because I, I, I was worried that she was going to be bad now because of all the time off and stuff, but she was she was good again. And I thought, I, I was I liked the match. Yeah, I was expecting it, like you know to be doing crazy moves and stuff like my first match in many years, but it was I thought the, the heat would be there, and there wasn't much. And if anything, well, Britt Baker had more positive heat. From wait, because that promo she cut last that week was, was one of the promo. best babyface promos of the year. <laughs> yeah. yeah, she has been yeah. there since the start. Yeah. She has yeah. been there during the pandemic, and Sarayed has just rocked up and tried to do what she's been yeah. doing. Um, yeah. It's not so much like those feuds where the villains got a point. She was actually just right. Yeah. yeah, they were both right in their own weird way, though, weren't they? Yeah. Yeah. Like, it... But this then kind of cancelled it out because it's like, well, who do you want to cheer more? It's just well, neither of them, really. Yeah, <laughs> being the reaction. I think also maybe we've just had like a massive cage match and all the flips in the world. That's and another all thing this... as well. Yeah. yeah. So she uh, also, yeah. Sarah, sorry, pronoun boy, as Jim Ross likes to say now. He loves pronoun boy. I don't know if he likes saying <laughs> that or if he's saying it because he doesn't like saying it. Like, he has that kind of. It, it, bitchy way of I always thought initially it was like a Vince thing, but the way he's added boy to it, that makes me sound like it's something that gets like directive in AEW. <laughs> Imagine Tony Khan just screaming, pronoun boy, Jim. Um, but I had to quit commentary because Tony Khan gave me young pronouns. And the fuck <laughs> How did pronouns pass start? Is it because Vince wants them to call the wrestler by name? Yeah, 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 like, yeah right, right. Great right. move from him. It's like, no, no, no great move from And it is oh, yeah. actually, if you go back and you go, okay, that's, yeah, I get where he's coming from. Yeah, but I can't go back and watch any match where Vince is the commentator because he's awful. <laughs> really, really bad. <laughs> like, really bad. Oh, it just reminds me of Jim Ross's Vince McMahon laugh impersonation. Oh. <laughs> 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 it sounded like the chicken from Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, Soraya credited Britt Baker with carrying the match afterwards, which, which really? I thought was interesting. In the press conference. She's a star. Mm. She added. She came across really well in that press conference. Yeah, yeah. she said she made it look I was rusty getting in there, and she took my breath away when she had that great promo against me mm. in the ring. So she admitted, I'm glad she she's admitted like, that her first promo was bad. Yeah, I'm yeah. glad she was like, yeah, whoops. For, for the first at the, at the Tokyo Dome. Wow. Oh, yeah. For the yeah, first yeah. match back in five years with that neck she's got, I thought she did very right. well. Yeah, yeah same, same. I'm just going to say, like, her as a character needs to be sorted out and, like, what she's going to be doing now 
because it's like, yeah. It's Some people are be... like, yeah, don't go against Brit Bloody Baker. I yeah. think that was a mistake. Should Is she going to end up booed? another collection in Tony's collection of toys? Yeah, He's like the collector like from Toy Story 2, isn't he? Yeah. He just keeps them in a box. Samoa Joe steals one against Wardlow and Powerhouse Hobbs winning the TNT title. Yeah, I put steals one because he did. Saves, uh... saves Wardlow right, right? He's got this finisher move that he needs to hit 12 times uh... so he gives Samoa Joe a chance to get in there. Get a better finisher, like an F10. Yeah, what happened to the F10? I agree with them. Um, which one of OSW said it? Maybe V1 said that... Probably him. He never shuts never... up until then. <laughs> I love you. It's all a joke. Don't worry. The... <laughs> I thought it was OC you feud with. Yeah. <laughs> um, throw, throw some at see if it sticks. One of them, and I think it was V1, <laughs> said that, that this move will never work. One, the higher up, he, the bigger matches he gets in because it's like the opposite of the diamond cutter. It can't end the match from anywhere. It needs a million. Yeah. I'll tell you what, though. Mm-hmm. Wardlow's whisper in the wind and swanton bomb Jesus. combo. That's Wait. the best whisper in the wind I've ever seen. Oh, because he was quite straight, wasn't he? Like his body was quite straight. It looked powerful. Oh, yes, it wasn't yeah. like loosey goosey like Jeff Hardy's. It was <laughs> tight and compact. Loosey goosey, <laughs> righty tighty. Yeah, uh, Hobbsy Wobbsy was goody woody in this match. I thought he wore. <laughs> loosey goosey is a standard term. <laughs> I love this match in my tummy tummy. No, no. <laughs> anyway, but uh, yeah, I was good at that. The crowd, I, I guess, because of the length of the pay per view. Woof that they were a bit burnt out and tired and whatever like that because I thought they were going to be going mental over this one. And instead, it was just like a... Uh, Another uh, one with short And they build. were doing really cool stuff against each other. Yeah. So it's a match we wanted to see. Got all the cool moves. And the crowd were like, mm. if I leave now, I can get on by 10. <laughs> surprising booking this day. I didn't expect Joe to win. Yeah, I thought it was going to be like a solidifier for Wardlow, me. I Way thought Hobbs Phillip. was going to win. Ooh. Because I thought, why is this a triple threat? It's so Wardlow could lose the belt without being pinned. Uh. But I got the wrong... The wrong man. Who did he? Was it Hobbs? He, he put the. It was unconscious, but he put the clutch on him. Yeah, oh yeah. But he'd been already knocked out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Smart small Joe. Mm-hmm. Triple, th- triple threat at sacrifice. Hey, oh, one again. It's all right. The screen went thingy, mm. and then it's all good. All right, and then Darby Allen and Sting were somehow able to defeat Team TNA of Jarrett and Lethal. Back to the night. <laughs> yeah, I was, was laughing my bollocks off at certain points during this match. Uh, where do you even start? The Satnam Singh and Darby spot off the ladder was mm. incredible. Not because, well, first and foremost, you think like if he just sidestepped and Darby landed on the floor, that would be more devastating than what he actually did, which was <laughs> already really devastating. Yeah. Just catching him like a tennis ball and then just hugging him uh, as far up the ramp as he could. It was mm. really impressive. I don't know how he did it. It was really good. I think it was someone that was unpopular and unsuccessful wrestling memes that posted the picture of that gif and just says, when my cat jumps on the curtain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, there was the nasty spill for Jay Lethal on the apron, which looked like it could have killed him. I don't know if you remember oh, that. Oh, yeah. Oh, my which God. Bit, like, he took, like, a Kevin Owens bump. Yeah, on he the got, apron. He got, you know, like, the flare thing off the top? Yeah. Put that onto the apron, and oh. half of his back landed on it. It looked horrible. Thud. Oh. Uh, the Sting, obviously. Not a nicer guy. Go sting on. doing a Sting thing off the elevated bit in the crowd. It was good, because... Oh, my God. Satnam didn't quite catch him as clean yeah. as he did. He sort of, like, went over And then he over just his disappeared into darkness. He, yeah. like, did his head it looked hit nice. the it just, yeah. Then he just got straight back up and was like, ah! <laughs> it was fine. Because he's um, crazy. Darby did that as well later on. Yeah. The coffin drop into the chair shot from Jarrett was amazing. Yeah. Out uh, it was fine in this match because it was stupid bollocks anyway, but Darby no selling that when Jarrett's like, you know, he's playing mm. baseball with that damn guitar. Yeah. Um, and I thought the finish was nice as well. It's a shame he didn't get it quite right, but they ad-libbed it enough to fix yeah. it. But... I thought it was a nice little match. Yeah. I, had, I was sitting there, this isn't like AEW with Jeff Jarrett cutting five-minute promos and getting involved in pay-per-views and whatnot, but I thought it was, for what it was, it was good. Could it have been like just on the rampage maybe before the pay-per-view? Probably, but... It's a nice piss break match. I don't mind this, oh, the wild Derby and Sting tag matches as part of a pay per view. Quite refreshing. Yeah, this got the crowd back into it. Yeah, yeah. they're making noises again, which I was happy with because it was like, oh, this is crowd just dead. You always for us, pay attention I? to the crowd. I like that. I'm invested in it. I don't like these like it was a great match. Just if the crowd aren't into it, I don't care. Oh. What, I wanted that. Go, go to the library and read a book. I would like to retract my piss break statement. I meant that quite harmless, not like the traditional way. Like yeah, a nice you don't want to palette, skip the match. Palette cleanser. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. okay. Well, that's it. Not piss break. If you mix Unless the two of like them. I was going to say, if you mix the two of them, you get <laughs> strange, strange messages. <laughs> and then with help from Britt Baker and Rebel, Jamie Hayder beats Tony Storm to become the new AEW Women's World Champion. In brackets, it was lineal, and then it's not anymore. Damn Sam Punk again. So they've retroactively <laughs> made Tony and Jamie's reigns 
Yeah, because yeah. they've apparently is, is the news is that Thunder Rosa they said, well, wait for you for a bit. How long is injury going to be? And it was around could be supposed to be around now. She's coming back. They said it's going to be even longer, and they went, that's a bit too long. We'll take it off. Which seems right now okay. That seems reasonable, but given the fact that the women are just t- constantly taking shots at her, like they make like. Omega and the books look like <laughs> diplomats. Like, um, By comparison, I'm, it's going to be interesting to see where this, where this leads to. I wonder she comes if back. the story ever comes out with what actually has been going on, because it's an odd one. Yeah. I'll yeah. tell you what, if nothing else, AW is going to make some amazing shoot interviews or podcast episodes <laughs> when like some people leave properly. I wish Brett was there, just in the behind the scenes, just to report on what's been going on. Shagging them all. <laughs> 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 Who's been saying stuff about Thunder Rosa? Who, who isn't Brett Baker? Oh, it's all comments like... Tony oh, Storm said something. Yeah. Oh, in the uh, about, oh, oh, interim. Proper women's champion. Yeah, interim. Um, yeah, uh, which one? Eva Lee. Ten Ty was like, oh, I don't think... Was it Ty, I think? He said, like, we shouldn't have lineal... Yeah. I hate lineal things. And it was like, like why all Eva the AEW women's wrestlers? Yeah, Marisha all this stuff. Fear. It's as passive-aggressive as you can of, get. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like... Because I remember originally, like, a few months ago, I was like, all these reports about, like, people zooming in and slowing down matches of Thunder Rosa that are completely normal. Oh, they're building up. Suddenly, according to three people on Twitter, he's got a problem. Everyone else has to believe it. And now all that's happened is all the AEW women are just not even trying to pretend the fact that they don't like it. And I'm like, oh, okay. Well, wrong about that one. Yeah, it's a shame because, like, I like Thunder Rosa. I like the... She's, she's a nice... I did a straight to hell with her early this year and she was a yeah, very was nice lady. Say, yeah. She also came across really nice on Tom's Dead Island Raps. Maybe that was it. You were on Cultaholic. Asking Tony Khan. Right, that's hey, a AEW hate us for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? Speak to this match, though. <laughs> Jamie WWE's Hader. much <laughs> They hate us as well. Yeah. <laughs> Jamie Hayter. I love Preston City Wrestling. <laughs> oh, they'll love us. As I say, DJ Hyde, CZW. Oh, never had a bad thing it to is, say against him. I was just going to say, though, it is amazing now, like, because obviously they had to keep Rosa as the interim because yep. of the way they treat the punk situation. Yeah. So like it's it's weird. Could yeah. Punk have just relinquished it and then saved Rosa and saved a lot of hassle? Am I putting too much like together in a linear I, thing? I think they're going like, <laughs> well, this is a situation now. Lineal does have the benefit of if things change, we can just say all right retroactively. But it's like okay, well, Tony clearly doesn't have an issue with Thunder Rosa. How he would have gone? Yeah, good. Get, goodbye. So well, he's gave he's, she's gave him two of the best women's matches he's had true. so far over three years. Yeah, yeah, true. So this match though. Good on the AW for going, wait, Jamie Hayter's really over naturally, and she wasn't even in WWE. Bloody hell. Let's, <laughs> this naturally built uh, character, she didn't have to turn on Brit, as we all thought was going to happen, and do that. Okay, fair enough then. Um, beats Tony Storm, and God, with a crowd into this one. Mm. Wow. One of the highlights of the night, easily in a, match with, uh, in a show with 1,500 matches on. I started to, I enjoyed it, and then started to, I think people enjoyed the end more than I did, because uh, Tony Storm kicked out of like, it was. She was like Matt Jackson and Johnny Gargano. Ah. She kicked out of absolutely everything. She kicked out with so much stuff. They started booing her. Yeah, yeah but yeah, that's yeah. it because you want no. You wanted to win. So many people wanted Jamie Hayter to win. So I was like, is it gonna? Ah, yeah. oh, ah. Oh. So that's why it's like, oh, nice move. It's like, is she gonna win? Ah. Oh, but also, oh. I, as you remind us a lot, Tony Storm's nearly unbeatable. So she has to kick out of a lot. <laughs> that that period, that's, that's done. She needs a bit of a not a character, so to speak. Like, but she needs some like, More time it, given to her. To when she's not to, wrestling, she's yeah. very boring. I find. Is that too harsh? Tony Storm. She hasn't had a chance to do much of anything, really. Uh, again, yeah, like, like a lot of AEW women. So, But when she's wrestling, it's, she's obviously one oh, of the best around, isn't she? But, I agree with that. Like, the promos it, and that. But funny, Jimmy Hayter's not had that much time to do stuff with. So it's funny, oh, it's nice that the proof of how good she is in the ring, mm. that she's be able to get over naturally, despite yeah. the fact that, what's her character? Jamie Hayter. Hench, hard woman. Well, Hench, hard <laughs> the, the, the Brit but, Baker I mean, act, isn't she? Yeah. It's very much in vogue these days. If you look at Rhea Ripley, everyone loves Hench Hard Woman. <laughs> That's what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what and, we're going to say. And then the acclaimed beat Swerve in Our Glory to retain the tag belts in their third match. Listen. Listen. They had two verses this time. They did. I've got more. You look silly. I can't remember what he said, but yeah. Yeah. Aye. I've got more and you look silly. They just dropped them Bet up, you've they? all got a willy. Oh, <laughs> thanks for money. Can I say a shout out to my friend Jay Leno? I wish him a speedy recovery. Where Carmelo that was brutal, last your week. trick, also, Willie. No. Wait, one thing about uh. Shivani, sorry. After that women's title match, Tony, I know he's friends with like Britt Baker and them, but this came just shortly after Samoa Joe stole one and they all went, oh, Samoa Joe, you horrible man. And then Jimmy Hayes cheated. Like Britt Baker's helped her and stuff and Rebel. And they all go, Jamie Hayes deserves this. Like she's actually really good on commentary. I, I like, like the bias oh, commentary. Oh, fair enough. I think they, at least you know it. Tony out of nowhere said it. It's like, what? Well, Tony is, yeah, I suppose. But yeah, you know they've got a friendship, yeah. so it's, yeah. Mm. Uh, 
What are we about? Yeah, so they claimed in the third match of the series, maybe through the match, Keith Lee refuses to use the pliers, so Swerve slaps him and Keith storms off. Yeah. But more if... importantly, apparently Keith Lee was supposed to be dressed as Solid Snake. Was he? I could not tell this. No? I thought he came subtle. dressed as a rhino. Grey, uh, grey on. An actual rhino. It's an actual rhino. Was the animal. Solid Snake? Apparently, just some of the little so was, designs. And was I went, Swerve oh. like... Revolver Oslo. Nah, I was just a dick. I think that's why that's why he knew. Says, Do you want to cosplay together? No. Right, that's it. That's what I've written down my notes. There, Swerve was being a dick. You Keith not liking riding. the dick. Yeah. Is it Raiden or Raiden? No, that's Raiden. Which one's the Mortal Kombat one? Raiden is Mortal Kombat. And Raiden. Raiden Thank is, you. Well done, you. Thank you. But yeah, this was it was okay. It was better match quality wise than the second match, to say the least. And the but didn't have anywhere near the heat of the first match. No, had. it's been diminished. But I was very, very surprised if they managed to keep the heat of that because that was the loudest match of that night. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I'm glad that they've told the story and it's over where it's like, all right, well, Keith Lee and Swerve aren't friends anymore. They so, were okay, really now the acclaims or, are, can, or are they? Now the, ooh, well, we, now the yeah. acclaims can uh, move on to other things like the rest of the, the proper tag teams in AEW do, well, which, is, it, which is avoiding FTR. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen who convert them on Dynamite? I missed like... Well, oh, well, 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 don't worry, don't worry. Don't, don't look ahead. Right, don't have, th- no, have three guesses now. Yeah, yeah. Who confronted the acclaim we're on not this gonna, we're not gonna It's not the or, guns. We're not going to confirm or deny, so just have just three have guesses. Just have three guesses, yeah. and we'll see if you're right. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. not the, it's uh, not the, not the embassy. Yeah, it's not, it's not the guns, not the embassy. That's your first guess. It's not the guns, it's not the embassy. It's not the embassy. And it's not FTR. And it's not FTR, no. Right, just wait and see. We'll see. You'll see what reaction is later on. Oh, okay. It's amazing. Also, in the press conference after, Castor and Bones... Yeah. were really adamant about saying that they're two of the best wrestlers in the world. I was like, wow, this is, this is a, they oh. rammed that home a lot as well. Also, one of the, the media asked him, he goes, well, you had one of those lines, those bars in your little music video you had in a dynamite last week about stuff. He goes, Swerve Strickland. He goes, yeah, I'm not a snake. Uh, I've got the exact line, but let's make, go into the media. And he goes, he just said, yeah. And I, I couldn't tell with this if they're in character or not, which I thought made it nice. Yeah. I'm not. We're not Swerve Strickland. We don't have friends in the media who then I, say, oh. who then have to say that we're good. I thought you meant Rick Ooh. Ross, but no, that doesn't make sense. No, I said Swerve Strickland. Yeah, he's like, no, 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 no. But I thought you meant Swerve Strickland's friend in the media was Rick Ross. Oh, oh, <laughs> I, don't oh. think, I don't think that's true. <laughs> yeah, it contributes yeah. to fightful. <laughs> <laughs> well, back at what culture, Vince Russo did have some articles at one site. Did he? Yeah, yeah. What did he write about? I didn't. It was before I joined. Vince Russo worked for What Culture before well, me. Well, basically, he wrote about ladies and then he was told to stop writing for What Culture. <laughs> <laughs> I fully I believe that. that. This is oh. when I. This is back in 2014, this, when I first joined. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that's, that's what I was told anyway. He was a bit, bit too pervy and told not to come back. <laughs> I hope they're still online. <laughs> Maybe they are. I don't know. <laughs> no. Let's move on. I, ca- I can't believe it. Wait, no, I. Do believe we were going to do that. Was anybody else a bit nitpicky about the final bit of the match? Because I thought the way that Swerve kept kicking out was sort of the Keith turn happened and just ended the match. There, I thought it would be a nice double whammy. Yeah, he kept kicking out. It was like, oh, it's slightly hampered things. It, it made you, you think that did you maybe say uh, that, Dan. Someone said that when we were watching it. Was it you? Dan hey, said it. Well, oh, well similar done, way no, right, yeah. It made you think Max Caster maybe had a point, <laughs> <laughs> but that was it. <laughs> that was all right. Now I'm see. I'm eager to see where they move on from this. Oh yes, like, you are. Oh, okay, great. <laughs> So I'm going to see a bit of AEW down there. <coughs> and then, in the main event, where John Moxley showed up to lose the title to MGF, so go on his holidays, MGF becomes AEW World Champion, beating John Moxley after being slipped the brass knuckles by William Regal, after William Regal said, oi, oi, no, no, no. Ah, oh, go on then. Don't use the dynamite diamond yeah, ring. Yeah, well, actually, hang on. Yeah, you're right. Why didn't he just... Why did he stop him using the ring? Yeah. Well, just to distract Moxley, wasn't it? Like, but he was already going to hit him with the don't ring. Don't listen to this. Listen to this. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm a bigger fan of it now that I've realised that. Because he had yeah. the ring, he was going to use it, and Regal went, stop that. He has a this diff- is how he has you a do different it, yeah. Weapon. Yeah. 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 Just uh, a, the seal of approval. Just to solidify his alignment with the new yeah. guy. Okay, yeah. And then yeah, we got yeah. the lovely shot of Regal doing that thing on the ramp where I just Evil compared bastard, it. Evil eh? I compared it at the very end of Babe. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do, pig. That'll do. <laughs> uh, big news come out of this match, though, is that M. Jeff is the new titty master. Take that. <laughs> Yes, he is. Taking oh, that, God, yeah, he Taking is, that man. mantle from Moxley himself. Uh, <laughs> that was, for, he asked for permission. Good for good him. Good God. <laughs> yeah. Why was that a thing? Why did he have I t- don't know why that was a yeah. thing. Why did he have Titty Master on his tape for that random house show? He's my t- master of titties. <laughs> that, that was, that's funny. Master. But, but MGF doing it. <laughs> it was kind that. of weird. He's watched Stranger Things. Oh, oh God, yeah. Anyway. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Oh, I'm very sorry. Your music, my musical taste always baffles you. 
I think it does, yeah. Because yeah. all I knew of I said, new... What had a, no. I said I had a vinyl player. You know, he fell out of his chair. <laughs> when you said what? <laughs> when I had a record player, vinyl player. Did I? Yeah. All oh, yeah. right. On the podcast. Um, I, It's just that... No, because I know you like... Is it the Foo Fighters? Mm. I knew that. It's just that before that, I, I thought you exclusively like like Lolly and like Radio <laughs> Viva La Radio and DJ Otzi and all yeah, that. Yeah. Oh, I do like them though. And Scooter, yeah. and you like Scooter. Scooter, well. Scooter, yeah. Scooter's good. Yeah, I'll stop getting surprised when you <laughs> when you're aware of a really famous band. <laughs> what else is it to say about this match? Um, Moxley being the heel, I thought, made it good or better than it would have been if he was just being a baby face. That attitude of like, I don't care what you think about me. Mm. Oh, I'm gonna wrestle well. Mm, I like yeah. that as well. <laughs> His entrance was really good. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, the, the, the knee part where they had sort of the tombstone on the apron, then MJF hurt his knee. He's done that before. Was that against Derby, maybe? I he think had so. a really That's long opening yeah, yeah. match once. That was Derby. And sold the knee all the way through. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it led to the pile driver off the apron, which was a woof. Mm. Woofy, woof, woof, woof. Mm. Um, the Avalanche paradigm shift was good. And then I thought the, the finish was the way it should have ended. Yep. Not only just MJF winning, but also Regal going with him, because I think that's mm. yeah. more interesting than what just Regal staying with the BCC. I don't know what else you can do with Regal and the BCC other than no. just like turn on his students. Mm. So to speak. But well, they're annoyed. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I mean, I completely derail you there. Like a log on the tracks. But yeah, it, that, it gave us the finish. MGF is the champ. Absolutely fine with that. Storyline development. Stuff to watch. It's like, yeah, good. AEW. You know what I like about this pay-per-view? It was long as hell. All right, fine. And some of the things, all right, fine. But most importantly, it's a company getting back to like, okay, we had the stuff for CM Punk and Thunder Rosa and the Elite. And blah, 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 blah. now we're finally get on to getting things back to where they were. Yeah. Proper storylines, proper things laid out. And Soren's getting finished and ended. I was like, good. This was a, I guess, left me with a very positive vibe about AW. Really? On. Uh, it was one of those ones where I felt like um, when you log on to Twitter after a show to see what people thought, I felt like my enjoyment of it was lower than the general consensus. And that made me feel overly nitpicky and I harsh. think you can't, you can't look at everybody's things on there because you're always going to get completely differing things. People are happy Tyrus won the NBA title. It's like, Who you was? I wasn't happy. If you, find, if you look, you'll find <laughs> one person. It's, one, it's my point. If hey, you look to be it, fair though, it. when you're watching I'm a Celebrity Live, you log on to Twitter and 95% of the tweets are all positive about Hancock. Just oh, leave them alone. Nice, <laughs> what a nice guy. I really hate this country. It's working. Yeah. It's working as well. Can you yeah. rejig yourself? Yeah, really easy. Go in the jungle, eat some kangaroo uh, testicles, so, act uh, like a tit. Oh, he's a good one, that man. Oh, uh, man. Whereas Romeo Nightingale, <laughs> he's the new nation's champion. That was well, a big but Romeo thing. sex a lot. It's always been up in my estimation. <laughs> that was one of the big reasons Boy George went, because he was one of the few getting accused of bullying Hancock. Well, when Boy George couldn't go and see his dying mother because the Hancock, uh, yeah. the rules Hancock put in, well, Hancock was necking on with that lady. Yeah. yeah. Bastard. I think it's just that <laughs> if someone not Boy George had done that, it might work better, but people can't really, Boy George isn't the, Squeakiest, cleanest. Well, that's it. Man, Hancock should have said, "Oh, sorry, we didn't prevent you from uh, handcuffing that." Uh, no, no, no. Yeah, to yeah, the radiator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beating him up. <laughs> to yeah. word I probably can't say. Weird, this isn't it? Getting... Anyway. Yeah, no one talks about that for some reason. Yeah. Just if you're a dick, you, you need see? a demon. Scan on that. Come on, Romeo. Look at how unbiased. Vince this... McMahon will be on that show soon. <laughs> Look at how unbiased this podcast is in all aspects. Oh yeah. Just anything. There's always just a fair, fair output there. If I ever you put Matt Hancock in the hole. Oh, oh no! My God. My word. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Monday Night Raw. <laughs> According to the LA Times, it is illegal to shoot or deface the iconic Sagara cactus in the state of California or to remove them from parks. I, I know that's a, a bit of research. To... Yeah, I thought I'd actually check that. The, the, that what type is of... the Sagara? So I... that type of cactus is the like cartoon one you see on the side of the road in the desert, like yeah. the classic big cactus. <laughs> but MGF, I don't think, had that kind of. The Miz. The Miz. It's very MJF. easy to get there. You know what? <laughs> He's it's just not a the less first, famous Miz. It's not the first time that's wow. happened. Kevin Owens opens the show. Yay. And talks about being in the War Games match for one reason. No, not Sammy. No, crowd, can you stop chanting Usi? Please, <laughs> please, you're killing the segments. Not Sammy, but Roman Reigns. I reminds us that, yeah, I was battling him before. 2021, wasn't it? The I Rumble. forgot that they had the match, the last man standing match at the Rumble. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the famous bit with the handcuff not working. It was good also, about that, though. Oh, yeah, also, Royal Rumble 2017, when Jared goes in a shark cage. Oh! What, Owens versus Reigns? Yeah. Yeah, when they were still friends before the list of KO. Yeah. yeah. And then Reigns came in number 30, didn't he? In the Rumble, because everyone was like, mm. we want Samoa Joe. 
and then they gave us <laughs> the wrong one. Yes. <laughs> Never went the wrong guy named Joe. <laughs> how can Reigns be in the Rumble when he already had a chance to win a belt earlier? Yeah. 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 Wow, wow, wow. Good times there. Mm. Yeah, wow, wow, wow. Yeah. Correct. Uh, Correctly so. Thank you, pal. I'm not, not right often, but when I am, I'm, I'm very right. <laughs> Owens is joined by the rest of his team, but they're interrupted by the Judgment Day. I think, how, how dare you show up on your show? I like yeah. this, me. Sing up a six man tag, and they all get some good lines at one I another. I have brushed over a lot there, yeah. Including Seamus calling Finn Balor a plastic paddy. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, I go, I bet for one Irishman to say that to another is like. Ooh. Oh, a very offensive. Them's fighting words. You're not really Irish. Seamus, who had all those, oh, what was it? I forget the name of the thing that maybe the, the Dublin Street Fight, or whatever he had on SmackDown. Oh, the Danny Brook. No, no, no. This is like um, when he's wrestling, like Damien Sandow and stuff like oh, that. Oh, right. And they were throwing pota literal potatoes at each other. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Just say it. It's on the network. Don't go with me like that. So uh, yeah, so that was good. And again, Dominic Mysterio still getting all the heat. Yeah, he is. Doesn't he have to try anymore? Yeah. Finn's he's just like, yeah, that's right. Boo! I love it. Balor's line of, even salt looks like sugar, and I'm one salty bastard. Wow. What does that even mean? That sounds No, like... no, that's poetry. That. <laughs> that, sounds, that sounds very tempting. It's like... Even salt looks like sugar, so he looks class. So why don't you lick but, me and see what I actually, am, Seamus? He's actually, he's actually, actually evil. Yeah. He's like a honey badger. Yeah. 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 Uh, the Judgment Day <laughs> bit I liked because... Uh, that is their show and they should yeah. be annoyed when people who aren't on their show come along it's weird how everything's aligning now in WWE like yeah. it, it's all one universe um, and Seamus again there's a banger cooking in the stove oh, oh yes. what a promo that was at the start of the show <laughs> and then Dom should have thought we're going to put sugar or salt on it you <laughs> idiot <laughs> I imagine caramelised bangers would be quite nice mm. a bit of sugar on there mm. ooh 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 Mm, pigs and sweaty blankets. <laughs> the Braun Brutes beat the Judgment Day after the OC stopped Dom from running away. Oh yeah, they show up to absolutely There no you reaction. go, another nice. alignment of the entire thing. Dom's feuding with the OC at the moment. They stopped him running away from Sheamus. Wonderful. Yeah, and then Finn Balor's just like, what are you, what are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, and hits the stunner room. Yeah, it's a nice little match here. Pete Dunne was the, probably the best one in there who got the most stuff in there. And it, as I said, yeah, Dom just doesn't have to do anything anymore to get booed. Yeah. It's yeah. weird how it's all worked out with him, I think. Absolutely. And Butch is the only person in the War Games match with War Games experience. Oh, yes. And Owens as well. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, God, yeah, it was not that... Um... I forgot he came back to NXT. Yes. Yeah. Well done, pal. Butch was in my favourite... Pete Dunne was in my favourite uh, WWE War Games match. That was the tactical one. Remember that? The second one. Yeah. It was him, oh, Ricochet, and yeah. the Vikings against yeah. the Undisputed Era. And there was there were so many tactics going on. It was like the World Cup. I remember how good those first set of war games matches oh, yeah. were. And then just and Roddy Strong was dressed as a turtle that time. <laughs> <laughs> and he came oh. up with the authors of pain, but he looked more like a oh, turtle. Oh, oh, yeah, there it is. Thank you. The stars of WES. <laughs> uh, oh my god. Do you remember that? That was this year. E my god. 12,000 capacity? The Nottingham, oh, whatever yeah, arena it was? Oh, yeah, standing room only. Yeah, Fantastic. Right. <laughs> Johnny Gargano has requested a rematch with The Miz, but The Miz arrives in street clothes and says he injured himself chopping through a cactus on TikTok. <laughs> to absolutely no reaction. A lot of TikTok this week on NXT as well. Yeah. Weird. He's arranged a replacement opponent for Gargano, and it's revealed to be Omos, who beats him quite quickly. But more importantly than that, Johnny Gargano has new entrance music. That's... Like his other oh, version, but not as good. Not as good. Yeah, it, that's all it is. It's just not as good. It, I didn't think ever this is going to be controversial. Rebel Heart was never one of my favorites. Oh, you didn't like it? Yeah, but this Tom made a good thing. He was a good thing. He made a good thing. He's like, it sounds a bit more like a downstate song, like Cody's theme, that sort of vibe. And I was like, yeah, listening back to it, it does have a Cody ish, Cody ish vibe. What does mm. that mean? I don't know. I just thought it was an interesting point. It's going to mean one thing: a really bad tattoo in the near future. <laughs> Imagine uh, that. Like Christian's old dance music, you don't really get too many. Um, like female fronted songs yeah. for male wrestlers and I thought Christian stood apart when it was mm. and Johnny's really did as well now it just feels like another song <laughs> yeah. also speaking of music it was really good to hear My World <laughs> I love the, the intro thing it's, oh, ah. it's spine tingling isn't it yeah yeah. gets you hyped jarring um, it's quite jarring <laughs> it, was so, it gets you so hyped I, I joined another company and just made myself the best thing about it <laughs> head of left. business or whatever head yeah, of yeah yeah uh, Okay, that died. Anything else on this little match? It was funny that Johnny wrestling was gutted at the sight of Omos. Just wrestle rings around him, Johnny. That's what you do for a living. Don't be scared of him. He's rubbish. 
Well, he's the, getting better. The Miz did. <laughs> the Miz distracted him, but it wasn't. It didn't lead directly into the finish, so it was almost like almost just beat him clean. It wasn't quite clean, but nearly. It was a weird Messy. setup for the choke slam though, because he just sort of he did a top rope nothing into the choke slam on the floor, and then just got oh no, on the mat. Sorry, mm. and then I was shocked to see it end like that because I thought Gargano would have beaten because he's getting one of those big old pushes, isn't he, mm. Mister Comedy Man? But then so is Omos, I guess. It's weird. Yeah. Well, now I'd say he is after he's been. Yeah, Gargano. now after being yeah. here, he's feuding the Miz. What bigger push do you need? <laughs> <laughs> Seth Rollins gets a sit down interview where he says he requested the triple threat match at Survivor Series, taking care of two birds with one <laughs> stone. He warns people against picking a <laughs> fight with him, mentioning Cody Rhodes as an example. Interesting. Yeah. That's a baby face mm. taking the piss out of another baby face. Mm. Consistent, though. Who? Rollins. That was a joke. Oh. Um, Austin Theory. You, you don't you rewrite you history. You bother it every time, You Ross. don't rewrite you the history of this podcast there, young man. <laughs> I've always said this face. Austin Theory watches the interview before saying that he is a new man, and we'll all see that after Survivor Series. It was awkward because I thought... Austin Theory's the promo for him was actually good and he gave him like right I is the reason why I did this it was all recap what last week he's like why did I pick Roman Reigns so the entire Roman army behind him I'm not going to do well against that I've got no friends so instead I'll go for Seth and it was that Bobby Lashley who prevented me from him if it wasn't for him my plan would have worked fine and now I'm going to be up Seth and continue doing this and I'll prove it and it's like wow that's actually not that bad you don't look too uh Awful in losing. Corey Graves is gan ham on you. Wow, a future big star here because apparently they're friends in real life. Oh. But then you just go, oh, it's Austin Theory. Uh, Kevin Owens absolutely nailed him months ago. and It's hard to unsee him. You are just a guy pretending to be a wrestler. Ooh, Ooh I think that's that changed. hasn't changed. There's he, nothing different about it. He's just saying different dialogue. Well, after Survivor Series, we'll see. That's what he said. I'm enjoying the new, yeah, we will, new Kavorker he has, though. I, as I said, because I thought like he has been playing wrestler for the longest time. I don't like saying that me, Satya, if you know what I mean. It's, it's, it seems like a retired wrestler thing to say about the new generation. That's clearly not me, but I, th I know what they're saying there. Uh, so I like what he's doing here. Just it's, it, you, can, you can't picture that guy as world champion, I, th I find now, with the new sort of just seriousness. Just me. That's fine. Right now, I'm yeah, gonna sit you. on the fence because I'm. I don't want to. I don't weigh in. These are both the very one opposite fence points. Is electrified. Then I'll say <laughs> that. Um, oh no! I, don't really, <laughs> it, I think that it's better than it has been previously. So it's possibly giving him an avenue back to the main event scene. But mm. I'm less confident now because Triple H isn't as all in on him as Vince was currently. Hmm. I'm yep. gonna say a thing I saw on Twitter, right? It's not that bad. Someone equated Rollins' ever-changing hair. It's getting more and more blonde as the weeks go on to it becoming more like Uncle Howdy's hair. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Imagine if Rollins is Uncle Howdy. So if they're going to take it back to 2019. <laughs> oh, remember when I beat you in that cell? Well, by D you beat me by DQ. But <laughs> I regret putting that out there because more people will now hear it than did when it was just going around <laughs> on Twitter. But, you know... It's funny, isn't it? Imagine if that was what the end goal so was. So funny. <laughs> it's me, Austin. Uh, fiend. Because his hair that's is... such a bad theory. Austin <laughs> theory <laughs> yeah. now looks all right by comparison. His so hair... thank you. You're doing a good so, job. It yeah. is getting blonder and blonder as we score. That's more true. So he must be... Uncle Howdy. Uncle Howdy. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Howdy. No, wait, no, no. Uncle no, Howdy. No, no. Uh, no. Oh, my God, it's Jack Swagger. Uncle Howdy. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, theory beats an injured Mustafa Ali but it's confronted by Bobby Lashley afterwards. Lashley beats him down and no sells a chair shot. It's Bobby Lashley. So Theory runs the back oh, and throws man. Ali at Lashley. Oh. Gets beat up instead as Theory escapes. Poor, poor Ali. Poor, poor Ali. It's the thing we were Ali. saying earlier. The need to did be we there. miss the Ricochet Ali match, by the way, on SmackDown? I think we actually did, you know. Oh, sorry. I thought we, I was, yeah. Do you oh, want to speak on the SmackDown? We can go them anyway, yeah. That started and shooting saw press, I kind of wrap my head around. How does that work physically? The physics of it? I don't know. You come down. He's got to lean back, hasn't he? Yeah. Just, he just land there, wouldn't he? <laughs> just Crazy specimen. Uh, uh, it was interesting because before the match, I, I thought watching Raw, Ali is a heel. Oh, sorry, I did love Big Japan. He was because, being a heel on SmackDown. Yeah, but then on SmackDown, wasn't being too... Oh, he's like a heel, but like Ricochet's his mate. So Ricochet's like, come oh, on, like how I know you're hurt. I don't want to keep on doing it. It's like, all right, fine. So I just love your match where Ricochet got to do his thing with a guy who knows how to do those moves and stuff who is not Braun Strowman. And then it was all right. But then they had that, like, oh, well done, no, thanks. And I thought Ali was going to hit him afterwards, but he didn't. And it was like, okay. So that's that's probably nice of Ricochet to do to his friend who's been a dick. Maybe, like, 
Like how yeah. Janaki Yama's Eddie Kingston's dream match, so he healed it up. <laughs> oh. Ricochet is Mustafa Ali's dream match. We're best friends, so I'm going to kick the bleep out of you. Yeah. Because there was okay. just the one bit where I think Trevor was speaking to the referee and Ali attacked him from behind like a heel would. Mm. And I was just like, that's a, a little bit heelish. On the SmackDown one, Hayabusa was getting a mention from Michael Cole. <sighs> That's a big Michael. thing, isn't it? Oh, because he had the Phoenix Splash. Talk about inspirations, yeah. Bloody hell. Um, Osprey dressed up as him this week. He did a good thing, didn't he, Big it. Will? Did, the, uh, was it auctioned off the mask, the attire? That... Oh, he auctioned yeah. off. Oh, uh, okay, well, fair play to him. All yeah. the he got permission from, the, from High Boost's family to do it, and then, yeah. That's oh, good. I wasn't aware of the auction. I saw him dressed up, and I just thought, oh, okay. <laughs> High Boost would have hated it. Oh, you, oh, you sold off. Oh, okay, you know what? Okay. I'm glad I didn't say that then. Yeah. So, it's like the Michael Cole referencing. Yeah, because High Boost did make a trip. Um, to WWE in 06. See, people see the pictures of Vincent Shane with like Hayabusa backstage. Really? So, yeah. Wow. Aye. And then there was the Blue Thunder driver on the SmackDown match, which added to the buggering of the torso, yep. which then obviously played into the Raw one, yep. where other things happened. There's a lot of weekend wrestling, isn't there? Sounds oh, nice. my God. Um, all, all fits together. It does. Uh, Corey got a text from a source saying that Theory is the kid that's got it all. <laughs> Again, he he's, got a he's, text he's, from a source. From a source. That sounds like when Booker T would make up these sources <laughs> that he had. Because I tried talking yeah, uh, last week and you interrupted me because you were bored. Of, uh, we go, Corey Graves is adamant that Austin Theory is a big star and people should not be complaining about him so much. And you were like, who's saying this? And Corey goes, who cares about Corey Graves? <laughs> well, Corey now it's Corey, become, you think he was a second coming. It has admittedly become part of the story now. Yeah. yeah Austin yeah. Theory and Corey Graves. I got work. They could be, they could be brothers. They look a bit similar. Some of the hair. Both look like dicks. <laughs> <laughs> Theory stand up to Lashley was good though. Progression. Mm. Then they got his ass handed to <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> so great. <laughs> Which makes me think he's only there on Saturday to take the fall for either of the other two to look oh, strong. He's, he's the WWE equivalent to Sammy Guevara right now. Yeah. Wow, that's a really good thing. What happened? I hope he gets battered. I don't want to. I think he might win. And the crowd will. <laughs> If he rolled him. him, if he it's 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 just because of the ten years of the shield thing. I think Rollins will win and Oh yeah. yes. You had Dean Ambrose chainsaw on his way up from oh, under yeah. the ring That's in the pitches. Pitch, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then That's Roman more comes down and they all sing uh, uh Take Me Home, Company Roads. No, that they should sing dun 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 <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Uh, what was I going to say? Yeah, then Ali got mauled after the final bell by Bobby, who didn't try once again. I know we said this earlier, but it's the fact that Bobby's not trying, and Ali looks like he's in serious pain. Mm. And it's just like, why would you cheer for the guy getting just spaffed on? Yeah, because Lashley mm. likes to beat up people. That's a very positive quality about a wrestler. Yeah, especially if you go as a fan and goes, I can't find that enormous bloke he does to chuck that guy over his head. Oh, you cheer for him? No, you wouldn't cheer for the guy getting thrown around, would you? No. Is it meant to elicit sympathy, but it hasn't worked? Maybe. No, that's the thing. We need that Ricky Starks, the fancy bit for Ali. Yeah. Where he makes himself good and gets people invested, mm. then beat him up. That hasn't <laughs> happened. Yeah. Good analysis. Yeah. Is it? I yeah. 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 We're, we're helping you. Don't do it, Jack. <laughs> <Makes> Compliment. <sense. laughs> Matt Riddle and Elias beat Alpha Academy in a tag team. Oh, match. boo. They shouldn't have beat them. They're a legit tag team. I'll say this, though Riddle and Elias, they are slowly getting over more. The less Riddle talks, the more the reaction to is in the arena. And Elias is like, people are like, oh, yeah, it's Elias. He hasn't done anything, but. We like him again. Yay. He's now a nostalgia actor, isn't he? The life. He really is. Yeah. Five yeah. years on Raw. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> Soon he'll be glue. It's like Triple H stopped watching when Riddle was trying to be friends with Randy and then missed the whole... Because Riddle's taken a big step back. Yeah. Thing, He's gone back to lockdown, Riddle. Yeah, Which yeah. was painful. Yeah. Um, he didn't talk this week, so it was like, just just Riddle. Yeah. The, this won, was the Chad Gable show, though, this. Oh, absolutely. The slow motion replay of his dragon screw leg whip on Riddle. On Riddle? <laughs> His, his body rippled with pain. It rippled, yeah. Uh, that was fantastic. The delayed German on the apron yep. from Gable was fantastic. Elias got a good hot tag, and his neck break, the neck break itself from Gable when Elias was in the midst of his hot tag was also fantastic. It was the Chad Gable show. It certainly was. Jack, what does a delayed German sound like? Because now you speak German. Yeah, ambition. Guten Tag. Oh, I did. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> I don't speak that much German. Uber die Brücke. I did, <laughs> did it at school, but I've not. Fair enough, then. I'd struggle to do it these days, I think. That's fair enough. Ich habe Busbahnhof. I have a bus station. <laughs> <laughs> JBL and Corbin are playing poker again backstage like the manly wrestlers used to do in the 80s before these snowflakes came along. Damn right. Drew walks past and they mock him. Drew says he respects Scott his elders. Scott is not in the World Cup. <laughs> Four. <laughs> That was JBL. the best thing JBL's ever done. I bet JBL would hate football. No, he likes football. He likes he? rugby. He likes rugby. Yeah, rugby. He does a lot of charity stuff with rugby yeah. people right. in the Bahamas, is it? Something oh, like that. okay. 
you are right. Something like that, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Drew says he respects his elders, but not Corbin. And then he sucker punches him, which JBL complains about. Uh, this leads to a match in which Drew wins after Akira Dozawa with his blonde haircut that he used to have in like 2014. When he did so. the fat gimmick. The fat gimmick? When he put on loads of weight. Akira Dozawa? Mm-hmm. I remember this. It was a thing. I'm 90%. I'm in si- WWE? I'm seven. No. In Japan. He had this oh. gimmick where he put on lots of weight and then lost it all. Like a method actor. Yeah. Oh. Like Vulcan Bob- and Cutting. Like what Bobby Dezawa. Lashley pitched to Vince McMahon. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to put on 50, 60, 70 pounds <laughs> and lose it. Yeah. Uh- <laughs> yeah. So then, yeah, this is how it is. It's because last week there was some speculation because uh, Akira posted a picture of his gear and just put thank you or Arigato or whatever on Twitter. And people like, is he retiring? It's like, yeah, he's retiring that gimmick. Yeah. Thank but God. he was inexplicably a ninja Ugh. because I guess Vince was like, where's he from again? It was and that. Like, no, uh, Vince, no. It was that match, wasn't it? The Viking, you can do anything, I'll do it better between the Viking Raiders and the Street Profits in lockdown. Oh. Where out of nowhere, a oh, gaggle. Yeah, yeah, a yeah. gaggle of ninjas. Oh, there's a bunch of them. <laughs> oh, yeah, almost, almost, almost a huge ninja, yeah. They yeah. showed up. <laughs> They'd have a car full of them. And, and like, then hey, just, we're going to ninja school. Or he was the only ninja that stayed around. <laughs> almost, yeah. Or Tazawa. Tazawa. Oh, almost. Oh, it was never confirmed that it almost was. Yeah, it was just, it was just <laughs> there could have been anyone. One time. It could have been Ron Reese. It could have been yes. Reggie. It could have been Reggie. That, that'd be silly. <laughs> what <laughs> chance not, that I happened? I don't know why you brought him up because we've not seen him for... a reference to yeah, something that might happen on NXT. No, 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 it isn't. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. <laughs> um, this was the second match this week, although if you've missed Dynamite, you won't know this yet, the, where someone was too attached to their hat and it cost... Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, so, what else can yeah. Tozawa now take from Corbin and JBL? He's taken their money last week. Yeah. He's taken JBL's hat this week. But he can't take the dignity because this sucks. <laughs> I thought the match itself was good, though. I don't care about JBL. It was Corbin. rugged. Bloody stupid character. It was a rugged match. Good, rugged. Yeah, good. Bloody lovely match. Corbin, Manly match. Corbin was doing all right by himself. And I now he's with JBL. Wanna, he's yeah, gone back. Yeah. He's regressed. I'm not going to say it's been a waste of time yet. There's still time. But I thought Corbin was fine. They need to go full hog, man. They need, if he's going to stop being the happy Corbin-esque, you know, fruit machine entrance guy, give him a kick-ass new theme. Give him a rebel heart. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? No, no, no. <laughs> Tazawa's going to take the Casino theme next week. It's like the presentation's like, it's changed slightly. You know, he's trying to be like a more, a more serious wrestler, but he's still, you know, looking like happy Corbin was. You need to go full hog. Happy full, full hog Baron Corbin. That should be his Say name. Say Full Hog again. His full name. Full Hog Baron Corbin. <laughs> Thanks, Ross. <laughs> the Judgment Day attack the OC during a backstage interview and brawl with them out the loading area. Security eventually arrived to break it up. Yeah, I didn't know what to call it, so I went with loading area. It was like the back car park. It was like the staff car park. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. Someone's not getting the deposit back on their rental car. Mm. Poor bastards. Oh, hey, mm. why were the doors unlocked as well? Hey. That's bad. Be more careful in this it's world. It's about the insurance policy to keep it unlocked at all times. So. Really? Pretty much sure it is because it's not um what's the term? Then like if you park on the side of the road, is it safe? Oh, that's actually a term for it. Bollocks. <laughs> but obviously, yeah, because insurance full companies... hog. Uh... <laughs> yes, the car is full hog. <laughs> but insurance companies will look for any reason to not give you the insurance. So mm. wait, wait. If you tell them, yeah, the car was unlocked on the side of the road, like what? Was... Nah, nah. Ooh. Team Bel Air got a promo that was only slightly. Less boring about the thing I just talked about, about car oh. insurance. About that, how they're going to win a Survivor Series. They're confident. Bet they're cut off by Bailey's team. Mm. Bailey says maybe Belair couldn't find a fifth teammate because nobody likes it. That's brilliant. Bailey's very simple heel act is brilliant. Yeah. And even her current teammates just want a shot at the title. Rhea Ripley takes on Asuka for the War Games advantage and wins. Everybody has a big brawl to end the show. And, yeah. and I should have mentioned actually that Mia Yim comes back because she'd been in the car park yeah. brawl and then she came back to deal with Rhea. And they're going to reveal who the fifth woman is on SmackDown tonight. So it Whoa. seems like, are they? Yeah, that's what they said. Oh, there's not Sasha then. That would have been a surprise for the pay-per-view, ah, surely. Or they could do a red herring, you never know. Could a red-headed herring, if it's <laughs> Becky Lynch. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I think it's Becky, isn't it, probably? So it's meant to be there. The sheets seem to be saying. Yeah. The rags, well, brother. They're never wrong. Uh, CM Punk. It's just that it's in Boston. I was like, oh, Sasha's from Boston. But probably not. Yeah. Sasha. But also Boston has ties to the Irish, so... Oh, my God, it does. Yeah, a bunch of plastic paddies or so. <laughs> all, all of them. To a, to a person, they are mm. plastic paddies. Ooh, a lot of them. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, by the way. <laughs> we're all, we're Boston, just man. joking. I know. Um, NXT. Oh, sorry, in the fourth time. I was oh, going to say... I also in... need a wee-wee before... Oh. Well, oh, no, you can finish your point I was there. just going to say, it was interesting you. watching Asuka wrestle like an underdog. 
Mm. Mm. She was getting battered about by Rhea Ripley, who's got a lovely confidence these days. She I'll stop speaking now so Jack can go and point his Percy right. towards the porcelain. <laughs> Good it's the very thing my granny used to say. Easy, you need to go and point and your Percy towards the pole. Exactly, wait for us to do the pause or anything. It just <laughs> ran out. <laughs> like I got out of hell. Go do your thing. Go do your thing. Mm. NXT, flip the scripts. Flip the that. scripts. That's, that's very good. Thank you. Almost as good as me finding out via Kimpler and other people on uh, Twitter DMs. Uh, Tom has been doing the Twitch. I was doing this and it had all the Cultaholic people on 2K22. Apparently, I won. Oh, well Cultaholic champion in 2K22. It's a birthday miracle. Of course, it is. Thank <laughs> you, Tom, for, What's your for giving me all the high stats. Do you know how you won? What move? I probably fell over. Right. You're way at the top, aren't you, with Tom? <laughs> That's right. A sleeper hold, Ross. That's in a good yes. fucker, huh? Mm-hmm. Be a naked choke. But eating that flapjack, Matthew, do you have the, a sweet tooth there? I'd say so, yes. It's because it relates to something Booker T said at the start of this week's SmackDown, which oh, tickles so. my proverbial pick. I know what you're talking about. What is it that he said? I got a sweet tooth and Mandy is the only candy this brother wants to eat. Bloody hell. <laughs> what does Charmel think about that? <laughs> I think he's been talking with the little lad and going like, okay, what's up? What's up? The little this? lad? Vic Joseph. <laughs> yeah, Vic Joseph, little lad. Look at these massive, by the way. And so I was like, oh, so what's up? Why are we not gelling together? He goes, well, usually Wade Barrett is a horny old man <laughs> on commentary. <laughs> Oh, say no more, pal. <laughs> well, and that, is that, so it, it did sound more like he like, was Randy for Mandy and her candy yeah. at that point. And that was a good way to start off the show. He was off the rails this week again. It's number two in the weeks of Booker T being like fully invested and off the rails. I wouldn't say fully invested. I think he's just mildly confused about what's happening and trying his best to hold on oh, for dear life. Fantastic. But we got some planets from him, which we'll get on to. Toxic Attraction, open the show, but interrupted by the Women's Tag Team Champions, Caden Carter and Katana Chance. They suggest that JC and Gigi will leave Mandy once she loses the title. Who were? This sparks a brawl, which Toxic Attraction win due to the numbers advantage. Mm, that mm. damn numbers advantage. Yeah. Hopefully they can find us. Well, they do later on. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Slipped my mind there. I always saw the Mighty Boosh live and they did the thing where it was just like, well, we're going to do this plot where we'll be able to get this thing at the end of the day and save it. The- we will. But, like, <laughs> that's the plot. That's why you reason to watch this. Now he's on Big Off, one of them. Crazy, isn't it? Yeah. Wesley walks through the car park. Oh no, Wesley, get away from there. It was daytime though, so it was marginally nah, safer. That's more dangerous than no H.H. H. Holmes' house. Was it house. Kenda who got spaffed when it was daytime? Yep. Oh. Never seen again. <laughs> Tony D drives past and says, hey, forget about... Oh no, don't forget about it. He hasn't forgotten about Wes injuring him. And Wes uh, said it was a misunderstanding. And then he changes his mind and goes, oh, you know what? I'm sick of this. Yeah, they deliberately shut up. <laughs> Get it, <him>, Wes. <laughs> Elsewhere, Grayson Waller tells Duke Hudson that he knows he's putting on an act. Hudson disagrees and says he's a dedicated student and bleeds black and red. Yes, he does. I and Grace love, is like, he's, uh, I he's love Duke Hudson. Knocking out the park, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. I still think him and, uh, oh my God, what's a business, biz, biz, business woman is going to take over? Kiana James. Kiana James. I always forget her name. Should I go and shut the door? I feel like what it's open. about the BCC and the CBB and the old... Just going to check that the door, yeah. Go Acronyms. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, kind of gem, yeah, but businesswoman is a gimmick, so it's easy The to... business lady. Yes. That's what I was calling from like now the on. village people, the business lady, the traffic policeman, mm. all the rest. Uh, Cora Jade beats Wendy Chu by throwing a drink in her face behind the referee's back, which is a good way to wake up someone. Wendy took a bump off the drink My being God. thrown in her face. She went, Doosh. Good. Wendy has a breakdown post-match. Possibly suggesting a character change. Mm. Oh, no, it's just a continuation. Oh. Because they brought up... Um, Cora was saying things about how Wendy would have been in high school. Now she would have been bullied this, that, and the other. And then she said at the start oh, of this one, no. you sit alone at the lunch oh, table. God, you're right. And then throwing the drink in the uh, face, I imagine, oh, reminded man. Wendy of high school. That's really bad because oh. me and Tom reported it on the news as if it was an impending character change. <laughs> Uh, it's even worse than that. She's being treated like the main story in 2K20. Yes, she is. She's getting bullied oh, in the she's canteen. She's a, a loser, yes. Yeah. Um, mm. Aye, she's fighting for the bullied. Um, I thought it was good back and forth Wait, match. It's, it's very self-righteous of Wendy when we know that she is the bully. Murderer? She was. She bullied Mandy Rose. Murderer? <laughs> <laughs> when? She is both baddies from Home Loans 1 and 2. That's right. right. Um, mm. I, she had a devastating belly to belly, uh, landing... Pie on the neck was. Oh, Cora. I know what you mean. We've never seen Tiffany Stratton since. Yeah, that's what, exactly where I'm going with that. Yeah, that's exactly what I meant. And she bullied her with the makeup in the face and emptying a sack of balls all over Mandy and. <laughs> and Wade Barrett. Just, oh, the ball bag! I had <laughs> eaten his medication. <laughs> <laughs> it was so funny though how like she did that. Uh, Cora did that to Wendy. There's a puddle in the ring, and the referee's like, "What? He's counting the three, the three camp in a puddle." Yeah, I think he went. 
was that me? <laughs> <laughs> Just pretend you can't see it. It's all right. <laughs> Got a piss bag like Craig David on both selected. Uh, oh, Ronnie. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go together. <laughs> Apollo Crews goes to the diner and writes in his journal. He loves that diner. He has a vision of himself holding an XT. He doesn't go to the diner. It's a footage. It's the same footage as before. They no, he walked to the diner. He's a regular. He goes to the diner. He saved the waiters. Bollocks. That, that is the origin. No, 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 that, but isn't, it, isn't that just the same footage as before and they've put new footage no. over it? No. I was and convinced. Also, I didn't go back and check because bloody hell, Matthew. Did... Do you remember Drago Malfoy or whatever he was? That we got released sadly. Uh, the one that uh, used to work out at 2 a.m. Oh, Drago Anthony? Drake. Yeah, yeah. Is, is, he had he one promo where he drank coffee. Didn't he go to the diner as well? Yeah. So they've given that story to Apollo and given him future seeing ability. No, but Apollo, the the origins of the vigilante future, future seeing Apollo was in that diner where yeah. the, the mm. server saved, was getting picked the, on yeah. by that guy mm. and he, he kicked his Maybe. ass. And because we pay way too much attention to this bloody program, mm. unlike some people who commentate on the show, it was good <laughs> because he's like, well... Oh, I, I'm ready for this match. I'm more hyped for this match than I am for my IC title match. Oh. It's only because I know what's coming. Vroom, he sees magic it. powers activate, and it showed footage of him with the NXT title. There's no point in He's watching. Really, He's won it. Yeah. No. He has. It's going to be a dusty finish. He thinks he's won. Restart. If the you match. get dust in your eyes, you can't see very well. <laughs> how many? Jackson's how many visions has he had? The one that comes to mind immediately <laughs> is when he saw Gallus knocked out with the light. Oh, Diamond Mine with the green light for no, Gallus. Gallus, wasn't it? Yeah. I, I was, was signifying the arrival of Gallus. Yeah. yeah. But then he, he saw that and that was true. He's now had this vision. I'm sure he's had a couple more. It's 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 a foregone conclusion. Right, okay. And yeah. when you take into account Brom Breaker's character now. Well, we'll, we'll get to that. Because we'll that, that. No, no, that legitimately leave. upset me. <laughs> legitimately gone. Talk about it now. This is Brom no, Breaker, right? Not. We'll get there eventually. Let's that's what's next. It's, 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 oh, it's Big Body Javi now. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> come on. From the sublime to the more sublime. Yeah. Big Body Javi presents Mackenzie the Interviewer, is that her name? Yeah. With the that's Big Body name. Files, a list of 1,347 people he can beat. It includes Axiom, currently injured, Elon Musk, Ones to Legitimate and, beef, by the way. Mm. Now I've got a blue check mark. How many followers you got there, big body Javi? Uh, oh, I've 2000. Don't worry, I've, I've, oh, uh, don't worry, it's in the 2000 million. Yes. yes. And fantastic. then Matt Ma- 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 McKenzie says, that's not a real number. No, it is. It is you, a real you can have 2000 million. Of course you can. Just mm. takes a long time to get there. Exactly. Mm. Uh, and Drake says, oh, what, Drake Maverick? Because he knows that. No, no, the rapper. Yeah. But pretty big and that was the reaction it got. <laughs> uh, Mackenzie asks how many Twitter followers Javi has and said that. He eventually leaves taking the big body files with him. Mackenzie takes absolutely no guff from him whatsoever. He, his feud is not with Axiom currently. It's with the interviewer. Yeah. At one point she says, take, take this list, take this piece of paper with you. And he goes, that's not a piece of paper. That's a, that, that is a big body files. I was like, what? <laughs> this is like, is this a real, oh, I'm having a fever dream. It was weird. It was a weird... It's segment. The, so he did El Dandy last week. He's yeah. doing Jericho this week mm-hmm. and tomorrow of El Dandy, I guess. I guess he'll next week he'll what's another com- beloved comedy oh, WCW? Should we take bets on like uh, Well Scripps has got uh, Dean Malenko's disguise. Cyclope. Yeah, Cyclope oh, yeah. nailed he down. He wishes. Um mm. so what are the Kaya? Oh man, maybe they'll do Kiwi. <laughs> yeah. The Kiwi. You no, know, they say don't mess with the qui- uh, big body Javi. <laughs> yeah, you know, that rolls off the tongue. Yeah. Hey Charmel could be there. You know what? I'm True. so hot, I'm cold. In fact, I'm almost glacial. Ah. Yeah, there we go. That'll work. He just takes down Joe Gacy in the graveyard. Mm. Covers him. Who's, in, in who's your favorite 70s and 80s rock band? Just oh, out of interest. He sets, he sets Joe Gacy on fire. Chucks him off chop of the tron. Oh, you know what? I like the body having now. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So that's, uh, What that's I want to know is, uh, yeah, who is 250? Number 250. They said he was retired, but they never said who he was. Oh, so was that I saw uh, a recapper online I can't remember which site it was for but I didn't know this as well so I went a searching someone thought it was a Christian Cage reference oh when he went because he made, made yeah. a point of going like one more match or something like that but I don't oh, know he's not retired though. oh no, I know, yeah. one more okay wow we're going really in <laughs> maybe is it was this theory's new thing with like we love it if we give it ambiguous enough for people to just waste hours <laughs> maybe on maybe this Bray really, Wyatt's got a huge following of people like I love Pausing, going, what's that in the background? Maybe this reporter is it a cameraman or is it the <laughs> leg of Uncle Howdy? Maybe this reporter read too much into that. Maybe it wasn't meant to be there. for a big body hobby segment. I think we can all agree, <laughs> yes. What do you mean? He's a bit rubbish. Oh, come on, now. big body hobby, yeah. mid body hobby. I call him in my house. Hey. Oh, flipping day. <laughs> Pretty deadly. Now, here, here's, here here's, we go. here's some prime comedy with some sexy men. 
Pre Daddy interrupt to chase you lecture and ask when Duke Hudson will be his old poker playing self. And he says it once, he gets no reaction, he goes, We call you poker. He didn't even react. He goes, That's right, because I don't play poker anymore. Gambling is against the university policy. Yes. That's right. <laughs> it leads to a brawl, sing up a tag title match for later on. It, well, I didn't mention it, but yeah, later on there's the same way he runs out of breath. <laughs> Mm. Andre, I got in a fight. Yeah, yeah. It was a hot, it was a roller coaster of a segment. The next one, because obviously Mario was in there getting a talking to yeah. from Andre Chase, and then Andre has to shout at Mario, Mario, what the f you still doing in my office? Mm. Get out of here. We got a tag team title match to prepare for. Yeah. Spine tingling stuff. Delightful Hudson. D u double l. Yeah, delightful Hudson. Delightful Hudson. He followed this up, Jack. It's not like a dull Hudson. How dare you? I can't believe you ever called him dull Hudson, Jack. That was so offensive. He was never. It was never. Turns out his fault. It was just the material he was given. He's actually a dynamo of charisma. Yeah, he bleeds black and red. I love Duke Hudson. Thea Hale though needs (laughs) detainer. When it was all kicking off between Pretty Deadly and the Chase U lads and lasses, I couldn't not hear her. She was screeching. (laughs) And she, was home. 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 she was doing a good scrappy do shame at man mm. impersonation but aye, it's all about delightful Hudson he's doing really well well if it does get revealed that he is just plotting to take over chase you because it's a lot of land oh gotta be oh. he's in please metaphorically <laughs> in bed with Kiana James yeah imagine be literally that. if you want it's a free country it is a free country they've not on. referenced it for not a few not weeks the, now not the, oh, sorry the sort of the Keanu James Dull Hudson link hasn't been referenced at all since I think it initially <sighs> happened wow. so maybe it's not even a thing anymore and also <laughs> I don't think I mentioned it but the bar deal fell through as well yeah, yeah. through due to stupidity <laughs> yeah. due to us abandoning the storyline yeah. and moving on to something else <laughs> right. love it Ivan Nile beats Keanu James, who was attacked by Fallon Henley afterwards. Right, and the bar deal. And, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the Creed brothers could a promo afterwards, and they'll see Sanger and Veer at deadline. Who and I'm hyped for that. Who were they speaking about? Julius, when he was naming, like, you asked this, that, uh, uh, they were just naming these random names that I didn't write down and I should oh, have. I don't know. But I don't know who they were referencing oh. when they were calling out in the share. Um, but I. Fair enough. Is it people who have beaten? I don't know. Oh. Yeah. All, all three of us enthralled by that segment. <laughs> but no, there should be a good match, though. So. Do you yeah. think? Oh, yeah, yeah. Three yeah. Brothers and I think Absolutely. that yes. when they pick up the bigger lads, it'll look really good. Oh, yes. yes. Yeah. In the Ivy Nile Keanu James that I've written down here, Booker T was in the spirit of Christmas because the stuff he was coming out with about Keanu James was amazing. Saying that when it comes to corporate takeovers, she doesn't need the money. It's just a hobby for her. And he goes on about speaking like how she's an architect because uh, she knows how architect, sorry. She knows how to build stuff, but she also knows how to supervise. Mm. What does that even mean? <laughs> Booker. She's a businesswoman. Booker really. <laughs> Isn't ever constrained by like the script. He'll take characters off oh, in oh, magical reality. direct. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the few people that Bret Hart was kind about in WCW in his autobiography. Actually. Yeah, because it was one of the things Booker T and Bret had a, a very good match by the sons of Bret in '98. Like no one was having good matches with Bret at that point. And then Booker T had a really good match with Sting in '98. And people were like Booker T, you're a miracle worker. Fair enough. So yeah, it's so weird now. Like 2022, 20, Sting's having better matches than he did at that period in his life in WCW. Life's weird. He's having better Speaking matches which, now. Uh, yeah, Sting, Krusty Old oh, Sting's having better matches now. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. sorry, sorry. No, sorry. Mm. Um, you can't be calling Krusty Old Sting. How dare you? I'll have my, I'm in a lovely way because he has great matches. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, compared to like fit young Sting who just couldn't be bothered <laughs> in 98. Uh, where are we at now? Isla Dawn cuts a spooky vignette with candles and stuff, it says it. I didn't know where to She's begin. She's still targeting Alba Fire and says, oh yeah, those transmission issues, that, those are me. We're going to have, oh yeah, the lights, yeah. We're going to have a great time. She's all disturbing and like, ooh, come to this play. Is quite the, the segment of the show or the po- portion of the show because that's the first whammy. Then we've got two more oh, whammies right. to come the, after it. There are a lot of a lot wacky, spooky this is the, characters. This is the like the bollock section of the uh, show it's <laughs> I thought when Vince stepped down we'd have escaped an over-reliance yeah. on spooky stuff but Bray it's Bray's fault yeah he, you he, know when um, NWF was going against WCW the first hour would be not against them and then it entered the war zone yeah. this is the bollock zone the bollock zone <laughs> so Isla Dawn woo then the mysterious script <laughs> woo beats Guru Raj in his NXT uh, debut absolutely and again dev- the, the, Joseph going, the crowd confused at what they're seeing crowd Reggie Reggie um, Reggie it, we don't know yet who it is but I'm just gutted that he's what, presented in a comedy what gave way. him that idea though what Was, you know when the guy does the on, the on the entrance ramp the first thing we see isn't actually the mask it's the the spin I mean lots of people can do that spin lots of them <laughs> lots of people can do that jump uh, yeah. but you can't d- start off with like his entrance should be a Frankensteiner. You're right. <laughs> but no, he came out, does the flips and go, oh God, yeah, I forgot how good this guy was. That gear. 
It's There's the zoom in. around it. It's the zoom in, isn't it, on the face where he's just sort of stood there. And you can see who it is. But it's just the fact he's got the technology to hijack a live broadcast with yeah. his phone calls. He's got the cunning to commandeer an entire camera crew mm -hmm. and film inside the NXT arena when it's closed and then get it on the show. But then he has his mask made by a child. He's got we didn't have enough money after the first thing. He's, like... <laughs> he's got the stealth to sneak past the guards. That was the clue. He flipped yeah. past them or whatever. I pictured, you'll appreciate this, you know the level in Ocarina of Time where you're sneaking into the palace? Yeah. And you hide him behind the trees and that. That's how I imagine him now. Dunna. Why does he Dunna. look like he looks like he's got lost on the way to Chikara? I feel sad for him. So he, he signed up to Chikara and not read the news. <laughs> oh, 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 okay. Right. Booker T making it better than it was though. Just shouting, "Who the hell hired him?" <laughs> uh, it's, with, I think it's with a, the greatest of ease as well. Yeah, ah, it's a, were, missed that. There was a <laughs> there was a nice little taunt he does now before he hits the molly go round. Scripts. He's writing his name. He's like the the artiste from WCW. What the hell was he called? The Maestro. Prince the Maestro. Oh, yeah. so he was. It was the artist formerly known Prince as Prince Ikea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of Russo's better ideas. Yeah, yeah. Can he's I? A rubbish wrestler. This has got to be the biggest example of a non-starter gimmick we've seen for quite some years. It's such a shame as I well. Just interrupt. Non-starter. Okay, sound like non-starter. Just want to make it clear. Oh no! <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a non-starter. My brain a twisted non-starter. Yeah, right, yeah. No, a non-starter. N-O-N hyphen starter. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and that's just, I think it's a real shame for a genuine like talent like Reggie because he does things literally no one else can do. Yeah. Yeah, he's been given, the, oh, well, he's got this. I don't know if it was his idea or whatever, but yeah. It seems like he's been saddled with it. It seems like a joke gimmick. And I... Especially after the sinister, oh, I'm going to destroy the world. No, I'm gutted. I'm really sad. That mask is rubbish. <laughs> that scroll back if you missed the earlier segment of the podcast where we revealed oh, where the origins of this gimmick came from, thanks to Dave Meltzer. What sec was that in the Hall of Fame segment? Right news? It shouldn't have. No, it's not in the Hall <laughs> of Fame. <laughs> no. It was wrestling news. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, then. Oh, and right. then, okay, so that's two, two, segment two. two scoops of bollocks. <laughs> oh, how about a third? Why not? The schism of the Thanksgiving <laughs> celebration and pick out a fan from the crowd is, you know, a tall, and, tall, tanned, and jacked. His so. first name was Performance and his second name was Center. <laughs> he literally couldn't look more like a PC trial hey, guy if he tried. <laughs> he, yeah. His mannerisms. His, ooh, ooh, he had a Vengeance t shirt on, didn't he? NXT Vengeance. Vengeance. <laughs> hey, I forgot about that stupid He's just a name. big fan of NXT. <laughs> He's also in great shape and handsome yeah. and has all the mannerisms of a wrestler. <laughs> and also, uh... <laughs> and takes wicked bumps. He jumps yeah. so high. Yeah. I thought the, like, the promos were talking about, like, they talk about how Thanksgiving has been corrupted by greed and materialism. There's a lot of stuff in the play there. It's about, a lovely, like, wholesome message. There was a stuff they were talking about, like Thanksgiving used to mean something and that is hanging the time of your family. It's not all about commercialism, especially with Black Friday coming up. I mean, who would go and invest less than that? Coldaholicshop.com, oh. Black Friday deals, 50% off. Don't you put a code in, just go to coldaholicshop.com. Everything you click, order it, it'll do it automatically. No Blood, about with socks, codes. hats, little figurines of your favorite Coldaholic presenters. Uh, there's candles that smell a bit off, but you give them to people that you don't quite no, like. No, Ross. No, it's true. It's based off Adam's Hell and the Smell streams. Oh, yeah, they meant to be that way. Yeah, yeah. Don't oh, worry. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Jesus. It's We're a horrible rad read. Oh, they're, 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 the, they actually yeah, smell yeah. bad. Yeah, yeah. there's t shirts, <laughs> there's all sorts. Get yourself over to coldholicshop.com. Right. If, if Pachita goes, oh, happy birthday, here's some candles. I'm, gonna say, no. <laughs> I'm trying to give them up. Yeah. Yeah. Also, botchmanianshop.com for the same thing. <laughs> oh, <laughs> interesting. Uh, but yeah, apart from that, he's right. Thanksgiving's uh, and Black Friday's a horrible commercial thing. Yeah. So does that mean since you think that, you're going to now uh, celebrate Schism Invictus? Instead. Schism in Vegas. No, because they said, right, bollocks of this. We're not anyone else in. We've got our schism. And uh, you, big, tall, blonde, strapping young person, <laughs> who could have been anybody, uh, we'll put you through the table. And crowd were going, sacrifice, <laughs> sacrifice. And I'm like, now, what? <laughs> now, I don't think it's ever been more obvious that there's <laughs> some planting going on in NXT. No. There's a, there's a segment later on as well, which I'll mention when we get to it. But yeah. yeah, so lots of sacrifice chance for some bizarre reason. And I then just, he went through the table, the crowd cheered. Because that's what like, the schism, they always do this. <laughs> yeah. They've always made sacrifices. But, yeah, but then they're like, yay! I'm like, what? 
I love the, the, oh, the set. I, they're all sat there around the performance yeah, center, yeah. man. And they're like, our message is we, we just spaff on people by making ourselves stronger. And he still didn't get the hint. And he still had to take the just, ball through the table. She just sat there going, ha, 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 ha. Oh, we great. kill this... people to make us stronger. <laughs> I'm joining Schism. <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> also, the stuff they had the masks on the start and... You couldn't read anything that was on did them. Did these three segments come back to back? Yeah, they back did. Wow. So thankfully, the Wesley, bollock zone. <laughs> yes, we are now exiting the bollock zone. Wesley outwits Trick Williams backstage, Fantastic. rather like Daffy Duck and Bugs. Deserves one of them. This segment. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Getting him to admit that he doesn't need to accompany Camel is to ring. Oh, it's later duck on. season. Oh, right. Okay. Season. Yeah. Meanwhile, Bron Breaker. I hate this so much. I thought you would have loved this. What happened this, in the segment? Know? So Bron Breaker, right? Do you remember the start of NXT 2.0 where Bron Breaker was just a Steiner and it was fantastic? He is now a man. I don't want my champion to be an ass kicker. I want to know more about the man. No! Yeah, I do. I want to know more about the I man. I do not want the <laughs> NXT champion speaking about how he needs to broaden his bait choices <laughs> while fishing because the fish aren't as active in winter. I do not want a Steiner speaking about broadening his bait that, choices. That is class. That is that is great. awful. That's on a level of John Cena while you sit as uncomfortably as you can. <laughs> That's really good. I need to get away from the loudness of the professional <laughs> wrestling world. I love coming on my river with my boat. I need to broaden my bait choices because the fish aren't as active in winter. This is the worst segment in wrestling history. Oh, hey. Let's not. He Come should on. be hating on fat people, talking about his freaks. What? He should oh, just be a Steiner. His dad. He's not his dad. Oh, he is, though. He's a fisherman. He's not his fishing. Oh, it was, I hate it. Steiner would so. just... Go into the the, 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 fish the face swamp or pool. Just and just come in, fish like a bear. <laughs> yes. Oh, I've got to sit here and oh, should I yeah. go for the maggots really, today or should I, I go for the worms? They were oh. gonna like. I thought they were gonna cut to like a wholesome like home scene, like domestic scene with him and Cora Jade, like bacon yeah. and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> like, that, that's next week. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I can't be here. The resting. I'm fishing. Don't worry, <laughs> they're not badass. Really, they're normal like you and me. It was up there with. Remember the Lex Luger Survivor Series night. Promo, I think it's him and when his he's family in his front room with his dog and his yeah, wife yeah. and his kid. And it's like, oh, it's so great being here. The Thanksgiving series, like, I've never disliked you more. <laughs> you know what it was you comparable boring, to? Family love and get. It was comparable to Come and Kyle in the Woods. Oh, we're down to that levels of bad. That there was a point of that at least, which was that they were different people. <laughs> that yes. was similar to Cora and Raquel in the climbing yeah. activity center. Yeah, uh, just for that fantastic moment. Of course, they were different people. They lost. So then come try to turn on Kyle. And the only time I've ever seen this, <laughs> Kyle knew it was coming, so you hit him first. Hey, no, I've, I've uh, recently learned of a, another example of that from Starcade 99, where Sting knows that Elizabeth's going to turn on him. So oh, so he, he gives her like a thing and it's got silly string in it. That's genius. Sting's not always stupid. Yeah, just <laughs> nearly always. Yeah. Uh, he needs to broaden his bait choices. <laughs> he just likes to get around. He's a man of the people, the people who like to fish. Zoe Stark speeds so Soul Rooker. Call him Broad Beta instead. <laughs> <laughs> Zoe Stark uh, beats Soul Rooker. Soul Rooker's bad. She can't win a match. Exactly. Save her life. She's got a new name as well. What? Soul Rooker. <laughs> that was a new name this week. Okay. Shades of a new lovely so character. So it's fine when she surfs and that, but not when he goes Why? Because that's gnarly, that. He'd watch yeah. that in the 90s with an X in front of it. Yeah, Whoa, yeah. X Games. Oh, true. Oh, let's sit here and pick up the maggots. You <laughs> love fish on bloke. What's he called? Jeremy Wade. Yeah. That's exciting. <laughs> That's fishing. He's sitting there and then it's, oh, it's a fish. It's a fish on. It's a fish on. And he gets excited. Then you see this big whopping river monster. He's there. Little tiddlers he was fishing for. He let them Ooh. go as well. He oh. He's a good guy. Yeah. Mm. Jeremy did that as well, to be fair. Oh, did he? He put the river monsters back. To and kill so, folk in the and water. so did um, I think British Bulldog in Brett Hart's autobiography. <laughs> he caught a shark. Brett said, and then <laughs> sharks are oh, all different. I'm looking forward to this and one. said that he was so impressed with the fight it showed that he insisted that the tour guides put it back in the river. Good guy, good guy, Davey. Of course. Or and it then, might have been Jim. And then John Tenter went to Japan. Yes, he was called Shark. Yeah. Oh. It's weird you say, yeah. Wrestling podcast. Yeah. The, you say John Tenter, I don't think the shark. Yeah. <laughs> you are right, but oof. Anyway. Anyway, what we're doing here. Soul Zoe Rooker. Starks, Nikita Leons makes a save and Zoe runs away. All right, great. Well. The scissor kick that took Sol Ruka off the rope scared me, but it was, yeah, 
At least it wasn't a complete squash for Sol like it was a few weeks ago yeah. against the impressive yeah. Indy Hartwell to give her a full, a full it, name. But it did make Zoe look strong, which they want. Yeah. She's a lion. A li- lion, is that what she's saying? That's Nikita, that? innit? Oh, yeah. damn it. She's a That's lion too. That's her name. Yeah. She should be the... Do it. She should. She should be the lion. T- she should put yeah. her in the lion team. Yeah. Give her a red jacket and a whip. Yeah. yeah. There we go. The Chris Jericho action figure from WCW had that. Really? He's like, he's a lion tamer. So he had a whip and a, a little lion. <laughs> That's clearly just people who didn't watch giving a sheet yeah. saying lion yeah, tamer. Yeah, exactly. He's like, oh, I'm an actual <laughs> lion tamer. Rick Steiner, the dog face gremlin, came with a gremlin that had a dog face. I can't that wait for the Bron Breaker fisherman action had that. figure to come. The little yeah, thing that came with him. Like, it's like people going, so you guys don't watch the show then? You think he's... All right. Anyway. Fisherman Bron Breaker is brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> you know what will pull it round for me if he went on that show with uh, Bob and Paul. Oh, that, that's a wonderful like bit yes. of television. That yeah, I imagine you would like that, Dan. Do you? With a few cans, sit back watching Paul and Bob. They just talk about life. It's not really about the fishing. No, yeah, stents in the heart. Yeah, well, Hel- you... heart healthy food. That's exactly right. <laughs> and if you love that segment, you'll love the next one. Malik Blade and Edward Sanofi. This invite was I know, absolute I mean, fun. So I'll have many to levels. get in the description out in case you'd see it. Oh. Then we can rag on it. Invite come Tuesday out on the town with them because apparently they're friends with them now. Von Wagner. And Odyssey, Odyssey Jones. Von Wagner says they've got a lot of swag and he's got his <laughs> dancing shoes on, but he's just kidding. He beats them up and rips off Malik's sweater vest. Security drag Von away as Odyssey Jones <laughs> slowly walks over to help. <laughs> Like after beatings happened, like no, don't. <laughs> They're just stealing from the best. Uh, the bugs trying to save their father. Yes, it, it was. was like that on steroids. It was. It was fantastic. <laughs> so, first of all, I realised for the first time. I probably should have realised it earlier. But Idris Enofe is actually good at acting. He's good. It's the part where Von Wagner goes, "You two are losers," and he goes, "No, no, no, no," and it sounded real. But everything else in this <laughs> segment real. was so. Maybe it just stood out because everything else was so weird. Yeah. Oh, oh but, no, it was heart wrenching. Guys got a lot of swag. Got my dancing shoes on. I don't know about you, Rob, but I got my dancing shoes on. Yeah. <laughs> takes off his takes off his jacket when he's yeah. doing it. It was very confusing though, because last week in the Why match, is he friends with Rob? Yeah. yeah, he kicked him to the curb last week. Hmm. But the ripping of that sweater, that's too far. Because that <laughs> sweater was given to Malik Blade by his deceased, well dressed pastor of a father. That's right. So I oh, deceased. God, I remember you right there. Yeah. And, and I, and <laughs> wow. I and I know that NXT's got plants in it, or at least audio suite in him, because as he, the, no one reacted for the entirety of the beatdown, but the minute he ripped the sweater, boo, like everyone knew. That was his deceased father. Everyone remembers from last week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry, his deceased father took him shopping to get yeah. his similarly His dad used to wear, yeah, yeah, mad drip. Yeah, they went to but, the cool, cool dressed preacher. Uh, his dad was outfit. a pastor, yeah, yeah and yeah. he used to wear cool drip. But that's not the same one. It's not one. He bought him it, though. That one, yeah, right, okay. Cool. That's where the sentimentality comes in. It's like when in. Andre, when Big Show, sorry, threw the shirt at Hogan and went, "That's my dad's shirt," and it was Andre's shirt, but it was just a white shirt. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if you were Malik and Edris and you got up night out, why would you invite Come Tuesday? They were, why? Burying, the ha- they were burying the hatchet. They said, "We're going to be the bigger men. We're going to we're going to take you out with some ladies and us and Odyssey Jones." Our oh, crap friend. <laughs> Our rubbish friend. <laughs> really Imagine friend. six foot seven Nordic god come Tuesday walking into a bar. It's a head turner. Yeah. yeah. It's an ideal wingman. And he's going, ideal <laughs> wingman. I got my dance shoes. <laughs> Indy Hartwell, by the way. You see on Twitter? No. Yeah. Her and Roxanne Perez are setting up a feud on TikTok. And oh. uh, Roxanne went, I was just trying to be friends, but we're going to see now. And Indy Hartwell <laughs> replied, come Tuesday. <laughs> C U M T O O. It's everywhere now. It's come everywhere. <laughs> Indy's one of the lads. <laughs> yeah. I've always liked that. We get a Charlie Dempsey vignette. Oh, he's serious. He's Shayna Baszler. Yeah. Yeah. Deck of cards, submission holds. Yeah. That's all you need to know. <laughs> yeah. Talks about, oh, the likes of Billy Robinson and this old British get and all the other rest. And I do 3,000 stretches and all this stuff. I don't do the uh, make look, look good muscles like the rest of the crew here. All I functional. Do, all functional. You lost to Andre Chase. <laughs> Andre Chase also beat Carmelo. Yes, Hayes. he did. He beats anyone he wants. Did. He's like Yano in the G1. He just yes. beats random. He beat like Moxley in the G1. Yes, he it's did. weird. He's like Mr. Akua or Achua, how you pronounce it, for Mexico yes. in the World Cup. 
nameless and faceless for four years, but when the World Cup rolls around, yeah. he's the best in the world. He's like 37 now. Yeah, 36. He's still good. Wow. Try to sign him for Hartlepool on FIFA on Twitch. Oh. Every Wednesday, 3 p.m. GMT. And what happened? He said no. I didn't have, <laughs> a, I didn't have enough money. Oh. I signed Jason Denier, though. Dan, for Hartlepool in League Two. That's a mighty fall from the man. It's bad for us. <laughs> really bad. <laughs> Pretty deadly. <laughs> Aye. Pete chase you after Duke accidentally kicks Andre in the face. Oh. It's a teachable moment for Duke because he's asking too much of Chase, who was knackered on the uh, on the ringside area of the ring, the apron. That's what it's called. Well and he he got him in there anyway, and that cost them. So hopefully mm. that's a teachable moment for. for... Yeah. I hope it's not um, Duke Hudson being evil and actually doing it on purpose, as we might later discover. It's the great fear. It's got but some I've, self it, though, I've so. learned never to take NXT stories for granted again because I legitimately got a pleasant surprise when it wasn't Roddy Strong who was evil it was Damon Kemp <laughs> and the laptop right. and the phone oh brilliant that just like yeah. insidious no it's not good I'm just trying to name more clever films um, <laughs> like insidious <laughs> like <laughs> Kangaroo Jack <laughs> yeah sure Fifty Shades of Grey Lego yeah. the movie were you shocked to hear Yakamoshi Shampoo getting a shout, a shout out on this week, Steve? <laughs> Not with Booker T. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretty deadly have got themselves a, a Yakamoshi Shampoo sponsorship. Oh, really? Yeah. It's anyway. a, a lovely jo, uh, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure reference, I think. Did I did I Shoot. say that subconsciously <laughs> because Booker T and I just feud was over yeah. Japanese yeah, shampoo? Yeah, they brought us up on the commentary as well. And then yeah, went, they did. Yeah, they I, did. I, I know all about that. And he went, you lost. Didn't Booker try and say he won? <laughs> But the yeah. big was like, no, you lost. Yeah. <laughs> he's just playing. He's, he's starting to get, what's it called, uh, chemistry. Yeah. It's, not, it's like not long ago, I remember watching um, Hulk Hogan's weird promo that one time when he called out Austin and it just never happened. I think Austin wasn't in the building and Hogan went, I'm just going to call him out in this promo just to try and get a big match. Is that no two? Yeah, around then. Right. Maybe no two. Mm. And um, Hogan starts the promo by saying, I've beaten many people at WrestleMania, Andre, The Rock, and someone else and he, he didn't he lost to the rock he lost the rock yeah. he just tried to slip it was the middle of three people he said he tried to slip it in he did not beat the rock I hate Hogan Tommy Talarico the video game composer has had a bit of a rubbing this week because okay. uh, H Bomber guy did a big video about you know oof from uh, Roblox even if you haven't played the game I, use this that audio sentence from the game. was mad anyway Tommy Talarico <laughs> has been a composer has been gone for decades but he's, he's funny H Bomber guy's just come out with this video that's basically going through uh, all the stuff he said over the years <laughs> And he's just been talking pish okay. for decades, but no one said, you know, that's not true, right? LeBron James has started to get a bit of that in the basketball world. I haven't seen it. Is that because of the documentary? He claimed that he he knew people. I can't remember which. Yeah, maybe because of the documentary, but people have been going back over stuff LeBron James has said. It's also been noted that he often brings a book with him off the bus when the team arrived for an away match. And he's always on like the first page of the book. So he just swaps uh, the book out to look clever. Uh, <laughs> and he's always on the first chapter. Unless Maybe he goes, ah, you know, I made a mistake. Maybe, yeah. yeah. You never know. Maybe he's picky. Yep. Yeah. So that brings us to, despite interference from Trip Williams, Wesley beats Carmelo Hayes to retain the North American title. His celebrations are short-lived, <sighs> as is laid out by the returning Dijak. Who? Who's that? What? Who? Book a, book a team and he goes, who? <laughs> who? <laughs> Why did he do that? And then Vic just goes, Die, Jack. Die, Jack. Have you never watched this brand? Butcher, before? the blade, bunny. <laughs> why, why, why did he say who? Of all the, of all the non-swear words and non-slurs, that is maybe the worst word he could have said. <laughs> in that context. He could have said any Wait, single... Wait, all the options. He went through the dictionary and just went, it could have been any word better than who. Who is the worst word? Oh, man. Well, yeah. it's, it's nice to see Die, Jack back. I don't quite... <laughs> Get the look, to be honest. Oh. I saw you, I think you retweeted it. Barry didn't you? Lad, all of the Barry It's a bit yeah. matrixy. It was oh, like, what yeah, was, right. What was the tweet? Barry Lad's tweet was this is the crate of wrestling you make when you're seven <laughs> of yourself. Oh. It is with the big leather coat, the haircut, the little beard, the glasses. He looks a bit like chronic. <laughs> Remember That's them? what they were on when they said, hey, <laughs> you should dye your hair. The dye your, oh, but, oh. I've got faith, though, because he's a fantastic wrestler. Yeah, you know what? He, sh he should be used yeah. more. Better than Kenny Omega. Yes. Yeah. As he looked. famously... Yeah. Did he? Well, I can't remember that one. He didn't say I'm better than Kenny Omega, but there was some sort of comment he made once. He had that issue with Sammy Guevara over the... There's some guy in the other company who, Go to uh, hell. who took my finisher who can't even do it right. Okay. And Kenny jumped in. 
Or did he just say, also, I'm I can't remember when he got involved, actually. I thought it was about star ratings. It was boring. Oh, anyway. God. Yeah. Right. <laughs> star ratings. Look out for 10 more WWE matches that didn't get five star ratings that should have done, by the way. It was coming out oh, soon. Oh, fans talk about star ratings. Okay, fine. Debating it. Whatever. Wrestlers talking about it in their promos. It's sad. And getting really upset about... I think it was on Twitter, but... What uh, one dude thinks about it. I know. Mind boggles, doesn't it? AW Dynamite. Thunder only happens when it's raining. When it's rain, uh, like a title rain. rain. Thunder Rosa only happens when it's rain. Ah, but it's not happening because she's not raining good. anymore. It's, it's all right. I'll allow it. When I thought of that, I really thought that was going to be good. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> like the my original one for NXT nah. was much worse than uh, flip the script. Go on, what was it? It was um, I'm shaking hands with Dumbledore. I've won the NXT Championship because Harry lies about what he sees in the mirror. And Apollo Crews is lying about that, what he's... That, yeah. Yeah. Right. You fool. Move out the way. Yeah. I didn't know you... The boy lies. Oh, yeah. Wow, you... Wow. Sorry. Quoting it verbatim. My family watches them every time they're on TV. Every Christmas, man. Even... No, I, I'll stop. I've lied. They'll watch the first 20 minutes then fall the hell asleep and I'm there <laughs> watching it by going, I didn't want to watch this. And they're all, oh, whatever. Um, Did you know that Hagrid was just a suit not actually a real big man? Yep. He was in Goldmine. <laughs> <laughs> Saw it on the Instagram reels. Poo shoot, uh, shift I was having earlier this week. Uh, they had water pumps cooling the guy who was inside the suit. Robbie Coltrane. No, not Robbie Coltrane. It was oh, a different man. Oh, sorry, sorry. The, the oh, so it's him for like the shots. The close of shots. Yeah. Oh, okay. oh, so, I didn't know that. I yeah. didn't know that. I thought either. the way you said like, no, yeah. Robbie Coltrane's not actually that big. He's not actually like, nine foot tall. I thought he was sick. Oh. It's bigger than almost. <laughs> I was going to say he's in, he's in Goldeneye. He's a mafia man. He had to cut off his legs to appear in Goldeneye. <laughs> he's class in James Bond. He is. He's brilliant. I swear he was in every single ITV drama my man would oh, record I mean, Cracker, in the, the, the noughties. Mm. Yeah. Oh. Uh, when I was a kid, I thought I'd seen him in Pantomime. But when I got older, I learned that it was actually Brian Blessed. <laughs> it, I saw him in, as Captain Hook. I saw Brian Blessed as Captain yeah. Hook. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh. And the woman from Smart was Peter Pan. Oh, I don't remember that. Kirsty. Kirsty, the blonde one. Yeah. Yeah, she was Peter Pan. Bloody hell. I went and saw probably. Pam Royal as uh, the evil something or other in some sort of Christmas play one year. <laughs> yeah. Changed my life. Who? Who? Was she good? Pam Royal. Pam Royal? Off the ITV Northeast News? Pam? Uh, it's not ringing any bells, I'm sorry. Everyone knows Pam Royal. <laughs> I tried pretending like, oh, Pam Royal. You had, Mike, Mike, in. You had Mike, what's his, Mike Weatherburn? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And Pam. Uh, Mike and Pam. Right. Okay. Oh. She was who? Some, Some purple dress was on, wicked thing, Disney. But I never know. <laughs> <laughs> Ross can... This is going off the rails. Anyway. Ross has regaled us with wonderful memories of seeing the Chuckle Brothers in Pandemonium. Yep. But clearly Pam did not leave as much of an impression. Yeah. No. Well, that could be the Chuckle Brothers. Literally. Wait, Paul thought... <laughs> oh, yes. No, I've remembered now why the Chuckle Brothers... Paul, cream pie of my mom. <laughs> Which, no. I'd, which would have been me being cream pie by Paul, but I dodged the bullet, so to speak. Because I got intel from the row behind saying, did you know if you sit on the end of the row, they'd come and get you with a cream pie, with a shaving foam. Yeah. Me mum got it instead. Oh, so I, was like, I was like, mum, can I swap seats with you? Because I don't think, she, don't think she heard and she went for it. <laughs> would, they have, would they have done that to a child? Oh, yeah. They didn't care? They didn't care. That could have upset a child. Yeah, oh, good. Well. Then the third one, the uh, the shagger of the the Chuckle Brothers would come out and say, "No slacking." That's it. <laughs> He's now dead. <laughs> Rest in peace, third Chuckle Brother. <laughs> Which, as a nice segue, <laughs> leads us on to William Regal. <laughs> William Regal, the fourth Chuckle Brother, opens the show and is quickly cut off by John Moxie. He wasn't impressed with what happened on A to B Full Gear, mm. but Brian Danielson gets between them. He pleads with Moxie not to hurt Regal. Boom. So instead, Moxie tells him to leave AW and never come back. Regal walks away, like Simba in Lion King. <laughs> I just wish Brian dressed up for the occasion, me. That was oh, my main cool. Like Pam Royal. Yeah, like Pam Royal and that panto. <laughs> What's the evil Disney purple? Maleficent. Maleficent. Yeah, that's the one. She was a... Uh... Sorry, I sat on that and I could have helped. I should have <laughs> jumped in. There's several, though. There's loads of Wicked Witches in yeah. Disney. Um... But uh, I like, because initially I was like, why is he out there? You know, it's obvious why Moxley's pissed off. Just let him go for it. But then I thought, I like the reasoning. It was real. Or was it real? I don't know. It felt right. It, it was, it was, I thought really good, but the crowd obviously weren't happy because they want to see him get battered for yeah. what he did. Yeah. But Brian's reasoning was sound. And it doesn't make Moxley look like a, like a punk bitch. 
for letting him go. It, it was reasoning behind it. It was what, good. What made it was the shot where they had the hand in the foreground of the mm. shot and then Moxley's red face in the background. Yeah, like, right. Just Whoa. furious. You could, he was palpable. You could feel the emotion. Very good. I, like I, I find that's just been a bit of a get though. Like, no, don't hurt him. It's like, I lost the title because of him. Ah, but yeah. Then, yeah. Daniel he loves that man. Danielson He's did really say good. we've all done evil stuff in wrestling in history. Everyone, we've all been heels. That, Moxley and should he, have gone, uh, yeah, I'm about to do another one. I'm going to kill him <laughs> live on air. <laughs> Anyway. What, what, what's Danielson done that's like so healish? Yeah, he's said nasty things, but he's beaten people in wrestling matches by being the best one. That's how he, that's the extent of his. Oh, he, Cody Rhodes taught him how to lie. He <laughs> cast aside a leather championship and brought in a Hessian one instead. Yeah, he right? did, yeah. That's mm. doing his thing. Bloody evil. Mm. Oh, I hate you, hemp. <laughs> <laughs> that was class, that. Yeah, oh, I love that. It's backstage, Swerve Strickland confronts Keith Lee. Instead of breaking up the tag team, they agree to talk. Interesting. Oh. I hope this isn't one of the ones where Good they. Good job wait. they had these stacks. Next to each other, though, these two very similar sounds. <laughs> <laughs> Have you never heard of the rule of two? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm hoping this isn't like one of the ones where Tony waits too long to pull the trigger, like with Jamie Hayden. Although yeah. it worked in the end, I suppose. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. I just think Although, he's... actually, they haven't pulled the trigger with Jamie. No. Britt Brit revealed she's still team Jamie. Yeah. Oh, I mean, like, yeah. winning the titles. Though. Oh, right, oh yeah, okay, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. I, I think you, I think well, it, the, the the sooner Keith just throws Swerve a very long way, the better. I think that's what people are gagging for, aren't they? Mm. Yeah, yeah. Let's go. For and it. they could have really good matches together against each other. Yeah, mm. yeah. Orange Cassidy beats Jake Hager to attain the All Atlantic title, sentence. partly because Hager really likes his new hat. Hager, which apparently is now to... over. <laughs> the purple hat is over. Yeah, it's rejuvenated his career. <laughs> hey, it's at least at least a month build for the purple hat. Yeah, yeah. it had more build than the Sammy Jericho <laughs> thing. <laughs> it did, legitimately. It, did. it really did, <laughs> uh, and it played a really crucial role in this match because Hager would have been the new champion if it wasn't for the hat. Yeah, because probably straight. I think the hat's gonna. <laughs> Turn out to be working against him from the inside. <laughs> Sam, well, we're not, everyone Sam else Punk leaves. lives in the hat. Yeah. Everyone else leaves and you hear voices. A Chicago like, voice. Is it? Um, is it? Bite him on the arm. No, it, I can't do that. Is it Ralph in The Simpsons or someone who yes. has a boil that talks to him? Oh, he's got voices oh, in his head. Or something. It's a leprechaun that talks. Oh, it's a leprechaun. Yeah. Boil. Randy Orton, huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Burn them all, Ralph. Yeah. Says. Yeah. <laughs> After the match, QT Marshall and the factory surround the ring, but Julia Hart appears, signifying the return of the House of Black. Mm. They beat up everyone. And interestingly, they cheered when they beat up the best friends. But yeah. booed when the factory got attacked. <laughs> but then they cheered when they beat up the security. Wait a minute, what? It's like the 90s. What the hell is wrong with this crowd? It's like the 90s again, isn't the it? The best friends got beat up like, yeah, get them. Hey, Chicago's had too much AEW, and I think this was the proof. They didn't know what to do with themselves. They're drunk they? on stupid, Ross. Do <laughs> you remember the best friends going to attack? I right. did like the tease of like the red lightning. And I think there was like a little flash of red as well. So you're thinking, oh, it's down Red lightning? It's down What, from ICW? <laughs> uh, no. Sorry. Um, but because uh, I was thinking, oh, it's down housing. <laughs> but then it wasn't. Mm. <laughs> it was a nice tease, I thought. Yes. I'm glad to see them back. I was worried they actually weren't going to come back. Yeah. No, uh, no Wang, YouTuber joining them. That one segment he was a part of. Justin oh, yeah, Wang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. He's so good. There was a nice bit during the commercial break as well where the, uh, the commentators on about all the obnoxious members of the JS. And then Ta, if it was any other company, I wouldn't be saying this, but because it's AEW, I'm bringing it up. He says, there are a lot of obnoxious people in this company. And it's the way he said it during the commercial break. It's just, it means there's more trouble backstage. Obviously, Matthew, come on. Ta. Come on, the controversy train. Oh. Woo-woo! No, I can't possibly... Whoa, the clicks. Yeah, <laughs> oh, controversy brewing in AEW. <coughs> Excuse me. Ta, Jake Hager's rock bottom was delightful. I wanted to mention that as well. Yeah. But the hat was maybe a bit, a bit too much of the hat for a title match. Mm. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you are right. But at the same time, if it's over, why not? Wait a minute. A gimmick that's a bit daft, but over versus Orange Cassidy. <laughs> <laughs> that's my case. Ricky Starks then beats Ethan Page with the second best tit in AEW <laughs> to become number one contender. He overcame the odds. Now, I enjoyed it and I really liked that Ethan Page was given a chance a little bit to have a mini push. But after he'd beaten Cage and Lance Archer, I was like, well, of course he's going to beat Ethan Page. He's just beaten two massive blows. Yeah. Did you think that as well? Yeah. I'll tell you what, though, Matthew, if this was any other company, I wouldn't be saying this, but because it's AEW, <laughs> there was a definite dug at, dig at CM Punk from, uh, was it Cage oh. on the way down? He's like, all you Chicago crybabies can cry when Stark loses. Definite dig Whoa. at CM Punk. Okay, he's well, from Chicago and he cries. Yeah. <laughs> it I should be Eaton then instead. Yeah. On the... <laughs> <laughs> it's Who just... else is a bit of a crybaby from Chicago? Kanye West, I suppose. Is he, is he from Chicago? He is, he is. Wow. Uh, you know the song, I'm coming home again. Oh, yeah. My name is no, Windy and home I like to blow trees. Chicago. No, I that would be better. 
No, he says, my name is Windy and I like to blow trees and it's the Windy City, isn't it? Ah. Uh, the whole song's about Chicago. A guy named Trees is like, get in. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jade Sorry. Cargill is... That was it? disgusting. Sorry. You know what? Sorry. Is that all right? Yeah, yeah. It's kind of a bit bored. Spot Jade... in my podcast. Oh, because... Jade Cargill is interviewed about her scuffle with Bow Wow. Oh, yes. yippee yeah. yippee I was going to say, yeah. Basketball is his favourite sport. <laughs> Do you remember that? Do you remember that? Sheesh. I thought you were just telling us things about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Matt, Matt Fox. Yeah. I just finished Bret Hart's he, autobiography. Bow Wow hates mustard. <laughs> he drives a Ford Escort. <laughs> yeah. She says she's not giving him any more attention. And Mark Sterling fires Kira Hogan oh, from the stable. Poor Kira was just a proper afterthought. Harsh but fair there. Yeah. She has messed up a few times. The OG baddie is back and the, the new one is gone. I feel bad for <laughs> Kira. <laughs> Kira was treated way more seriously in Impact Wrestling. Like a lot yeah. of the women's singles wrestlers, actually, to be yeah. fair. But yeah. To be that might be a new feud for Jade, obviously. So there you go. Well, she needs that one. After Bow Wow is dealt with, will Bow Wow get a title shot? Can he mm. wrestle? <sighs> we need Sal Bandini. Yeah. yeah, yeah Train yeah, and wrestle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Speaking of um, Impact, just really quickly, I'd like to congratulate young whippersnapper Bully Ray for getting a number one contender and <laughs> like getting a title shot. Another one? For the main one? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Has that not been finished with? I thought he'd like got rid of him. He's got another, he's back. They, they did the Battle Royal to win that. And he's won it. He's become number one contender. Yeah. But, all right. So the point was, sorry. Was like a month ago. So the point was that he, he could, Josh Alexander could trust him to have a face versus face match. But actually, Bully's turned heel. Who would have A thought? guy named Bully Ray turned heel. <laughs> he, tried to <laughs> power, he tried to power bomb his wife. Oh, it's bad. Wow. I'm really invested. Yeah, it's a weird... Impact were doing so well. Who's going to be promotion of the year this year? Raw. Everyone's thrown it a roll. <laughs> Smackdown. I think as mm. things are, it's the World Wrestling Federation. Like. Yeah. Because even in the dark parts of the early year, there was highlights mm. still. Mm, that's a good point. Now it's been good. Yeah. But Mine now, right now, now AW's... Is it coming back a little bit? If they have a strong last month of the year, it's wide it's open. It's all to play for. Wide open. But NXT is not winning it this no, year. No, no, no. They've, they've pissed it away. Nah. <laughs> After winning the half year. The oh. first half of the year was the golden period. <laughs> but now we've got the skiz. Well, well the bollocks zone. Yeah, yes. Yeah. The bollocks zone. Is, the bollocks zone. It's getting bigger, isn't it, by the week? Big bollocks. Yeah. <laughs> Big bollocks. Despite using a lot of CM Punk-based offense, the Elite lose the second match to Death Triangle. Get it up, you. After Pender <laughs> uses a hammer. I agree. Get the hammer isn't happy about I it. Hate exactly. These smug boys. Yes, they I may hate have been so much. Yes, they may have been right. But oh That's the point that they're being heels, aren't they? Now it's great. They're in Chicago, yeah, I understand. We're back to the exact same thing we had beforehand. Here we are. Have Ooh. the biggest yeah, the biggest heels in wrestling. Also, cheer us, please. We're really good. I get it. Like, this no. one this one time I get it, because they were in Chicago. One time. But you think they're gonna stop after I this? I know, yeah. I think they're proper heels now. No, uh, I think it is. They against... cheered. They got cheered against in this seven. Oh no, that's just that's just the cunning. It, that's the dichotomy of the Death Triangle because they've got one heel with two goodies who are getting corrupted. All, all of these they're men, all goodies. Are they all about... six of them tweeners. Between them, between the six men, I think they are tweeners. Wow, all six of them are poorly written. No, Pack's <laughs> great. Pack is great. I like that. The, the Lucha, the match was really good. Lucha, Lucha lads, can we call them if they're becoming more and more Georges? Well, Pender <laughs> used the hammer this time. And Phoenix was annoyed at it. The Lucha Rajis. That's it. Hmm. Uh, what are the... There was the smash your quesadilla. <laughs> <laughs> With a hammer. <laughs> uh, what else? There was the failed buckshot, wasn't there? There was, yeah. And then Matt suddenly grabbed his leg, didn't he? Was there any biting? Oh, yeah, Omega. Subtle. Yeah, the biting. Omega bit. The go to sleep. Oh, sorry, sorry, Bubba Jack. I need to throw it for the man. Omega did a GTS as well, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, he tried. Oh, did he? The, this all makes the you think it's a The buckshot fail was the worst one. <laughs> did he? And then he, got on the, then he got on the ramp, started talking. And, yeah. uh, it makes you think it's a work, didn't it? No. Yeah. I think these lads are just Stop really it. petty. I, I think <laughs> just... You're just stirring the pot. The, the books have always been like this. And I'm sad to see a nice boy like Kenny Omega get dragged in. All he did in the fight was protect the dog and get exactly. bitten. <laughs> and get I hope, bitten, yeah. I hope Os all Osprey does is just do like CM Punk. Although, Jack, the positioning of the bite mark on his uh, arm would lead you to believe he had a steal and a headlock. What were people doing like CSI stuff? <laughs> wow. Enhance. That's Enhance. brilliant. Enhance. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm just taking the piss, everybody. Uh, I'm not. Um, <laughs> I did like the handshake because what made me think they were going to be just heelish, I know they were in Chicago, but like the stuff they were doing like outside of the punk stuff, like when Omega went in for the handshake and just boshed him in the head with a knee. Fantastic stuff. Yeah. yeah. They're much more natural as a heel, obviously, because yeah. they're just unlikable. And they said, like, 
yeah, the very, very good as heels, but as soon as I do my face, it's like, no, wait, I still want to boo you. Yeah, so. a little bit. I love the finish as well with the hammer. By the way, the best of seven. I was, it was a weird world of emotions because, wow, pack one. Bloody hell. Didn't think that was going to happen. And then it's like, oh, by the way, it's going to be best of seven. They will lose. I wasn't happy about that because there was no naturalness to it. If they set it up on this AW Dynamite going, all right, we need to get back in the swing of things. You know what? I'm contesting that finish. I think you, you think you can do that again. <laughs> all right, how many? How about this? Yeah, many times? yeah. Really. I'd be much happier. But it's just like, all right, well, this is happening. Yeah, and we used to do this like in 2015, 2017, just like, oh, this match has happened on the pay per view, like on the pay per view before it. And you're like, well, there's just no natural build then, or like hype or human nature to this. It's just they have VAR. Yeah, it's happening. VAR install. That's what they need. That's what needs to save wrestling. Yeah, that really save football. <laughs> Oh, I'm a oh. I'm a proponent of it. Are you really? Yeah, no. actually, I'm, the yeah. idea of it was great, and then they implemented. You go. I think oh, that right, the use of it, they use yeah. it badly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Renee Paquette announces that due to Thunder Rosa's oh injury, word. she's relinquished the AW Women's Title, making Jamie Hader the new official champion. Hader and Co. arrive. Britt says they never recognize the word interim. Anyway, <laughs> we know Britt. You never sure about it on social media. Oh. Country later tell us that Tony Storm's reign has been legitimized as well. Right. Jealous Baker rearing her head, which has snatched the microphone away from Jamie, didn't she? Oh, yeah. She's a good, she's a good face heel. So does that, <laughs> does that mean... Yeah, she's about to be in a heel now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> does, that, does that mean that... Um, does that mean that Thunder's... Thunder. Her first name, Thunder. Has she lost days off her reign? Then Her reign's been really cut down. I imagine her reign ended when Storm won. Right, yeah, that's all right. Yeah. Okay. This is all CM Punk's fault, though. If he wasn't, uh, I, well, they didn't know. If they, he wasn't like, pissy and just dropped the title when he hurt his ankle, <laughs> I'm all right. With, you know, I'm all right with the interim as an idea, but then I think maybe it's too new a concept. A lot of wrestling fans I'm just because... stirring the pot again. Everybody, I'm not uh, really. I them. I wish. <laughs> that, that, not really. That, that there's been a lot of battering of CM Punk. I know. Not in this podcast only, but on the everyone out there, and I feel sorry for that. Brave boy, CM Punk, Phil. What's he ever done wrong? He'd be sat in his Crystal Palace right now. <laughs> he supports Crystal, Crystal Palace. Palace. Wow. He his loves, Diamond Palace. He loves Patrick Vieira. <laughs> and then he said Alan Pardew. He also played for Palace. He did and managed them. Did He's that dance. A big yeah. proponent of the Brighton Right connection. So he was. Mm. Uh, CM Punk yes. in the 90s. Uh, I thought you would have got that being a 90s football reference. I, I'm just... It's when Crystal agreeing. Palace all had little tiny strikers. Oh. I've learned that Jack Atkins I am one of those still harbours resentment towards Wimbledon. Uh, FC one for being Liverpool in the cup final. I see that one. I got God for uh, wrestling. I suppose football, <laughs> man, wrestling. That Jesus Christ. Britain hater team up to beat the teams of Anna J and Tay Mello and Sky Blue and Willow Nightingale. Yeah, it was a three team match. Yeah, contrasting styles. We had haters team wrestling. We had Ty and uh, Jay uh, doing uh, sports oh, entertainment stuff, too. and we had the other baby faces uh, just surviving yeah. until Sky Blue made a fantastic comeback. What a hot tag it was. But then they lost anyway. I, th- I was surprised. I thought that the JAS girls were going to take the fall here. Oh, I think the Baker winning, getting the pinfall was the right way to go if we're going to build towards her and Jamie oh, Hayden yeah, for the next um, thing. So. That would make sense, That is true. It? Yeah. 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 Mm. Good. I'm glad they got one thing out of the way and then they move on to the next thing. Willow Nightingale should have got more of a showcase yeah. here. Though. Yeah. It's the first... Dyna- is it her... She had, I know she had a, was it on Rampage though a little while ago? You spent a bunch of Rampages but yeah. I, off the top of my head. No, Taz she had a theme... Got she her did. Taz doing her best. Taz, her best. Taz doing best. her best. His best for her. Hold on, boy. All right, Jim Ross. All right, all right. Anyway, uh, backstage, I'm holding this up so I don't see it because I haven't watched much of AW. I might like, backstage, FDR and Top Flight agree to Ring of Honor title match. Okay, that should be nice. Is there a loose spoiler I can throw in here from uh, Rampage uh, that was in our news chat this morning? Dante was uh, injured, apparently, oh no. on Rampage. In the match? In the, yeah. Oh, oh. oh he's... Oh, he's stopped. the one who doesn't get injured. Yeah, it's oh, Darius a... who gets injured. That's that a shame. Yeah. Oh. Those two lads have had no I say he's oh. injured conclusively. There was medics in the ring. They've had no... Ten and two. They've had yeah, no, bless no, them. Yeah. Yeah. Two very talented, but yeah, had some horrible luck. Meanwhile, the acclaimed arrive, announced that Billy Gunn is all healed up and ready to scissor. <laughs> Jeff, <laughs> chair... Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, Jeff, yeah, chair, yeah, yeah. and Jay... Come Fresh on. Fresh from their devastating loss at full game. <laughs> appear on the Tron and say they're going to beat the acclaimed asses, but Billy gets them off they just the screen them? Oh, no. and everybody scissors. Yeah. Jeff Jarrett is going to get a title, title shot and if win. Je- Jeff Jarrett, yeah, if they win, that's hilarious. I think it was Ian, Ian, 
uh, drew, oh, I forget how to say his bloody Twitter name, sorry, but uh, one good lad on Twitter did say, wait, AW had issues with CM Punk and the Elite. There's a, two, a bunch of egos clashing. Jeff Jarrett is now part of AW on screen and backstage talent. Oh, I see him as quite a, quite a polite man. Yeah. Never politics in his life. Never <laughs> politics in his life. But he probably does it in quite a Southern gentleman way, though. That's right. A man who is able to work with WWE. Yeah. AEW. He must be lovely. Uh, JCP, inexplicably. All in one calendar year. Boy, he's not a politic or he a must, selfish. GC Dub? GC Dub, yeah. yes, of course. He must be a lovely guy. He must be. He, makes, he brings them all uh, cups of tea at the start of the shift and some cakes. His wife. Cooked. He's like Duke Hudson. He's charming as out. <laughs> he bleeds the That's colors it. of whichever promotion he happens to be in. That's right. <clears throat> if I... he, man, if they win the title. I'd love it if they were. <laughs> I'm telling you now. <laughs> it would be funny to see the reaction if he did win. <clears throat> oh. If Satnam gets involved and Jeff Jarrett's the one to get the fall, or if Jarrett's just the one out wrestle the acclaimed and get the fall, <laughs> why the hell not? Imagine that. I, I assume <sighs> it's just going to be to bolster the reign of the acclaimed. But hopefully, if <laughs> yeah. there is a chance, there is a chance. I was deeply uncomfortable looking at Daddy Ass this week, though. He reminded me of Daz Samson because he had his <laughs> hat on sideways, dressed exactly like the acclaimed were. And I was just very uncomfortable. Like an older man pretending to be a younger yeah. man. Yeah. Mm. Right. It's Chandler, Chandler Bing with the, the rollerblade shoes. Mm. It's Homer Simpson doing something similar. Steve Buscemi. Hey, we... fellow kids. Yep. Yeah. yeah. In the main event, Chris Jericho beats Tommy Hiro Ishii, the young boy. What are you doing here? Get Retain the ring of a world title. He threatens Ian uh, Riccoboni afterwards, mm -hmm. uh, but Claudio Castanotti makes the save and lays him out. That's good. We just had a four-way <laughs> match. You didn't win. Yeah. Actually, we get reheated this way. And he lost to the title, dude. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what Strange. the hell's happening with well, that. Well, I thought it was going to be Brian, maybe, but Brian's busy trying to protect Win uh, Regal. That, it's so. gone off the rails somewhat. But I haven't seen it yet, but Jericho versus Ishii uh, got some good reviews from my mate. He chopped him loads and loads until he bled. He who? wasn't just it was bleeding. the summer of 69. <laughs> That's the <laughs> lyric, isn't it? Um, he wasn't just bleeding. Oh, it was more than just bleeding. Well, it, was just, it was pissing out his chest. Yeah, yeah. I think Jericho, it was Jericho's tits who walked right, okay. Um he had, a, he had like a cross pendant on. So I assume it's a bit like the old uh, Hogan and Andre, yeah. but with a chop instead of a pull. Oh. Um, but it was really gu gushing out of there. It was a wonderful visual. But that's basically all the match was. I say that. It was more to it than that, wasn't there? But there was lots of slaps. Lovely. It was that it was King's good. Road style. Ishii looked strong still in defeat, I guess, because New Japan... Insisted because he oh, like yeah. flipped him off and tapped at the I same time. I gave him the finger and then it went like that. Uh, oh, that's good. That was, oh, okay. I like that. Ishii's still good. Yeah. There was a DDT on the apron that Jericho gave the Ishii. And was it or the other way around? No, it was Jericho who gave it to Ishii, wasn't it? I can't remember what, what it happened. It was devastating then, whatever it happened. It was oh. just, yeah, go back and watch it. It was unbelievable. It was a good match. Yeah, I, it was from Jericho to Ishii. By was, this point, uh, I was really tired. And, and so when I thought of the Thunder Rosa pun, I just went, oh, the dog be class. And I went to bed. So I, I, I can't remember this match that well. God, it's crazy, isn't it? Main event, January 6th versus January 4th. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought, yes! Oh. Really good. Really good. <laughs> if you know, that was offensive. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Jericho's reaction when Jim Ross was watching Lance Archer in AW Rampage. And Lance Archer went over the top rope with his big legs and he went, Wow, look at that. And Jim Ross went, Yeah, first guy I saw do that was Grizzly Smith. Oh, God. And Jericho yeah. went, Grizzly Smith. Like, of all the. If you're not, you're not up to. You're not exactly Mr. Current Affairs, are you, Turkish? It was just like. <laughs> it's not a name I'd be name dropping right now, pal. Who was it who mentioned him? JR, JR. of course. Oh. <laughs> Great. Okay. He would have been working with him in WCW. Sure, that a great rapport. Yeah. Oh, dear me. <laughs> like we do every week here on the Cult on It Wrestling Podcast. The week of wrestling. What a good week it was. I'm, I'm probably going to have to miss that last bye two bye, I'm sorry, bye lads. Bye. I'm sorry. If there's any questions, text me and I'll reply my answer, yeah. maybe. If there's any aimed at me specifically. <laughs> should, should we ring you? No, don't phone. ring me. In the middle of a gig. <laughs> no, I'm going to be walking <laughs> to the gig. Oh. I'll probably be able to text for the next. Jack, Jack, out of breath, responds to some of the questions. <laughs> and I think. That sounds good. Jack, what have you got the plug before you leave? Oh, thank you very much. Just the stuff for Survivor Series this week. Um, mm. What happened after it? Oh. Um, I'm sure you will go over the stuff you're doing after it, mm. but it's all the stuff. Um, and Twitch every week, Wednesdays at 6 p.m. with Owen Morrison, twitch.tv forward slash coldaholic. Also, um, the new weirdest episodes will be out sometime in December, before Christmas. So that's all I know Lovely. so far. Lovely stuff. Any, any idea what it's going to be? Yes, but I'm going to keep it a little sneaky ah, surprise. Ah, very good. Mm. Take care of yourself, Jack. You we'll too. have a lovely time at the gig. Cheers, everyone. Let's have a rummage in our 
mail bags. <laughs> ah, do a little look in the mail bag with special guest Dan. Back I'm again. On the camera, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now, annoyingly, I picked the first question in the mail bag for Jack, and he's now gone. So, Dan, I want you to pretend you are the biggest CM Punk fan who's ever lived and react accordingly. Okay. Question number one. Uh, Matthew, I love the podcast, but is there any way I can hear Ross just talking about football? That's right. <sighs> YouTube.com forward slash hold. At hold and give. Hold and give. At yeah. hold and give. Fantastic. Content rolling out from this weekend onwards. That's right. That was the same point question, so yeah. hopefully number two is better. <laughs> Greetings, lads. Word of warning. Jack will not like this one. He saw it and he buggered off me. You'll hate it, won't you, Jack? Ah, uh, terrible. That's it. We're good. <laughs> I hate CM Punk. Obviously, I have no way to prove my long-standing loath loathing for the man existed prior to Brawl Out, but I was never happy to see him back to begin with. Like most, I took a break from wrestling when I was younger, but my break period only lasted four years, and I was pulled back in after Hell in a Cell 2015 after hearing about the main event between Taker and Lesnar thanks to some of the YouTube channels that also ruined my life by introducing me to Adam Pichidi. Sorry about him. Upon reinvesting, I caught up on what I missed, and after viewing Punk's run from the pipe bomb through his, to his exit and listening to his appearance on Art of Wrestling, I realized I don't hold this guy in the same regard so many others do. I don't think CM Punk has actually been the best wrestler in the world at any point in his career. I understand the gimmick, and he has to call himself that, are you sure, Bell? But Punk has been active at the same time as men like Brian Danielson, Samoa Joe, AJ Styles, Hiroshi Tanahashi, Okada, Kurt Angle. And in my opinion, Punk is probably the best wrestler who was a terrible athlete in the history of the business because the appeal of his matches come from the story he can tell, not the moves he can hit. Seven years of ring rust considered, I found Punk sloppy as hell at times during his run at AEW. And with the exception of his dog collar match with the prodigal son, MJF, he never had the best match on any card he was involved with. I can call Punk overrated as wrestler alone because his promo skill is still platinum tier. And that itself is something I, nor anyone, can take from him. The main issue I have with CM Punk is his deep sense of entitlements and complete victim mentality. I thought Punk sounded bitter and petty on Art of Wrestling, despite having legitimate, understandable grievances with AEW. Sorry, make a problem with WWE. And I particularly dislike how he welded, was it wielded? Never figure that one out. Wielded his influence to cast a cloud over the career Roman Reigns. What? It took six years for the crowd as a majority except the tribal chief post-Shield. And of course, one must consider late stage Vince booking as a contributing factor, right? But the make Roman look really, really strong meme burned bright for years. And I know some fans still hold on to it eight years later. Imagine what Jack would be saying now. He, he, he probably just turned <laughs> red. Because a friend of mine often makes reference to it still today. I can't help but think Punk knew what he was doing when he uttered those five infamous words. My question for you all is, is there a personality in wrestling you've always held in different light than others? Maybe because you dislike them, who they openly are outside of the ring, right? Okay. Pick here there. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Matthew, for teaching me about Volta. So I knew who he was before my friends did. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ross, for a fair and balanced take on wrestling as a whole. And for making me give <laughs> NXT 2.0 a chance. Oh. And thank you, Jack, for helping me fall in love with Japanese wrestling in 2017. And also for not being a Filthy CM Punk apologist. Cheers, Corey from Tennessee. Oof. Now you can see why I picked that question. Because <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot that Jack would have been going. <laughs> I mean, I had to hold my tongue for a few times just think like, all right. Like, that's what I don't like the thing where it's like, well, he's a terrible athlete because of the moves he hits are sloppy rather than the moves he can do. Everybody hits bloody, like, picture perfect, synchronized swimming type moves nowadays. So, I think him not being picture perfect is fine. Wrestling's not supposed to look like that type of thing all the bloody fight. time. Yeah. And it never had the uh, best match of pay-per-view apart from the MGF versus Eddie Kingston. Mon frere. Mm. Beg your pardon. Um, even though he was complaining about legitimate stuff, I mean, he was given his release and stuff on his wedding day and all yeah. that, but the countless other things. Why? It was bitter and twisted and grieving. It's like, ooh. I would be. Moan, moan, moan. moan. What? Imagine if a doctor gave you something and you crapped yourself on TV. Yeah. I would not be happy about that either. Uh, and the make Roman look really strong meme, I thought that was only a very small thing that influenced people to boo Roman. And yes, him saying stuff like suffering succotash and saying horrible things about Rusev's family and just being <laughs> generally not very nice or likable and playing a part of the role of someone who's supposed to be. We'll walk on a few factors and CM Punk said one thing about him on a podcast one time. <laughs> 
But that's just me. I am not a CM Punk apologist. What do you think, Dan? Well, playing the role of Jack. Playing the role of Jack. Well, in defense of CM Punk, I think, per, well, personally, I feel like wrestling's always better when there's a story involved. And I think that's been highlighted by AEW Dynamite a lot over the past weeks. Taken last week's out, of course, nominated for the Hall of Fame. Oh, yeah. Didn't win, though. Came third, so maybe people agree. Good try. <laughs> it's all the story. And yeah, he's not the best maybe in the ring, but he's always been able to tell a great story and put stakes into a match. And I think the fact that, I don't know if you would agree, but probably the stuff of MGF is probably the best story they've done in AEW Dynamite. Might be necessarily the best match, but probably the best story. So I think he's great at selling a story and it doesn't necessarily matter as much about how good the in-ring stuff is because that has, it has stakes, it has consequences whether one person loses or not, which makes the match better as a result. Amen, sister. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry if you fell asleep during that section. <laughs> Good day, diddlers. We didn't even answer the question, did we? It was like, who do you... Who, who oh, you... God, yeah, sorry. Yeah, so, so, folks, that massive amount of text. Somebody you don't like in wrestling just for no real reason, or maybe just because of who they are outside the ring. I mean, where do you start with that one, with all the obvious ones? Yeah, because... Uh, Let's not go uh, for an obvious one. All right, J- Jim Ross. <laughs> um, but, yeah, there's, there's so many... Yeah, there's so many ones who you have to remind yourself, I don't have to, like... Yeah, somewhere along the line in the last few years, it became, like, well, you know, I have to like them as a person, to like them as an outside. No, you don't. You, you're watching them as a character. Yeah. Like, that's sort of thing to remind yourself. You're not falling in love with this person as a human. Like, no, it's just a character. That's the thing I've been going through so. with Kane. Oh, been, that's a good there's one. There's literally seven years yeah. of me going, Kane's my favorite wrestler. Then people go, oh, but politics. The devil's yeah. favorite demon, the big red machine, is not in office currently. I'm fine like hey, Kane. Well said, mate. <laughs> uh, I'd say most, most wrestlers in that case, then. <laughs> Uh, it might be a question we can't even answer in a in a short period of time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, honestly, most of them. Anyone coming to your mind, Dan? No, not not straight in mind. No. That's fine. Shall we move on? I know, yeah, I no like... one's gonna open up a bag of worms <laughs> that no one wants to eat right now. So but thank you very much, Corey. Uh, too, Brom Break would love those bag of worms for his variable bait. So you would. Oh, Throw those tiddlers back out though. <laughs> Good day, diddlers. I've just recently gotten back into watching WWE and the Cole Hug videos have been instrumental to my viewing experience. Ooh, it's turning me in the right direction of what to watch and giving vital context to moments I already loved. However, my toxic trait I found with this is wanting to know all the context to every matchup I want to see. Combing through episodes of SmackDown and Raw to find the beginning of the feud only to never end up getting to the match I intended to watch due to getting sidetracked by another matchup of this week's episode. Oh, okay. Prime examples... Uh, from this most recent memory, I never actually watching Hardy's, Dudley's, Edgy Christian TLC, or CM Punk's various matches with The Shield. My question for you is, what match are you ashamed to admit you haven't actually watched? Apo- <laughs> Apologies in the <laughs> advance for any backstage arguments, but I suppose I did mention CM Punk. Bloody hell, the, <laughs> the recurring theme. Much love, JD, uh, well, Jaden slash Audio Compass from Sefton, New Zealand, by way of Decepticon Bay, Queensland, Australia. Oh, Deception Bay. <laughs> Decepticon. <laughs> that is disgusting. I read that as Decepticon. How often do you see this Deception written down, right? <laughs> well, you can answer this, Ross. Hey, it's your birthday, you pissed. It's fine. I've never watched Austin, uh, sorry, Bret Hart versus Shawn Michaels in full from Which starting one? at WrestleMania. Iron Man. Oh, don't worry. Nah. In f- I've, I've sat there and skipped through it, but I've never just sat down and watched it bell to bell. I've watched and it Bell a after few that. times, Bell to Bell. Don't worry. You're missing <laughs> nothing. It's It should be the best match of all time. It isn't. It's pretty average. It goes and I slow. love Brett. It goes slow, doesn't it? Both men trying to wrestle a different match than the other. Sean wanting to overshadow Brett. Brett being miserable and whatever. Just Yeah, P- WWE bigs up that match. But if you watch it, it's like... Yeah, I've always felt need. I could, like, and you don't even feel like you're missing out on stuff because yeah. you can't just skip 10 seconds at a time and just get... To the end quicker. Uh, <laughs> There's yeah. people now with pitchforks at home coming nah, for the office. No, people who know wrestling know that's not that good. Uh, probably a lot of New Japan matches that people are like, what do you yeah. mean you haven't seen? I haven't, don't think I've seen any of Osprey's five-star matches. You know, the 33s had this year. Yeah, this year, mate, I'm the same boat. 
Yeah. I used to, uh, appointment viewing for me, like for the past few years, has been Wrestle Kingdom, though. Not last, not this year, actually. I haven't seen this year's Wrestle Kingdom, I don't think. No. Um, but either. the previous year's ones, I've made sure to catch it. Yeah. Anything on A Dub or WWE I've seen. Yeah. I've not seen Sergeant Slaughter versus Pat Patterson. Which I'm one's sure that? For the, the boot camp match there in Madison Square Garden. Ah, me neither. <laughs> Central viewing, right? <laughs> what about yourself, Dan? God, how long this podcast again? Nah. <laughs> um, uh, probably is the most famous one that I haven't seen is what everyone says is the best WWE match, which was Austin Hart, WrestleMania 13. Oh, that's a bad I've one. Never, I've yeah, that's a it's terrible so one. It's so good. Yeah. I've, I've never never watched it all the way through. I obviously know about the Crimson Mask in the end, but I think it's because I knew the end. I just kind of skipped the end. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. Passes out. Yeah. That's kind of egregious. <laughs> yeah, it is. Though, Passes yeah, out. Yeah. That's kind of... <laughs> Mint. Yeah. Thank you for the question. Greetings, lads, from the place where, insert the name of your favorite injured wrestler, is put back together again. From trips to Biggie and beyond, our city is world famous for our medical care, even though most people in our own country can't tell you where we're located. Did you know what the answer was for this before looking at the end of the email? Nah, I, had I, quick, I had a quick look, look yeah. there, and now I've said it, I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, now I've said it. It's where they all go. You are right. Even though this is your job, I hope each and every one of you know your importance in my life, as well as many, sorry, as the lives of so many others. Cultaholic is much more than a YouTube channel. It's a place where people feel they belong and where we are family all over the world. You lads have been here for me during the best and worst times. You're my constant, and I'll forever be grateful and thankful for each of you. Bloody hell, thank you very much. You're welcome. Mm. My, quick, <laughs> my question for you lads, from one of my all-time favorite shows, RIP, Straight to Hell, is this. If you could choose one thing from each major promotion to send to the pits of hell, what would it be? As always, you must first tell what it is you love about wrestling. Feel welcome to list several for each promotion if you'd like. So we can hit the four-hour mark for the podcast. Smiley face. Sincerely, Joey from Birmingham, Alabama. Please pull out the map, lol. Okay, Joey, just for you and your disgustingly beautiful message you've sent us all. Thank you very much for the thoughts. What was something you get rid of? I don't even know where you even start there. What was the actual question again? Because I've just I've blanked there, Matthew. I'm not going to lie to you. Oh, I, was, I was remembering straight to hell how it always go like, before we go <laughs> to the stuff you hate about wrestling, what do you love about wrestling? And that's what they've said, yeah. yeah. Uh, if you could choose one thing from each major promotion to send the pits of hell, what would it be? Oh, from WWE, the one thing I would get rid of is... Why is Karrion Cross the first thing that's coming to mind? Ah. <laughs> ah. Yeah, go on, I'll go for it, Karrion Cross. In this new world of Triple H's WWE, there's nothing that... There's going to be something that sticks out that I'll think about in bed later tonight, but yeah, right now it's Karrion Cross. Dan? WWE? WWE. Probably is an obvious option, but PG. I think there was talks of him going to TV14, wasn't it? I think then, a few episodes have been. But have they? I'm not, I'm not oh, right. paying, You know what? I've honestly not been paying that much attention. Really? So. Right. Well, there was talks of her going back to TV14. I've been re-watching a lot of older stuff and... Some stuff wasn't great and some stuff hasn't aged well, but it'd be nice for it to have a bit of a harder edge. I think since the AEW's been bigger, having like blood in matches and stuff can really help them bigger feuds. Mm. That's a fair enough point. I would pick Kevin Dunn, the current yeah. cinematographer. Yeah. Because it's so weird, because me and Tom do the SmackDown, call it classic SmackDown review. We watched some of Sam 2001 today, and he's so good. He's catching all the spots and he's barely cutting. You know, there's a bit where Tesla spiked Dudley the outside because he goes with the Dudley dog and it just has that one camera there, the hard cam, and you watch him, it doesn't cut or anything. It looks stunning. So, yeah, either throw him in the pits of hell forever or just get him back to how he used to be. You know how we spoke about fans cheering at New Japan shows earlier? Oh, yeah. Mark your calendars for February the 11th, 2023. Why is the that, Ross? The return of cheering Yay. at New Beginning in Osaka. Oh, a, yeah. a literal New Beginning. Yeah, it? it really oh. is. That's weird. We were talking about that and this happened yeah. today. yeah. Wow. Mysteries of the world. Yeah. Uh, winning, winning the lottery sure is fun. <laughs> <laughs> AEW, the one thing to get rid of. Ooh. I'm going to say CM Punk for a little bit. No, time. he's gone. Can't say that now. He's already Make gone. Make sure he's gone for good. If, if you think hell. of anything, just go for it because I might take okay. a while here. Tony yeah. Khan's need to do everything I will get uh, rid of. Yeah. I mean, there's only so much cocaine can do. You know what I mean? <laughs> allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. allegedly. <laughs> Do I have to cut myself? Jack, what are you saying, man? <laughs> yeah, Jack, I can't believe you said that thing. Ram your voice. When the hat comes off, the truth comes out. 
The hat keeps all the bad thoughts in. <laughs> uh, right now. Oh, uh, an hour off the pay-per-views. Yeah. I'd say. Yeah, I'd say an hour. Uh, I would go... Not quite a biggest concern, as you were saying, but still. Heel... Babyface is not being out with Joy wins. Every single time a babyface wins, a heel comes down to set someone else up. Sometimes I just want to see the heel celebrate. Uh, sorry, the face celebrate. Mm. Have a good time. Not instead of like a million things happen at once. In reality, I think my pick would be Rampage. Or Rampage to go back to what it was at the start. A nice accoutrement oh. to uh, Dynamite. Oh, the other thing we could all agree on, I think. Get rid of my pick. Um, get rid of Ring of Honor. Yeah. Separate them off. Yeah. It's time. It's Bye-bye, time. Ring of Honor. You were useless. Go mm. away. We're going to do it's any over. more promotions? You're old. No one listens to techno. <laughs> Should we do more promotions or not? The, well, we had the major ones. Yeah, let's move on then. Is that the end of the mailbag? It certainly is. How did you feel it went, Dan? Jack? Getting there, getting there. I <laughs> get his name wrong. Final Ah, if you have any lovely thoughts, queries, comments, or rants about CM Punk, <laughs> please send them to mailbag at courtholic.com. Ah, Reese's Pieces. It's that time of the year again. The Cultaholic crew are hosting their annual. Cultaholic Cuisine Extravaganza. Hooray! You know the time of year. Of course I we do. We do it every year. <laughs> and we are one day away from the event. But oh no! Our leader, Adam Pacitti, has been stuck in... What? Stuck in the Hell in a Smell room for over four days. And no one's found the key. That usually isn't an issue, but he's the one who orders all the food for the event. Oh no. Now it's time... No, sorry. Now it's up for the crew who was doing the podcast this week to decide what the handsome and lovely guests will consume. Below is a list of foods to pick from. It's up to you to decide which you like better in order to create the most amazing wrestling theme menu. Good luck and Godspeed, you sexy bastards. <laughs> Yours truly, Elliot, a.k.a. Eli Hush from Dubai. Oh, thank you very much, Elliot. Wow. Uh, fastest thought first. Starting with Dan. Going oh. <laughs> Raspberry scone, cold Steve Austin's, or brawn cocktail. Oh. <laughs> First one. It's a raspberry scone. Raspberry scone. Scone. Yeah. yeah. I don't like brawn cocktail. Doesn't work in our Geordie dialect, though, does it? It's definitely scone. I get it. Have you had a proper prawn cocktail before, though? Nah. I had one. It was rubbish. They're my favorite crisps of the Walker's Love the variety. crisp flavor, yeah. right? But I was just like, oh, what's this? What would a brawn cocktail be? Just sweat and um, meat. You'd ask it how much it costs, and it wouldn't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> TJ Peas Pudding. <laughs> Oh. All right, take it home now. <laughs> or head bangers and mash. Oh, head bangers and mash. Easy. I, I hate peas pudding, so the, yeah, bangers and mash. As a Durham lad, I have to pick TJ Peas pudding. Oh, I don't like it. Whilst listening to eight bit tunes and being <laughs> rubbish on Twitter. <laughs> Trifle H. <laughs> or Brett pudding. Brett pudding. Is that bread pudding? Bread pudding. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, okay. It's got to be trifle H. It's got to be trifle H. Isn't it? It's a better pun. Yeah. yeah. Malachi Black Pudding <laughs> or Jellied Eel Sky? Eli Sky. E- Jelly Eli Sky, sure. Right. Oh, yes. Sorry. Jellied I'm thinking eel. of Eli Drake. My God. Sorry. Just Jellied boom. Eel Sky, sure. Oh, it's EO. 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 Mm. Well, Jellied Eel is disgusting, so it's got to be the first one. Yeah, Malachi Black yeah, Pudding. with the wrong Jai Black side pudding? of the country. Oh, I love Black Pudding. Jai Black Pudding? Yeah, uh, no, I'm a Black Pudding fan. Mm, I, 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 I tolerate it. Yeah, I, I could eat it. I don't think I could try a Jelly Deal. I'll, I'll try it. it. I'll give it a go, yeah. I'll give anything a go once, but like, I, I don't go, you know what I want? A jelly Deal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway. Uh, Antonio... <laughs> Antonio Ignocchi <laughs> or Pad Ignocchi like Ignocchi. the pasta. right is that what I thought it was about <laughs> Antonio Ignocchi or Pad Thale Abate what oh Tile Abate Ooh, oh you can type this up <laughs> they're a bitch to say Pad Tile Abate it's a Pad Thai oh Pad Thai Pad Thai Pad Thai Abate Pad Thai Abate right Pad Thai Abate uh, it would be so what I've was the first one again? Antonio, Antonio Ignocchi. Ignocchi. Yeah, first one. <laughs> the first one. Nice yeah. pasta. That one for the pun. <laughs> Bloody hell. <laughs> Broccoli <laughs> or salsa banks? <laughs> salsa banks, I think. Salsa banks, yeah. I don't know. Where, where are they right now? Where's ooh, salsa ooh, banks? I don't know. Uh, it's salsa time. Oh, <laughs> God. <laughs> Willie Mac and Cheese. Okay, that's good. Or Monty Brownies. 
Monty Brownies. Imagine how thick they would be. Ooh. Oh, gooey. Yeah, Monty Brownies. sell them by the ounce. <laughs> Monty Brownies. Rikishi. Oh, Rikish. <laughs> like Rikishi. <laughs> or Anthony ba- Bayons. I don't even know what that is. But yeah, Bowens. Bowens. Like Bow Buns. Oh, like Bowens. Bowens. You know, you know like the, the bow buns they got? Like the steam buns, the like fluffy ones. They've oh, got like, like a katsu chicken in or something. Oh, like, some pork, pork or chicken. Or, yeah. This is my other hand name. Yeah. I'm here. Thank right? you. Got your hair yeah, done. Yeah. Bowens, yeah. No, little bow bar. It's a little pink van that lives on the street. It's it moved now. It's 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 moved now. I don't know that, but I know I'd pick Rick Keish. Oh, bow buns all day long. Bow buns. Bow buns. Yeah, delightful. Uh, tofu Naki. Uh, or ramen on a mission. Ramen on a mission. Imagine that attitude with some ramen. Yeah. <laughs> it would power the bow buns nice, so yeah, ramen on a mission. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, I'm picking ramen because tofu's rubbish. Uh, to Cody Rhodes, or Taco Road, or Kevin Mash Potatoes. I don't like mash. Well, I tolerate mash again. It's fine. You don't like mash I potatoes? I would never pick it. Yeah. What? Give me a roasty instead. That's all I think when I eat mash. Wow. Why would you chop that up? Or mash it's, it up? Because it's great. Mash it up. Mash it up. <laughs> I'm picking Kevin mashed potatoes and eating them like that, just to spite you. But we've got headbangers and mash, haven't we? So we're having double mash here. <sighs> oh, what a day. It's a, the full dish, isn't what it? What a great day. What's the other one? What's the... Ta- Taco de Rhodes. Taco. Bit of tacos. Yeah, good tacos. Thank you. Mark Henry's sexual hot chocolate <laughs> or Booker's English breakfast tea. <laughs> You'd have both, wouldn't you? Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm actually thinking, oh, doesn't matter what I'm thinking of when I think of Mark's hot chocolate. I was, oh. yeah, I, don't I was thinking drink. it wasn't a drink there. I was like, you would have just them together as a, a nice little mid-morning snack. But yeah, I'd, I'd go for the English tea. Same. I think you need something a bit stronger right now. I know, yes, yeah. I'll pick Booker's English breakfast tea. <laughs> Bonus round. Hulk Hogan's pasta mania or Jimmy Hart's pasta? Which is one of the rubbish puns me and um, Tom went through the say. nitro grill. Because I thought, well, is there going to be any jokes like Booker T-bone steak or whatever? And no, there wasn't. It was like Jimmy Hart's pasta. <laughs> like, rubbish, that. Yeah. Well, I'd probably go for Jimmy Hart's over Hogan's. No, most people have picked Jimmy over Hogan at this point, but I don't know, you'll put some karaoke later on. Yeah, yeah. I'm uh, I get the pasta menu down, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, Eddie Hell, thank you very much for that amazing bunch of puns, so to speak. Thank you very much, Elliot from Dubai. Uh, wow. Thank you very much, Reese's Pieces. If you have any to send our own way, you certainly can by going to mailbagalcoholic.com. It's Cultaholics. The Question. What a lovely podcast. Oh, yeah. Oh. Um, just a little bit more before we get the big question. The lovely producers. Let's go through the list. Oh, scrubby, scrubby, Are you scrubby. ready, Dan? Yeah, I'm ready. You know how it goes, don't you, Dan? No. Of course you do. You sat there every week. Yeah, I'm yeah. reading my book. I'm writing my novel. <laughs> <laughs> the scrubby, 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 bangers and mash. Jacob Castle. 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 Oh, scrubby, scrubby, scrubby. Uh, jelly on a plate. Chris Ruth. <laughs> Ralph. Ralph. <laughs> Growth. His name is Chris Routh. Chris Routh. Jelly on a plate. Wibble wobble. Wibble wobble. Jelly on a plate. Uh, yummy yummy tubby custard. Buddy. Buddy. Oh, yummy yummy yummy. I'm too good thinking of though. Uh, <laughs> chocolate log. Reno two two zero zero. Two two zero zero. Oh, the scrummy scrummy. Uh, to Cody Rhodes. Nick <laughs> Robbie. 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 Oh, scrubby, scrubby, scrubby. <laughs> you delightful little uh, chocolate wafer, Noah Anderson. Anderson. There's the joke. Thank you very much, you beautiful <sighs> producers. I'm sure they're all leaving after that. <laughs> uh, the big question this week is, of course, what's going to be the best match at Survivor Series 2022 War Games? Well, but let's look matches, haven't we? Whoop. And they are currently scheduled. We don't know the order yet, but I can guess which one's going to be the main event. Seth. Freaking Rawlins, which is his Christian name now, according to Wikipedia, <laughs> versus Bobby Lashley, versus, ah, big pun, versus Austin Theory, for the United States title. Going to be a good one with the new Serious Theory, taking it to the more established superstars. Yeah. Making them all yeah. seem averagely established. That's right. <laughs> Who would you want to win that one? 
I don't know who I want to win. I think Rollins will win just because it's 10 years of The Shield. Mm. That's a virus series, obviously. Um, so, yeah. I don't know. I feel like it's a bit of a shame if they've built Fury up for him to take the pin, but it does feel like he's only there to take the pin. Yeah, but they haven't built him up. Just well, a little bit. Promo. They're trying to like salvage him. He's got beard now. Yeah, it's been two they've, weeks. They've put him 10 feet down and like they're bringing him up to like five feet down. <laughs> he's still down. So I reckon maybe Lashley. Mm. I can see him go, aha, beat you. And then Seth's like, no, you didn't beat me. You pinned Theory. I wouldn't mind Oh, him. me and you at the Rumble then. All right, then square go. Mm. I wouldn't mind Lashley getting screwed again. So it would just mean he would beat up more folk, wouldn't it? I think it would take away some of the heat because he's just oh. doing a good job beating up people. Oh. So he can't lose, lose the theory. <laughs> You're on a boat. AJ Styles with the OC, God bless him, versus Finn Balor with the JD, God bless him. This will be good. Will it be as good as TLC 2017? I don't know. That's right. The last big match they had, I think. When uh, everyone got food poisoning, didn't they? That's right. It was meant to be Finn, but, well, the demon versus Sister Abigail. And that was never talked about ever <laughs> again. Yeah. Uh, this might be the end of this. They said this will be the feud ender, yeah. which is just as well. Weird that they're not doing a Survivor Series match. And Survivor Series, but I think we used to do that by now. It's not the 80s anymore. Um, AJ Styles? Yep. It's the most natural one. Yeah. Right? Or maybe, no, because there's, I think there's more stock in the judgment there, isn't there? I know the OC are newer and more hip-hop and happening. Oh, maybe mm. that'll be it. Finn Balor will beat him and then Edge will return. Have that Gary with that one last run. He's been talking about on Twitter a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Ronda Rousey versus Shotzi for the... SmackDown Women's Championship. At the moment, unless something drastic happens on tonight's SmackDown, I just hope it's a squash for Rousey because I don't think anyone's buying. Shotzi, they've not done a good job of making her a credible threat. It's just a match the show, you're right. Yeah. Not, not yeah. bad, but yeah, yeah, unless the that. tanks come into play. And, you know. Run, that'll be a fantastic visual, just like literally mowing her over. Fantastic. Yeah. Hopefully. The War Games matches. Vanga Belair, Alexa Bliss, Asuka Mae Yim and Tupi announced. Versus the damaged Katal with Beatty, Kai, Sky, Cross, and Rhea Ripley. Yeah, I imagine Cross and Sky in particular will be doing crazy things in the match. Yeah. Um, there's not really anyone who does like the massive moves off the top of big, really high things, is there, on the babyface side? I'm all right with that. Because yeah. we don't know. Mm. It, it's the first uh, main roster non NXT thing. So is Triple H going to go, oh, get in? <laughs> Triple H, sorry, Vince McMahon's gone. I could put the cage on the war games. We'll see. Yeah. So I'm not necessarily looking for the big old bump. Just looking for it to be a good match. Uh, and then what will surely be the main event? The Brawling Brutes. Sheamus, Ridge the Fridge, and Booch. Drew McIntyre and Kevin Owens. Taking on the bloodline of Roman Reigns, Solo, the Usos, and Sammy Usi. Will Sammy win the match or will Sammy take the fall to lose the match? That's the big question for me. Yeah. Uh, it would be time logistically for him to lose. Pinned by Kev as well. Mm. Oh, that was a noise. <laughs> yeah. What do you think, Dan? So do you think whoever's going to get the pin for the Brutes, if the Brutes win, is going to be Roman's next challenge? Because I don't think they'll do Drew again. Maybe. No, nah, I think Drew Roman. I, th I think Seamus Roman would be good for Roman. Seamus Roman might be good. I think Owens maybe telegraphed it on Raw by saying like his only focus for being in the match is to get to back to Reigns. Mm. I don't know I said that. It's it would be crazy. Italian there. You did say that. <laughs> mm. <laughs> You've been into the An Antonio. <laughs> hey, it's a dollar me, day. <laughs> yeah, I think you might be right. I think Owen's pinning Sammy. Looks like it's the way it's going to go. Yeah. Just hope that Roman doesn't fall out with Sammy if that does actually happen. There's more legs in this, lads. There's more legs in it. Oh, it's like, all right, well, get, get me a title then. Mm. They've got titles. I've got a title. Where's your title? Mm. He's, like, uh, he's looking at the bins for 24 7 title. <laughs> I have a match of the night. I reckon it, it. I think it will be one of the War Games matches. Looking at just looking at the other three on the card as things are, I think it's all set up for one of the War Games yep. to steal the show. Yeah. Depends which way they go. Will they go tactical or will they just go bows to the wall? EO Sky putting a bin on her head and jumping off the top <laughs> for all time's sake. <laughs> it's hard to say because they both had really a lot of people involved have had really good matches in the War Game setting in the past. So I think the winner will be the fans. Yes, they will. Because, wait, five matches will be going long. Oh, it won't be too good long. Look, AW. All right, yeah. well, we'll get, we'll get seven at a push coming mm. out with SmackDown. So, yeah, nice length. Yeah, but something like Shotzi versus Ronda shouldn't be too long, so. and you But you think the two War Games matches are probably going to be entrances included, like an hour right. each. Mm. So, yeah, it'll be fine. 
He'll be all right. Then. <laughs> ah, yeah. Not much of a thought we can do for that, though. But it's just not a problem. Mm-hmm. Two pay per views back to back, week for week. Yeah, fair enough. Eh? Big gap after this one until the Rumble. So great. No, there's NXT deadline, but yeah. Is that out? Is out on the weekend? Oh, I, I assumed it was. Oh, oh no, wait, be. where would it be? They don't do those anymore. Yeah, I'm talking complete no, pitch, I'm might sorry. Not be. I'm going to assume you, you, were, you were right there. It is a weekend one. Don't not just me. a special. You know what? <laughs> That's enough for us, I yeah, think. Yeah, it is. I think for I'm one enough. week. Ross, what have you got to plug? I've been recording Rise and Falls. There's, there's two more in the can. Um, so I don't know, I'm not going to reveal what they are. You can just wait and see when they go live. Uh, I've been writing a, a thing about Kane this week. So that'll be getting recorded soon. It's a voiceover. So yes, that's the thing. Uh, Twitch on a Wednesdays now at 3 p.m. GMT. I'll be taking Hartley Pool United uh, to the top from League Two. It's a career mode on FIFA. Oh. And then also get yourself subscribed as you see on there to yeah. youtube.com forward slash at hold and give. New fancy logo designed this week. Uh, so yes, all systems go. Fantastic. Up the monkey hangers. Up the monkey hangers indeed. Mm-hmm. Some people were saying like that's one of the reasons I picked them. My main reason was Jeffrey Stellan. Of course. Yeah. Um, but I was like, yeah, go back and find that podcast where Matthew spent the entire Hall of Fame segment uh, filling us in on the history of the monkey hangers and why that came to be a thing. I was so great. Because I was like, I was one of people and I just assumed everyone I knew knew that. And I'm like, and some people from the Northeast were like, I've never heard this. I'm like, oh, I thought like, I need to explain this. It's like trying to explain, I don't know, Postman Pat or something. So I was like, <laughs> so explain it to them. And some members of my family didn't know, so I went, I'm putting this on the podcast. And it won. It Hangus win. the Monkey, the mayor, who was also the football mascot of Hartlepool. <laughs> yes. Dan, what have you got the plug? Uh, that This will be my last appearance on the podcast. <laughs> you said that last time. Don't tune out. Jack's had a couple of busy weeks. He'll be back full time next week. Uh, touch wood. That's right. Part time Jack. Shane O'Mac and Shane O'Jack. Here comes the money. (laughs) Anyway, that's good. Uh, Me and Tom (laughs) will be doing the Colour Classic every week. This week it is SummerSlam 2001, the watch along. And what a sweet pay per view it is. Mm. I forgot how good it was. That's it was good, to say yeah. About that. yeah. It's good. Uh, top of the ramp at the end. Is that the right one? No, it's the oh, one with... Oh, man! Booker that was T. vengeance, wasn't it? That's right. Ah. Booker T versus Rock the main, but the really, really good Austin Angle match along with uh, Tajiri X Park. That promo package is good, isn't it? Is that the one with... Um, it's the first round and pull one. There. Let the body... It's like it's just come out and it's a really cool new thing. Yeah. It's like, wow, we're really cool and hip. And then like five years later, they're still using it. It's like, <laughs> all right. So yeah, that's all of us. Uh... Cultaholics lovely podcast that we do every week that's why it's called the weekly podcast Black Friday sale Black that's Friday it. sale Black Friday sale cultaholicshop.com your discount is applied automatically when you put stuff in the basket that's right and you can always vote at patreon.com for us cultaholic for the prestigious hall of fame and send us questions to mailbag at cultaholic.com this has been Dan this has been Ross Jack's over there and I'm Matthew now we're going to end the lovely podcast by pointing out the lovely TV Saying something lovely, Ross. Yes, we will. What should we say? Uh, something about uh, different kinds of baits Hughes while fishing. Ooh, okay. In fact, let's quote the great Jeremy Wade by just shouting, that's a fish, that's a fish on. Fantastic. Three, two, one. That's, that's a, a fish, fish. That's, that's a, a fish, fish on. on.